In this video, you will find the ultimate step-by-step -step guide to create a pixel-perfect website using WordPress and Elementor Pro. And as I imagine you know, Elementor is a no-code builder, so you won't need to know how to code. You will be able to create your content and customize everything using a simple drag-and-drop editor. You want to change this image? No problem. You click on it and you choose your image and voila, the image is changed. You want to change your text? Just type into your keyboard. Need to do some updates on your colors? No problem. Let's go and change it. This one looks great to me. Want to change the shape of buttons? No problem again. And voila! Need to add some social media icons? Here they are. Hi there, my name is Pascal and I'm the founder of WP Roads, the YouTube channel and the website where I share knowledge and passion about WordPress. Let's have now a quick look of the website that we'll create together. start by creating a beautiful floating header like the one that you're seeing right now and we will add your logo, your brand name, a simple menu with a submenu like this one, a call to action and some social media icons. Of course you will be able to change and replace the content as you wish. We will be then optimizing everything for tablet and for mobile. We will also create a mobile menu like the one that you're seeing right now. During the video you will also learn how to create beautiful hero sections like the one that you see here with background videos and using all the advanced features that are included in Elementor Pro. We will learn how to use Flexbox containers and grids to create any kind of structure and all this without having to touch a single line of code. I'll give you some practical examples and step-by-step -step guides to create any kind of section to help you showcase your content exactly the way you want. We will learn how to use simple effects like hover animations and sites transform. And then I give you great ideas on how you can create beautiful call to actions like the one that you're seeing right now. We will structure then the footer of your website, which is the part of the website in which you can include some important information about your business and some links to help people navigate better your content. We will go then and create an about page and I will teach you here how you can create beautiful heading sections with creative content disposition like the one that you're seeing right now. And creating this page, we will learn how to use entrance animations, scrolling animations, and tilt effects based on the mouse movements, like the one that you see right now. I'll teach you then how to create a services page where you can showcase all your different services, and we will create together an advanced drop-down menu to link to the different services. To create these pages, we will use the template system of Elementor Theme Builder to teach you how you can create dynamic and advanced pages in a beautiful and simple way. We will then create together a contact us page with some basic information on how to contact you or your client business. And then we will go and learn how Elementor forms work. They are very powerful and you can even create step-by-step -step forms like the one that you're seeing right now. You can make people upload files and you can add many, many other advanced fields. I'll even teach you how you can create a beautiful thank you page like this one. In the last part of the video, we will create the blog with the archive of all our blog posts and the single post template, as you can see right here. This will be beautiful, professional, and you can create a great good looking blog for you or for your clients. We learn then how to create loop grids and loop carousels like this one, and like the one that we will use in the blog archive. All these cards are completely customized and you can place the content in the way you want. For example, if you decide to replace this content here at the end of the post, you will just need to do like this and voila! Here is a list of all the tools you will learn. Hostinger, which is a premium WordPress hosting with a very affordable pricing. Choosing Hostinger, you will be able to get a free domain for one year, create multiple free emails accounts, and install and manage multiple WordPress websites. Then we will create together your first WordPress website, we will install Elementor and Elementor Pro, and we will choose the Hello Elementor theme, which is lightweight and perfect if you want to get the most from Elementor Pro. 
You will find all the important information that I'm sharing with you during the tutorial in the links and resources in the description below. So make sure to check them out. And if you want to quickly jump to the parts of the tutorial that you are most interested in, you can just use the timestamps that are provided below. Thank you in advance if you want to buy all the products that I'm showing to you in this video by clicking on the affiliate links that you will find in the description below. By doing this, you are supporting my YouTube channel and you are allowing me to create more free content like this one. Now, a very important information. If you want to obtain the most from this tutorial and if you want to use the same resources that I'm showing you during the tutorial, I've created a page which is called Elementor Starter Kit. You will just need to subscribe for free to my newsletter and you will get access to all the free resources that I'm using during the video, like colors, icons, fonts, images, custom codes, and so on. And keep in mind that you can always ask me some questions down in the comment section below and if I can, I will be very happy to answer you. Now, let's begin the tutorial and and let's create your wonderful WordPress website. And let me say it in French, c'est parti! The creation of your website starts from here. To access this page, you will just need to click the affiliate link below this video, or you can just type into your browser wprose.com slash hostinger. Hostinger will be the perfect foundation for your online business. Choosing Hostinger, you will be able to have a professional hosting service to create as many WordPress websites as you want for your business or even for your clients. In the Hostinger panel, you will be able to install WordPress, claim a free domain, create a free email account, for example, info at yourwebsitename.com. And then you will be sure to have perfect security, a great support team that you can contact via live chat, and you will have great performance at a super affordable price. Let's click now on claim deal. We will scroll down here and we will see that there are three plans, the premium, the business and the cloud startup. Let's see what you have when you choose one of these plans. The premium plan, it's perfect if you are on a budget and you want to build just an amateur website or a website for a very, very small business or a couple of friends' websites. And of course, this is not the best choice if you want to create websites for your clients. The business plan, it's perfect if you want to start creating websites for clients or maybe you want to create landing pages and a small e-commerce for your business. In this plan, you will have more performance, more space and more professional features, like for example, the daily backups that are included. The cloud startup and the higher plans are perfect if you want to build professional websites for your clients or, for example, if you want to create complex e-commerces, professional blogs and websites that will receive a lot of traffic so you can start with the cloud startup. Let me show you now in detail some of the most important features that you have to keep in mind before choosing your plan. We scroll down here and we see the top features for each plan. The most interesting thing to know is that you can install multiple websites in each plan. Even if you choose just the premium plan, you will have a lot of space and you will be able to install multiple WordPress websites. But one important difference between the premium and the other plans is performance. In fact, if you choose the business or higher plans, you will have NVMe storage working with a more modern technology. And this is part of the reason why you will get more performance that will be increased by five times in the business plan and by 10 times in the cloud startup plan. Choosing the business or higher plans will give you also access to daily backups. This is a great solution if you need for any reason to restore your website. For example, if your website stops working or if you are attacked by a malware. In each plan, you will get a free domain for the first year and you will get 100 free email accounts, which is awesome. If you plan to receive traffic from multiple places around the world, you will also have in the business and higher plans a free CDN, which is a content delivery network and it's a feature that allows your website to load very fast, even if there are visitors that come from all over the world. Let's scroll down and see the manage WordPress features. The first thing you see is that the most optimized for creating e-commerces is the cloud startup plan, which will be great if you want to create a really professional e-commerce. And keep in mind that you can also switch plans later on. So you can start, for example, with the business plan, and then you can upgrade your plan and go to the cloud startup, for example. Anyway, if you want to create a small e-commerce, you can even start with the premium plan, but keep in mind that this is not recommended or is suitable only for very, very small e-commerce with less than 10 products. In all the plans, you will have have all the features that you need to install and manage WordPress, which is exactly what we need and what we want. And if you choose the business or higher plans, you will also have the staging tool, which is great because you can basically create a copy of your website to test some updates before making them going live. You will have also the object cache, which is a caching system, which is very powerful and it will make your website load even faster. You will have 
on-demand backups, which are simply backups whenever you want in a single click. And then you will have a simple plugin, which is free and it's the AI tools provided by Hostinger. And it lets you create content directly into your WordPress dashboard. Down here, we do not need to read this one because this is the Hostinger builder and it has nothing to do with WordPress. So let's skip this part. We scroll down here and we have a lot of security features. We have DDoS protection, we have a firewall, we have a Cloudflare protected name servers, we have a malware scanner, and we have many other things that are very important. For example, this one is the free domain who is privacy protection, which is free, and it allows you to hide some of the important informations of the ownership of your domains so that you will not receive hundreds of spam emails when you register your domain. This is very important. And I will show you how to activate this during the tutorial. In the end here, we have the service and support. We have a 30 day money back guarantee. So you do not risk anything when you choose your plan on Hostinger. You have 99.9 .9 uptime guarantee. It means that your website will be 99.9% .9 of the time available to the visitors that want to access it. Then you will have global data centers. It means that you can choose where to store the actual files and data of your website all around the world. And you have a really, really quick and fast customer support 24 hours a day and seven days a week. I've already used them multiple times there support live chat and it's great. Keep in mind the uh, last thing here that regarding the number of websites, you have a very important limitation to know, which is the inodes limitation. If you want to see it and understand more clearly how many websites you can install on your hosting your hosting plan, you just need to scroll down here. You will need to enable the see all features and you will need to see here the technical details. The first one here is the inodes limit. And as you can see here, when you go on the question mark, it explains to you inodes are items that correspond to the number of files and folders you have on your account. So 400,000 may look like a huge number, but it's not so huge because each WordPress installation will start with basically 6,000 or 7,000 inodes, depending on the content that you have on your installation. And it can rise up very quickly depending on the number of files that you upload on your website or the number of plugins that you install and so on. So this is the real number to keep track of when you need to install multiple WordPress websites. But don't worry because you will have a very smart dashboard in your account to keep track of all the resources that you're using in your plan. And of course, you will be able also to switch your plan whenever you want. Let's scroll up again now. And let's start the buying process. You will see it's very easy. We can choose, for example, the first premium plan or the business plan. Let's go and see the premium in this case. And of course, you will be able to switch between plans whenever you want, even after. So we click here on add to cart. And we will see that basically you can choose between four types of payments. The first one is the monthly payment, but uh, it's not very convenient because you will need to pay monthly and the pricing is very high compared to the 48 months, $11.99 compared to the $2.99 of the 48 months. Here you also have a setup fee of $4.99 and you will have to pay each and every month and you won't be able to have a free domain for the first year. So you will need to buy the domain separately. Then we have the one year payment, which is very interesting because from $11.99, it drops down to $3.19 per month. And here the renewal plan after the first year will be $9.99. And you also have a free domain for the first year. Then we have the two years subscription that renews at $8.99 and you will pay for the first two years, just $3.09. And of course, also here, you will have a free domain for the first year. But the most interesting plan is the last one, the 48 months. It means four years. You will have a couple of months for free and you will have a pricing of $2.99 per month with a renewal pricing after the first four years of $7.99. <laughs> this is a huge saving. I'll select my 48 months, scroll down, and you will need to create your account. If you already have one, you can log in, click in here, or you can just insert here an email address and create a password. If we prefer, you can also create an account using Google or Facebook. And now let's go and see the pricing. And we'll have in my case, $172.22 for four years of hosting. That's amazing. If you are buying from Europe, you can even add a company details and you can insert here your VAT number to get rid of the VAT tax. Perfect, 143.52. So this is even better. And of course, if you want to have more savings, I have a special coupon code for you. We will just need to enter inside here, WP Roads apply WP roads apply 
Voila! And we have even a better pricing here, $129.17. So remember that here you are paying for four years. Of course, there is also a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can just test things out, but you won't have to think about hosting anymore for four years, which is huge. By scrolling up here, you can also change the payment method if you need credit card. There is also PayPal, Google Pay, Alipay, CoinGate, and based on the country that you are in, you will see different payment methods at your disposal right here. Once you've selected your payment method, you can fill out all the information here. For example, here I have my name, last name, my phone number, the region, city, street address, and so on. I just can fill everything out if I want. I can add here my company details if I'm buying as a business, and then I will be able to insert here my payment details and click on Submit Secure Payment. You will then land on the confirmation page and you will receive some important emails. Among the other emails, you will receive this one, which is very important. You have to verify your email address on Hostinger so that you are sure that your account will be verified. Okay, now let's take the time to breathe. You just bought your own Hostinger plan. That's awesome. Great, congratulations. We're now ready to log in into your Hostinger account and have a quick tour to see how it works. Then you will be able to go on the website, click on login and use your credentials or login with Google or Facebook and access your H panel. This is the homepage where you can see what's going on on your account and you have many offers and messages from Hostinger. And you will see some important information about your domains and hosting plans. Then you have a section here which is dedicated to the websites management. And I will show you in a moment how you can go here and create a website just from this section in a couple of clicks. If you need to manage your hosting account, you can go on hosting and you can go here in these three dots and you can add a website, migrate, renew and so on. You can also manage emails and I will show you later on how you can create a free email account using the features that are at your disposal in Hostinger. Then we have the domain section and from this panel you will be able to set up and manage all your domains. Then you have the VPS which is a, an advanced kind of hosting if you need to grow your business even more. And then we have the billing and here you can manage all your auto renewal, you can manage the payment history, you can download invoices and so on. For example, if I want to change the renewal cycle of one of my hosting plans, I can go here, I can check all the details of my plan and in this case I can also decide to change the billing period. If I want to pay, for example, the renewal only for one year, I can switch to annually and I can save or I can just stay, in, like in my case, four years in four years. I save and here I can see the renewal price, very, very affordable because even without the initial discounts, in this case, I will pay around $100 per year. Wow, this is very, very affordable. I can also decide to disable auto renewal if I do not want this hosting plan to be renewed and then I can go back to the billing section and do whatever adjustment I need. I can access the payment history. I can also change my payment methods if I need to do so. Okay, now let's go back to the homepage and we are ready to install your first WordPress website on Hostinger. Okay, now we're going to create your website and we're going to install WordPress. To do so, we go on websites, we click on add website and we select, of course, WordPress. Okay, now from this window, if you got multiple Hostinger plans, you will need to choose the plan in which you want to install your new WordPress website. In my case, it will be this one. So I click here, I select the plan, and in this window, I will need to create my login details. These are all the data that I will need to access my actual WordPress website. And so it's very important. We will choose the language and we will leave it to English in this case. I will choose the email that I will use to administrate my website, which is this one. Okay, in my case it's this one, pascal at wproads.com, okay, and here I will create my passwords, my password. Okay, it should respect all this uh, security information, so it should contain one number, one lowercase and so on. You can also generate a password from this icon here, and we click on next. Okay, now here we just need uh, to skip because we will do all this, um, how do you say, all these steps later on together. So let's skip this one. We'll also need to know, I don't want to select skip here, okay. <laughs> here there is an AI assistant that will be installed in your website. It's free and uh, it can be helpful in some cases, but in this case we will just skip and we will be able also, if you want, to use it later on. Let's skip. Okay, now it's very important. You should have now your domain name ready and you can uh, connect it right here. So in my case, the domain name I want to use is this one, WPStarzy, 
and it's available, wpstarzy.com. It's already here, it's free for the first year. So keep in mind that after the first year, this is the renewal price. So each uh, type of domain has different renewal prices. For example, the .com domains normally uh, are around this, uh, this uh, number here. And if you choose a different kind of domain, for example, the AI one, it will have completely different pricing, you see? This renews at $99 per year. So be careful to the kind of uh, extension that you will choose for your domain because it will also change the renewal pricing. So in this case, I will go with wpstarz.com, which is free for the first year because uh, when you buy a new hosting a plan with Hostinger, you always have a free domain for the first year, which is great. So we click on next here. We just need to review our informations. In particular, here you have your contact details, which will be associated with your domain. So we just verify that all the data here is correct. And then let's click on finish registration. Okay, we're registering our new domain. Okay, now we have a very important step because we need to choose the data center of our website. In this case, the data center is the actual physical computer that will store all your website files. So it's important that this data center will be the closest one to your target audience. In other terms, where do you expect most of the traffic to come from. Let's make just a quick example. If my website will receive most of the traffic from the North America, for example, I will just need to choose here and select the United States Arizona data center. If I plan to receive most of my traffic from South America, because my website will become very popular there, I just need to choose the Brazilian data center and so on. So if you want, you can also choose India, you can choose Indonesia. And if you are in Europe, you can choose one of these three data centers. In my case, I will leave it in the United Kingdom. You can also see by this notice here that some of these data centers are also based on renewable energy. So if you choose one of these, you're also reducing your website's carbon footprint, which is great and a good thing to know. Let's go on. Okay, now we're actually installing WordPress in our new domain that we already selected in the preview steps. Normally here, we, you will just need to wait about uh, one minute, two minutes, it's very fast. I don't know why it says adding styles because <laughs> we won't need any styles because we will add them. Okay, congratulations, now you got your own WordPress website. That was easy, right? Okay, now since we already bought our domain through Ostinger, this message should disappear in about some minutes. Domain status not pointing to our name servers. Okay, just leave it like this. So we just created your website, we installed WordPress, and now we have to deal with the domain configuration. That will be very, very easy and basic, but it's important to do it. We will receive an important email in which we will be able to confirm our domain. In this case, the domain that I bought, it's wpstarzy.com. And here I have a very, very important link, which I need to click to verify my domain ownership. So if I don't do so, the domain won't be enabled. So let's do it. Let's click here. Please confirm your data details below. Okay. I declare the information about it's true. Oh, perfect. Required terms, okay, perfect. Please select one of the options, approve or reject. If your contact details are not confirmed, a placeholder page may show at one or more of your domains that require confirmed contact details. I will just go and approve, and I can click now on submit. Thank you. The information will be processed. Perfect, okay. And as you can see, the message that says that our domain is not configured and it's not pointing to Hostinger, has disappeared and we can already see that WordPress is installed here and we can visit this domain and voila, it's already pointing to our WordPress installation. So we connected our domain with our WordPress installation. This is great. We need still to wait a little bit to in order to Hostinger to automatically install our SSL certificate, which is very, very important because as you can see here, this website is marked as not secure. So this is not great and it should not happen. Let's go back to our dashboard in Hostinger. We'll see that in the website dashboard, we have a panel which is about security. We click on it. We see that the, it, there is an SSL item here, okay, we click it, and we see normally that the SSL should be active. You can also see here that the SSL is kind of uh, activating or installing. We just need to wait a little bit, just uh, about five minutes generally, and you will see that your website, if you reload it, will load in the secure 
SSL connection. You see, the not secure message has disappeared now. The connection is now secure, perfect. And so we have our SSL certificate installed. So now if we go back on websites, we will see our new freshly installed website here, WP Starzy. There are some quick informations displayed here, but most of all, we can access the admin panel or manage this website. If we click on the admin panel, we will be redirected directly into WordPress. So now let's click back on manage. And from this dashboard, we will be able to administrate and set up and configure anything about our WordPress website from the hosting side. So in this case, I'll go on Domain, Manage. I'll check all the status. It is active now. The email verification status is verified, as we already did. And there is the expiration date. There is the transfer code if we need to transfer this domain own ownership to some other platforms or some other people, for example, our, our client, for example. Here we, are, we have name servers. We can change them if we need to change them. In our case, we do not need to do so. We have the auto renewal settings. And uh, I also suggest you to enable the transfer lock. And here it's very important. Let's enable the who is privacy. In this case, if you enable this, you will be able to add an extra security layer for your domain information privacy. So if people look up into the internet, who is the owner of this domain? In this case, they will see some informations which will be hidden. So your privacy will be more protective. They will just see the basic informations about your domain. Okay, so now let's go on. Let's go back to websites and let's click on manage. And again, from this, tab here, we will be able to activate our free email account. If you do not see manage, but if you see active now, you just click on activate. Now I'm able to click on manage and I will be able to create a free Hostinger email account. As you can see here is zero dollars per month, so it's free and it's provided by Hostinger and we have one gigabyte of storage and we have all you need here to manage your email address from a professional point of view. So perfect. Let's click on select here. Perfect. And let's give a name to our email address. In this case, it will be info at wpstarzy.com. Here we can create a password that we will use to access our email inbox. So this is the password and let's cl click now on create. Okay. Wow. That's great. <laughs> Basically, that's it. We can click on skip. I'll set up an email, an email client later. And voila, this is my new email account. If I scroll down here, I see my new email account and I can quickly access my webmail directly from my browser. So if I click here, you see from this screen, I just need to type in my email that I already created and my password and I will be able to manage my email account. Wow, <laughs> that was easy, right? So from here, I can send and receive emails from my new email address, which is this one. And if I want, I can also install this email address on my phone, for example, on my email app on the phone or on Outlook or on uh, Gmail, on whatever app I'm using to read and respond to emails. To do so, we just need to go back here to emails. And while on this page, we just scroll down and we click on connect apps and devices. So these are all the data that you need in order to configure your email account. And remember that when you configure it, you will be asked your username, which will be your email address and your password, which is the password of your email account and all these data. And again, from this tab here, this option here of daily backups will be automatically enabled if you choose to buy the business plan or higher plans on Hostinger. If you have the premium plan or lower plans, it won't be enabled by default, but you need to manage and enable it paying an extra fee. So this option depends on the plan that you bought. In my case, I'm using a business plan. So daily backups are enabled for the files of my website and also for my database. And they will run automatically each and every day, which is great. And another thing I can do here is go to WordPress. Okay, go to overview. And from here, I will have a, a complete overview of the setup of my WordPress website from the hosting side. So for example, I see that I'm, I'm forcing the HTTPS, which is very important. So leave it like this. I can enable the maintenance mode if I'm doing some updates on my website. In this case, I will leave it disabled. I can also enable light speed, which is recommended. And I also recommend you to leave it enabled. If you have the 
business plan or higher, you also have the object cache enabled, which is recommended because this enables you to have a quick performance improvement on your website. So it's very important to have it enabled. And now we are ready to start building our WordPress website. So in order to access our website, we can go here and click on the admin panel, and this will automatically send us to the WordPress dashboard. So this is great. So let's do it. As you can see here, we don't need to insert our login details because Hostinger already do it for us automatically, which is great. Okay, and if you want to see your website from the front end, you just need to click here on the link and you will be redirected to your website. So this, as you can see, it's your website from the front end and is the actual online website in this moment. So if people type in to the browser the name of our website, our domain here, in this case wpstarz.com, they will land on this website. At the moment, there is just a default 2024 WordPress theme, and we will be able to customize all this website from the ground, from scratch, and it will be beautiful at the end of the tutorial. So <laughs> now the second thing is that we can quickly access the dashboard, as you can see here by clicking on the admin panel, we are here in the dashboard, and you will most likely see something similar to what I'm seeing right now. The most important thing here is to start by cleaning up everything so that we can find ourselves in the same starting point that we will use to build our website from the foundation to the very, very advanced customization that we will do in this tutorial. So to start, we just go on plugins and let's start the cleaning up. We will select our plugins, we will leave the we will leave just the Lightspeed cache unselected and the two others plugin, the Hostinger ones, we don't need them right now, so we deactivate them, we click on Apply, and then we delete them. So we select them both, we go on Bulk Actions and we delete them by clicking on Apply. Very easy. We click on OK, perfect. And so now we just have one plugin, which is the Lightspeed cache plugin and we are ready to go on. So in this case, this plugin is active, perfect. And this is very important because it, it's a kind of a plugin that connects your website to the hosting environment and it grants you high performance page caching and uh, which means that your website will basically load faster and will be more optimized. So leave this plugin active like it is right now. We go now in appearance and themes and from here, we just delete the themes that we will not use. So this one, for example, we delete it. This other theme, we delete it like this, okay? And then we just need to leave this default theme enabled. Okay, we'll go now on pages and on posts. So we click on pages here and we trash this page. We go on trash and we click on empty trash. We do the same thing for posts. We go on all posts, we trash this post, we go on trash and we empty the trash. Okay. Now we can go to the dashboard home. Perfect. And we click, we click on screen options and we get rid of all these widgets. Okay. So now we have a clean environment, as you can see here is very, very, uh, perfect and tidy up for ready to start. Okay. The first very important thing to do right now is to go on settings, permalinks, and this is a vital, vital setting, which is called permalink structure. We just need to go here and click on post name. This is very important. It will make your pages and posts look like this. So with the name of your website and the URL with this simple structure, we click on post name and we click on save changes. So be sure to go here under settings, permalinks, post name and save changes. Okay. Now, we can go on with the basic settings. We go on general. We can give our website a title. In my case, the title is this one, WP Starzy. And this is the title that I will use because uh, in my example, this is the uh, name of a WordPress website agency, for example. Voila. In the tagline, you can enter a title like this one, not a title, but a tagline like this one by using the main keywords of your business. For example, if I have a web agency, I will type in web agency and then some other keywords. In my example, something very basic, for example, web agency for your online success. And in this case, we can go on. We have the WordPress address and the site address that need to stay like this. So don't touch anything here. If you do not see the S here, you can add it, but uh, it's not, uh, 
mandatory. So just leave it like this untouched. This is the administration email address. So be sure to be able to access these email address because it will be considered as the main administrator uh, email address. So it's very important. Down here, we can go and select the language, for example. And here it's very important to select your own time zone. In my case, I'm in Paris, so I will click on Paris. No, Paris. Okay, which is here. And down here, you can choose the date format and the time format. In my case, I'll leave that like this. So March 5th, 24. And down here, I will show the clock in this way. Okay. And my week starts on Monday. Save changes. Perfect. Okay, now we can go down here and continue by selecting the reading section. Okay. In this case, we do not need to do anything right here, but I just wanted to check if the options were okay. Just mentioning the fact that if you want to be invisible to Google and the other search engine while you are creating your website, you can choose to go here and click on this option to discourage search engines from indexing your site. This is very uh, a very delicate option because you need to remember to come back here and uncheck this checkbox once you are ready to publish your website. Uh, in this case, I will consider that I, wa I will be going online soon, so I leave it unchecked. Okay, I save changes, perfect. And uh, basically, that's it from the settings point of view. Now we can go on users, all users, and here you will find your own user. Okay, you are administrator, perfect. You can click on the user and then down here you can change something. For example, you can change the look and feel of your dashboard. I make is I like this modern one and keep in mind that this won't affect the front end of your website but just your back back end your admin dashboard. So in my case I will choose this modern design. Okay, perfect. We'll scroll down here. I insert my name and my last name. And this data will be used if you if you want to use a blog, if you want to open a blog also as we will see at the end of this tutorial. And uh, display name is the name that you will uh, use to showcase your uh, profile. For example, if you have a blog in the box author, in the author box at the end of your post, for example. And same team, same thing here, we can add the S. Okay, the biographical info are all the information about your, um, uh, about your yourself. I've just here my information ready, perfect. And as you can see here, if you want to create a blog, you can then create with all this data your own author box like this one that you can see here. And uh, for changing your image, you can use Gravatar, which is a globally recognized uh, avatar services. So once you click here, you can sign up or log in if you already have an account and you can basically connect one uh, um, a profile image to your email address. So it's very easy and uh, powerful. Down here, you can set a new password. And this is the password that you use to log into your website. And then you can update your profile. Perfect, so that's it. We can go back to the dashboard now. And if you want to log in or log out to from your website, you can go through Hostinger as you saw before. So you go on websites and you click on the admin panel from here or from manage and on the admin panel. And this is quite useful because you are you will be logged in directly without having to need, without needing to type in a password. But if you want to log into your website from the, um, from the front end directly, from the browser, let's say like this, without having to go before into your Hostinger account, you will just need to type your website into the browser bar and type slash WP dash admin. So by typing this into the browser, you will be redirected to your admin area, or if you are not logged in, you will see this screen. And in this screen, you will be able to insert your login details as you create them while you were installing WordPress at the beginning of the video. And then when I log in, I see again my dashboard. So that's it. This is the other way that you can use to log in, log out to your, from your website. And as you saw, if you log out from your website and you go back to your website here, you won't see the black admin bar at the top here. But if you log back in, when you see the website and you reload the page, you will see the admin bar. So this admin bar, it's uh, uh, only there when you are the administrator and when you logged into your website.
Now, one last thing about the management of your WordPress installation. If you go on your dashboard and you go and click on plugins, install the plugins, you will see now that in uh, you, you just have this line here with this plugin installed. And if you go on appearance and themes, you see that you have this situation here. But in, in the general normal in the WordPress installations, you will see here the ability to, to enable or disable automatic updates. This is disabled by Hostinger because they have uh, an internal system to manage all the updates. But I, I just wanted to tell you this because it's very important to be able to manage um, to manage by yourself all the automatic ad updates. So in order to be able to do so, so to have control, full control of automatic updates on your website, you just need to go on websites, you select your website, you go and manage it. In this case, it's our WP Z website. And we go into WordPress overview, perfect. Down here, we just scroll down until we find the WordPress updates. We click on change, and we just need to disable automatic updates, okay? We click on disable, and now if we go back to the plugins page, for example, and we reload it, we will see here in the right side that we have the, the automatic updates options. Now I have the power to choose if I want to enable or disable automatic updates for specific plugins or even for themes. If I go on appearance and themes, I can go here and see that there is this new option appeared here. I can choose to enable or disable auto updates. In the case of the default 2024 theme, I will suggest you to enable auto updates. And in the case of plugins, I will enable this auto updates. During the creation process, it's a good practice to leave all the automatic updates enabled by default. And once you finish creating your website, uh, it is best, best practice to check the updates manually. Keep in mind that all new updates are about security and new features, and so it's very important to do them regularly. And now we will start creating our beautiful website together. We will use Elementor and Elementor Pro, as I explained at the beginning of the video, and we will be able to create a beautiful website full of different kind of uh, designs and uh, any kind of content. Here you will be able to follow along with my video and you will be able most of all to insert your own content and to customize it as you wish to make your website personal uh, and effective for your business or for the business of your clients. So let's go and see what happens and uh, how we can proceed in order to configure everything perfectly and start with the right energy. In this case, we will need to uh, prepare everything in order to be able then to install Elementor Pro. And the first thing to do is to go in your dashboard here and go to Appearance Themes and we will install the Hello theme, the Hello Elementor, which is this one. You type in Hello Elementor, okay? It's a free theme and it's the theme that is also suggested by the Elementor developer theme because it's the most lightweight and fastest theme that goes together with Elementor the best way. So we install Hello Elementor. Hello Elementor. <laughs> we activate this theme, perfect. And then we can choose to click on install Elementor from here, from this message that appears right here. Or we can just go to plugins, add new plugin. We type in Elementor right here and we install Elementor from here. It's just the same thing. As you can see here, we have million of active installations and it is at the moment, the most used page builder for WordPress in the world. So we activate after installation, perfect. And voila, that's it. Here we do not need to do anything. So we just click on the X here, voila. We just go up here and we click on X, okay. We will get rid of this widget here, just click in here, you see, screen options and Elementor overview, we don't want it. Okay, and then what do we need to do now? We go to the plugins, installed plugins. If you want, you can enable the auto updates. This is best practice during the website creation process. Uh, so you will be sure to work always with the latest version of Elementor. But when your WordPress website will be live, 
I always suggest you to switch the, to switch it off and to check manually all the updates to make them manually and check if the website is still working fine after the update. But in this case, while we are working, it's good practice to leave them enabled by default, automatic updates. Same for the theme. So we go on appearance themes. Here we select the hello Elementor theme, which is this one, and we enable the auto updates. Here you can leave them enabled by default. Perfect. So now you uh, you would want to leave also the default uh, theme. Let's leave it there because it's not installed, but in if in any eventuality you need to switch theme, you have this theme here uh, ready to, to do so. And then we can go on with the configuration of our website. Here we are now, ready to buy Elementor Pro from the official Elementor website. If you want to support my channel, I invite you to click on my affiliate link, which is below this video, and it is the link wproads.com slash Elementor. You can even type directly into your browser wproads.com slash Elementor and you will land on this page which is the official Elementor page to buy Elementor Pro. As you can see here we have four different plans. We got the essential one, the advanced, the expert and the agency plan. The most important difference between all the plans is the number of websites in which you can install Elementor. So in the essential you see you only got one website in the popular advanced plan, you got up to three sites in which you can install Elementor Pro. And then if you choose expert or agency, you got 25 or 1000 websites. Of course, these are licenses perfect if you are creating websites for your clients, for example. And they are a great solution if you want to make business by creating Elementor websites. Otherwise, the first two licenses might be the right solutions for you if you are just creating your own business website or if you are just creating your website as an amateur. If you go down here, you will see some big differences because the essential plan has some limitations. You will see only 50 pro widgets and in the advanced plan, you got 82 pro widgets. And if you see here, the dynamic content will be a little bit limited in the essential plan. You won't be able to use custom fields or custom post types in dynamic content if you use the essential plan. You won't be able to uh, save your form submissions into your database if you use the essential plan and you won't be able to connect your form builder uh, with marketing software as MailChimp or ConvertKit or uh, MailerLite or anything you're using to manage your subscriber newsletter, for example. And you won't be able to create pop-ups. You won't be able to use custom code or CSS, which is kind of a useful feature if you are building websites as a pro and you do not have e-commerce features and you do not have collaborative notes. So just keep in mind that the essential plan is quite limited and it's good only if you're creating your website almost as an amateur. While if you are creating a pro website for your business or for your clients, it's better to start with the advanced or expert plans. So let's go down here. You will see that you have 82 pro widgets. And if you want to compare the number of widgets and the type of widgets that you have at your disposal in the different plans, you just need to click here on the compare plan features button and you will click on free and pro widgets. And here you will clearly see all the widgets that you have at your disposal in the different plans. For example, you can see here the free widgets that are already there in the free version of Elementor. You can see the design and theme widgets, which are only there if you choose to buy the essential or higher plans. And then you will see that some, some widgets are only there in the advanced or higher plans. In this case, all the e-commerce widgets are there only if you choose the advanced or higher plans. Okay, that's it. So if you want to dive in deeper here in all the difference of the different plans, you will see them here. And let's see how you can easily buy Elementor Pro. We will choose in our example, the advanced plan. We click on the buy now button. Okay, and now we can just create our account. I've just created mine. In your case, you will see an option to create your account with all your data. So you just need to fill in the form here and then you will be able to confirm your plan. In my case, I'm, I've choose the advanced Elementor Pro plan. You can enter then your billing info, so all the data of your business. Then you can click on continue and you will be able to choose the payment method. In this case, there are at your disposal credit card or PayPal payment methods. Once you're ready, you can click on pay now here and you will buy Elementor Pro. Congratulations. Once you buy your license, you will receive some emails and most of all, you will be able to log in into your account using the data that you created during the buying process. 
So now I'm in my account, I click on subscriptions here on the left side, and I can see my subscription is active. In this case, my subscription is this one, the Elementor Pro Expert, perfect. In order to be able to download my Elementor Pro plugin, I can go here and click on download zip, or there is also a shortcut here in the upper right side of the page, which lead me directly here to the link to download my Elementor Pro plugin. So let's click here, it has been downloaded, okay. I can go back to my website now, I will just need to go on plugins, add new plugin, upload plugin, choose file, downloads, and I choose my Elementor Pro plugin. Voila, install now. Activate plugin, and that's it. We are ready to connect and activate our Elementor Pro plugin. You just need to go here and click on connect and activate. Okay, in this page, you will be asked to log in into your Elementor Pro account. In my case, I've already logged in, so it just showed me the page where I can activate and connect my license. If you want, you can share non-sensitive data with the developer team of Elementor, but in this case, I, I won't do it because it's just a tutorial website and I prefer not to share nothing. I click on activate my license, perfect, and we are ready, great. So now if you go back on plugins, installed plugins, you will see your Elementor Pro plugin is active. Keep in mind that you need to keep both the free Elementor and the Pro Elementor active because Elementor Pro needs the free version in order to work correctly. Okay, now we are ready to set up our Elementor configuration in order to be ready to start with the right settings. So let's go in Elementor, settings, and from here we'll just need to start by disabling default colors and disabling default fonts. This is very important, so pay attention here and do exactly the same thing I'm doing in order to be able to follow along with the tutorial the best way. So settings, disable fonts and colors defaults. Okay, save changes, perfect. Let's go on with the advanced tab now and we will just scroll down here and we will enable unfiltered file uploads. This is quite useful if you want to upload SVG files as the logo, for example, or other things like this. And even if you want to upload some JSON files, including the uh, Elementor templates. If you have some Elementor template that you want to upload, you'll need to enable this feature. And uh, this is great because uh, it uh, allows you to upload external Elementor templates. And this will be very, very important if you plan to use all the free resources that I'm giving to you in the link in the description below, including the Global Styles page, which is very important. As this might be also a security issue later on, you can just keep it enabled during the creation process of your website. And then once you have finished creating your website and you do not need to upload any more SVG files or JSON files, you just need to go back here and disable this. Okay, so now while we are creating our website, we keep it enabled. We can scroll down now and Google Fonts, we disable them. In this way, you will make your website load faster and we will see how you can download and re-upload Google Fonts directly into your Elementor website using the custom font option right here. Then down here, you can leave the other options as they are. Let's click on save changes now. And we will see now the most important part, which is the features part. So again, in Elementor settings, features, Pay attention because if you do not activate the same features I am activating right now, you won't be able to follow along during the tutorial. So let's go and see features. Down here we scroll down and basically here there are the ongoing experiments which are all the features on which the Elementor developer team is working right now. And if you scroll down, you will see the stable features which are all the features that are already active by default on all Elementor installations. So what we need to pay attention here is the experimental features. Just go and check if there are some features that you need to activate. For example, in our tutorial, we will use the grid container. And if you see that in your installation, the grid container is still in the experiment tab and is still inactive, we'll just need to go here and make it active. So just check that the grid container it is active. Keep in mind also the fact that later on when you see this video, the grid container and also the other features that I'm making you activating manually might be also already enabled and already in the stable feature section. Okay, so now let's make sure that the grid container is active. Let's scroll down here and most important thing, let's enable the editor top bar. So 
make it active, okay? Let's scroll down here and let's activate also the nested element, which is very important to do. Activate. And let's activate also the menu. Default, active, perfect. So we will scroll down now and we save changes. Okay, as I was mentioning, it is likely that when you see this video, all these features will be already active by default and you will find them directly here in the stable features. One last thing, if you do not have the Flexbox container active into your website, I strongly suggest you to do so because otherwise you won't be able to follow during the tutorial. Okay, now let's create all the pages of our website. So we just need to go on new page and we can create our home page, for example, which is the first one. Okay, we click on publish, publish again. And then what we can do now, we can click on edit with Elementor. In this case, we will enable Elementor on this page because otherwise, as you can see here, the page will be just managed by the default WordPress editor. But what we want here in this tutorial is to enable Elementor. So let's click on edit with Elementor. Okay. And right here we have um, a pop-up that tells us all the power of Elementor AI. We just need to click on continue. Okay. And this is the Elementor interface. Here, if you do not see the same interface as I'm seeing right now, it means that you didn't enable the correct features as I showed you in the previous step. So make sure that you follow also the previous step. And then right here, we can go on by creating all the other pages. In order to create new pages, we can just go here in the title of the page and click on add new page. Or if you want, you can also click on this icon, which is the finder, which is also easy to reach by typing into the keyboard command E or control E, CTR L E as you can see here, it's very easy to open like this with this shortcut. And if you want to quickly access all the shortcuts that you have at your disposal in Elementor, you just need to click on shift and the question mark, or you can simply go in the upper left side of the page, click on the Elementor logo, and then you see that there is a quick shortcut to keyboard shortcuts, which will open the same panel but we will see it later on during the tutorial. So now what we need to do, we go on the finder, we type in new page, for example, and we click here on add new page, or we can just go here and click on add new page. It's the same. Okay. In this page, we will just go on the page settings in the gear icon here. Okay. And we change the title and we call it about page. Okay. We can now click on publish. We go on by creating all the other pages, add new page, Okay, we go back here in the page settings and we call it, for example, services. Okay, publish. Let's go on creating all the other pages of our website, add new page. And in this case, we will call this page blog page. The last page that I need is this is the content page. So I publish this one and I create also the content page. As I was mentioning, you can also go from here, add new page. It's just the same thing. And here in the page settings, I go and call this page contact. Great. So we publish. And now if I go back to my WordPress dashboard, I click here in the logo of Elementor in the upper left side of the page and I click exit to WordPress. Okay. I can go back here by clicking on view pages and I will see that all the pages that I created are just published now and they are all using Elementor. It's very easy and quick to set up as you saw. Now what we need to do, we need to assign the correct role to the blog and to the home page. So if I want to make this page uh, behave like as, a, as the home page, I need to go to settings, to reading, and I need to click on static page. Your home page displays a static page. And as the home page, I will select my home page. Keep in mind that here you will find only the pages that are already published. In my case, I've published my homepage, even if it's uh, empty at the moment, but I can correctly assign it as the homepage. If I want to create also a blog on my website, I just need to assign the blog page right here. If you do not plan to create a blog, you do not need to do so. You just need to leave it like this, empty. In my case, I, I will do it so I create and assign the post page, the blog page. Perfect. I can click here on save changes. Great. So let's go back to pages, all pages, and we can click here in the home page. As you can see now, this page is the front page and this page is the post page. Perfect. So they are correctly assigned as the, as the role that they need to have, the home and the blog page. 
If you want to launch Elementor, you just need to hover with the mouse and click on Edit with Elementor right here, or if you want, you can click on the page and click on Edit with Elementor right here. There is also another way to enable Elementor on the page. You just need to go and visit your site. In our case, as you can see, we are in our homepage and we can click here on Edit with Elementor. While you're watching your website, you can also enable the Finder and you can type in homepage and you will be able to edit the homepage directly from here. So there are multiple ways that you can choose to go and edit your pages with Elementor. Okay, now we'll just go here in pages and we click on edit with Elementor into our homepage. Okay, so Elementor is active now in the homepage and we can, uh, before, before starting creating all the content, we can go and um, add some simple content that we will use in order to make some more configurations which will be very, very useful to lay down all these basic settings for our website constructions. So let's click on the plus icon here we will choose between Flexbox and Grid. In my case, I will just choose Flexbox and it's also your case, so choose Flexbox. And we will choose the row direction, so from left to right, this one. Perfect. And we will add a simple heading element. So we click on Head Add Element here on the plus icon, Add Element. We'll go down here, Heading, and we simply drag and drop this heading text right here. Okay, here we will just need to Oh, we can just leave it like this for, uh, for now, okay? And I suggest you also now to click here on the container. As you can see here on this handle, you can click on the six dots and it will just select the container, okay? And you can go on the style tab here. You see, there are three tabs. The style is the middle one. And you can assign a background. Let's go on classic, right? And let's uh, select the default here icon, as you can see and we select a global color, no matter what. Just select the primary, for example, okay. We're doing this right now just to be able to set up everything correctly in the next steps. So do the same as me. Now, as you can see here, this is the structure content. I will see, uh, in this way, I'm seeing all my content in this uh, layered structure, which is qu quite helpful in some cases, but at the moment I don't need it, so I close it. I can publish now my page, okay. If I want to save, I can also quickly save by command, by typing into the keyboard command S or uh, CTRL S, which very, is very easy. And now what can I do? It's very easy. I just need to uh, quit the Elementor Builder. So I exit WordPress. I go and visit my page and this is my home page. Now, if I try to stretch the browser, I will see that uh, it's quite weird, you see, because there is different paddings, different margins, uh, from my content and there is also this title I want to get rid of it and uh, I do not want to use the standard hello Elementor theme header and footer so how do I do all this how do I get rid of the header and footer and how do I get rid of the title that's easy and just follow me to do so okay let's go back here we will just need to go into our WordPress dashboard now and from here we go to appearance theme settings and we go and disable the page title and we disable cross-site header and footer. Save settings. Okay. We'll need now to visit our website. And if you still see the title and the header and footer, you just need to go here on this icon, which is the light speed plugin icon cache. We can click on purge all. Okay. And as you see now, the page is empty. We just have our home page like this. We need here to implement now a global setting, which is very important. So let's go here on Edit with Elementor on our homepage, perfect. There is this basic content here. And what we need to do right now is to click on the site settings, which is this icon right here. This is very, very important, and this will make your life easier when you create your website. So pay attention and do as I do the same things. Okay, here, site settings, we scroll down until we find the layout option, which is this one. Let's click on layout. And here under content width, we go on to, on to the desktop icon, as you can see here, and we select the tablet portrait icon. Here we select the percentage and we take in 90, perfect. And we do the same also, we check also the mobile portrait. portrait. We go here, percentage, and we type in 90. Okay. So now, as you can see, if I go back on the mobile, 
And if I go back onto the desktop, that's it. I can even preview my content by clicking here on this show panel little icon, which is this one, as you can see here. You can quickly also access this by typing common P on the keyboard on CTR LP, which is quite a handful and useful shortcut. Okay, perfect. And if you preview your website on desktop, on tablet and or mobile, you will see that the uh, left and right margins will be respected like this. So the maximum width here is 1140 pixels. And if I switch to tablet and mobile, the maximum width will be 90% of the screen. So that's great and perfect in order to have a perfect good looking website in all devices. Let's go on here by adding a container padding. I suggest you here to make it zero everywhere. Perfect, so you will be able to start with zero padding everywhere. And now let's make a quick check here. If I try to go and have a preview of the website, you will see that when I stretch the window here, there are some breakpoints, some you see here, where the content stays at the edges and I don't want this to happen, you see here. So I will need to add um, one more breakpoint. Here it stays again 90% as I as I did before, so it's, it's good, but there is this point here which is the laptop point, breakpoint, which is not set up correctly. So I just need to go back now to my website options. So I'll go back here into the site setting, of course, where we were just right now. And when I scroll down, I will see that there is a section here which is called breakpoints. So I can click here and you will see here that basically we have the t tablet portrait, which is this one, and the mobile portrait, which are the two breakpoints by default. But if we click here on the plus icon, we will see that we can enable other lane, uh, other breakpoints, which are mobile landscape, tablet landscape, laptop, and widescreen. What we need right now is the laptop, but I will suggest you also to insert some other breakpoints because it gives you more flexibility when you want to optimize all your website from the um, responsive point of view. So if you want to optimize your website for all device, Let's enable this one. Let's and uh, as, the, as I am enabling all the break, the breakpoints, you will see that when I save and reload the page, I will find them right up here. So let's enable them. Okay. Uh, also, if you want, you can also enable the widescreen. But in my case, I, I do not need the widescreen. So I save changes. Okay. I reload the page, and I will see all my new breakpoints right above here. You see, there is the desktop, which is the basic one, the laptop the tablet landscape, the tablet portrait, mobile landscape and mobile portrait. It's not mandatory to set up all the settings for each device, but some in some cases it's very useful. Like in my case here, if I click on the laptop view, I will go back here just to make a quick test here. Okay, this is the desktop, this is the laptop view. Okay. Oh, perfect. It works already fine, <laughs> that's weird. <laughs> anyway, we go back to the site settings. We go now again to the layout settings and we check just that the laptop view will have a percentage and we can use the same one, so 90%, okay. So we have desktop, laptop, it works fine. Tablet landscape works fine. Portrait here is 90%, here works fine and here it works fine. Okay, so now we are sure that all your content will behave well in every devices, at least for the spacing left and right. So let's save now. Save changes, we just can quit, okay, okay, let's have a quick preview, voila, and this is our content and the left and right spacing is behaving perfectly on all devices. And let's continue to the next steps. Let's take the time now to see how Elementor works. We will learn together how to use the Flexbox container. The Flexbox container is the main structure, we can even say the main brick of the Elementor layouts. Using Flexbox containers, you will be able to achieve any kind of design that you have in mind. We will take the time now also to explore the Elementor interface, the shortcuts that you have at your disposal on your keyboard, and some quick and easy options that you can enable to work better with Elementor. If you have any question, don't hesitate to write me a line down in the comment section below. Now let's go to the WordPress dashboard and let's create a new page that we will use to make some tests and to learn how to use Elementor from scratch. So let's call it test, test Elementor. Okay. And let's click on edit with Elementor. In this case, we will just go to the gear icon right here and we will scroll down to the left side and we will just make it Elementor canvas. So we will have just a basic empty Elementor page, as you can see here, without any header and footer. Perfect. 
Now, what we can do here, we can just see how Elementor works. As you can see here, there is this stop bar here where you, where you have the Elementor logo with some quick links to the theme builder, which we will learn how to use during this tutorial. You have a history, which will be very useful if you want to, uh, how do you say, to restore something that you made while you were editing your page, and we will see how it works. User preferences, keyboard shortcuts, and access to WordPress. Access to WordPress, it will just basically lead you back to the WordPress dashboard like this, and uh, voila, very easy. Then here you have the quick action to add some widgets, some elements. They, they are becoming to, they're beginning to call them elements instead of widgets. So I guess this is the direction that they are taking for the name of these little boxes that were called once widget, and now they're called elements. Okay, here we have the site settings, which is a very important part of our of our options, of our settings, and we will learn how to use them during the tutorial, of course. When we go back here, we also have the structure, which is a very useful tool, which lets you know and see all the structure of the content that is right in your page. And we will use it a lot while we are working with Elementor. Here, the notes side, it's, uh, in, it's interesting because you can uh, take notes on elements in the page and you can share them with your collaborators or with clients. And uh, that's, a, that's a great solution too if you, if you plan to um, create WordPress websites with Elementor, with, uh, with your team or with clients, of course. Now here we have the quick access to the page settings, as you already saw. From this part, you can change some basic settings, general settings of the page. You, you have here the, um, the settings tab, the style tab, and the advanced tab. And uh, if you click here, you can quickly access your recent pages or you can add a new page. Then go, going on here, you have the mobile view, so you can quickly preview your website in different uh, devices on different devices you can add the different breakpoints here by going to the page to the site settings and we will see it uh, we already saw it uh, I believe in the tutorial if you go on layout and you scroll down to breakpoints you can add here many breakpoints as you want this is a quick access to the finder which is useful because you can use this uh, to um, create new pages or to go directly to some new pages, uh, some other pages of your website. For example, if I quickly want to switch and go editing the home page, I can click here and it will bring me to my home page, as you see. If I go back to the finder by typing command E on the keyboard, I will be able to go back to my, um, to my how, how was it called that page? Test, test Elementor. Voila, very easy, you see. Once you start learning how to use all these shortcuts, it will become even faster working with Elementor. Here you have a quick access to the Elementor documentation, and here you can preview changes that you made directly on the website, okay. Now here you can publish the page, or if you do not want to publish a page, like in this case, because it's just a test, we can just save the draft, and to do so we can also use the keyboard by typing command S or CTRLS, and as you can see here, the page remains in draft, but it is saved. You can also save a page as a template, and this opens up a new section where you can save your page and reuse it, uh, whatever you want in your website. Okay. So basically, this is the structure of the Elementor interface. Here, when you are adding elements, you will see all the elements, all the elements that are at your disposal right here on the left side. You can choose to drag and drop them right here, or you can choose to click on them and they will create a new container with the element inside. So this is the basic working of the Elementor widgets or elements, <laughs> um, okay, which is the new name. So now we, we will just um, click on the plus icon and you also have here a quick access to the template folder, which contains some blocks, some pages that are provided by Elementor um, that I normally don't, don't um, suggest you to use them because they're they're kind of messy they can become very very messy in in a in a very quick way if you do not uh, have the um, how do you say the ability to customize them correctly and to change styling globally i prefer to work with my own templates and to save them and reuse them all over my uh, my website of course and uh, in this case i do not need it here you can also create something using ai this is a new uh, how do you say a new feature that has been added last year. And in this case, we just want to, we will use it later on during the tutorial. So now we'll go into plus 
we can choose between grid and flexbox. If you choose flexbox, you have different structures here and the flexbox normally is the most used one because it's the more flexible, of course. The grid one, it's, um, it's uh, useful when you have to uh, how do you say, to build some grids. And we will see, for example, in our basic website, this one, we use a grid, for example, here, where we have a six column grids that we can change uh, in, uh, into, into two columns, for example, where we are here, and in one column when we are here. And this is a, a great solution if you want to build uh, very simple grids like this one. And um, let's go on now by continuing our exploration of Elementor. So the first thing we need to do is to learn a little bit more about Flexbox because Flexbox, as I was mentioning to you, is the basics of the layout structure of all the content in Elementor. And you will see that once you become familiar with Flexbox, Flexbox it will be very powerful for you and you will be able to create any kind of design, exactly as I did in the uh, example website that I showed you here, which is the website that we will create, recreate all together. Okay, so let's see how we can um, get a little bit familiar with Flexbox. Let's go back here. Perfect. We will choose. We we can choose different kind of layouts here, but we, to start, we will just choose the first one, which is the the one which has a column direction from up to down. So okay. As you can see here, this is my content. And uh, let's add a bunch of widgets uh, to see how they behave. So we click on the plus icon, or even better, we, we click here on the plus icon. We can also open the structure. So we see that we already added a container, which is empty at the moment. If we keep the selection to this container, we can click on the plus icon and we can simply click on any widget here, on any element, and it will be added inside that container. So for example, I will need a heading, okay? I will also need, um, let me say, um, a button, for example, and I will insert here, um, let's say, um, an, uh, a text editor and an image, okay. Very basic content, voila. So now, as you can see, all the content, as the container is a column direction, goes from up to down. If I want to change the container direction, I can go back to the container, and I see here three options, three um, tabs. The first one is the layout one, the second one is the styling tab, and the third one is the advanced tab. Okay, so now if I stay on the layout tab, I see that the container layout, it's on Flexbox. I do not need a grid right now, I need it to stay on Flexbox. And I can choose the content width, the, the width of, of course, the min, minimum height, and the items direction, justify content, align items, gaps, and wrap and some additional options. So let's see how the, all this work. If I need, as I was mentioning before, to change the direction of the content, I just need to go here into the items direction and I can do like this. As you can see now, it is in the row direction. If I want, I can go back to the column vertical direction. direction. And now let's see here how it works from the content width. It's now boxed. It, this means that all the content inside the container will stay in these values. So in this case, it will remain 1140 pixels. And when we are into the laptop mode, it will stay like this, perfect. Into the tablet mode, it will stay like this and so on. In this case, they are all inheriting my global settings, which are 90% on all the other devices. In my desktop, the maximum width is 1140 and in laptop laptop and other views they are all 90 percent of the screen okay so let's go back now to the um to the width okay to the to the desktop okay we will see something very interesting because if we switch now to the full width uh, let me let me show you clearly like this you see it's the content inside the container that is changing to make it even more clear we can go to style and add a background so that you can see visually what's happening, you see. Let's go back into the layout, it's still boxed, and now if I change the content width, is the content inside the container which is changing. If I want to switch to full width here, as you can see now, if I change the width, it's the whole container that's changing its own width which is kind of interesting because you will need so uh, you will need this uh, many times when you are editing containers inside other containers and we will make an example soon okay so this is the main options these are the main options let's go back to the default here perfect and now you can also have a minimum height 
uh, this works uh, oh, if you let me let me check here for example this image I select the image I can go to style you can see here we have also three tabs which is the content style and advanced I choose the style one and I change the width to pixels and I put it about 250 pixels so the image will be uh, visible like this I change it to the left okay and if I go back to my container now okay I see that I can also set up a minimum height you see in this case, um, it's uh, often not um, not the best practice to do so, but in some cases we will need to do so. And if I use the minimum height, I will also be able to justify content, you see, vertically. In this case, if I do not have a minimum height, the content would not justify vertically because there is no space there. But if I'm using this with a minimum height, all the content can be differently positioned inside the column in this case. You see, it's very easy and intuitive. So start, center, and space between, it means that it will stretch all the content to the borders and it will add space between all the elements. Space around, the same space around all the elements. Space evenly, no, sorry, space, ev space evenly is um, the same amount of space between all the elements. Space around, it will just add some custom space between, um, uh, on, on, around the elements, around each element. Okay. Okay, so this is the basic uh, working. Let's go back to the minimum height standard like this. Perfect. We can go now and decide to center content. This is kind of a useful situation. If you want to center content uh, in the whole container, you can do like, like this. But be careful here because um, when you only use this to center content and you have some text-based widgets, like in this case, when you go to other devices, like for example, tablet, as you can see here, the text is no more centered. And if you go to mobile, all the text widgets are no cent not centered. So be careful here because if you are using, uh, as I was mentioning, text widgets, you need to go back to the desktop and to make sure that not only this align items is centered, but even the single widgets, when you go inside them, in the style tab need to be centered. Also this one, style tab centered. Like this, if I go back to the tablet, now the text is centered. And if I go to the mobile, everything is centered. So this is very important to know to place content like this. Okay, so now what happens if I want to create a more complex layout? That is very easy, but before doing so, let's see some a couple of other options that you have inside the container. So we scroll down right here. We see that in the direction, we can also reverse the order and revert it like this. For example, if I keep the column vertical, I, in some cases, maybe on mobile, I want to reverse all the order of the content and I can do it like this. And this is quite useful. For example, if I have my my main order like this in vertical and I want and I want it to be different in to my mobile portrait, I go to mobile portrait and I say that I want my column to be reversed. So when I'm on desktop, I have my title, my button, my text and my image. And when I'm on mobile, the 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 order is reversed. This is quite useful in many cases, so it's a good it's a very good um, option to know where to use. Then what do we have here? We have the, oh, let's, let me get rid of it because maybe in our, okay, perfect. Okay. We have the align items that we already saw and then we have the gaps. In the gaps, uh, we can choose the gap between all the widgets and containers that are contained inside the container. So for example, if we go to zero, you see, everything will become very uh, close to each other. And if I go to 2020, everything will become more spaced like this. Wrap, it's very interesting and it's uh, useful if I'm using a row horizontal um, structure and uh, I want to wrap some elements. So if I click on wrap, as you can see here, each element becomes a full width, the maximum of its own width. In this case, I can even go further. For example, I can go in this element and make it in the styling. Uh, but in this case, it's uh, I, I will do you uh, another example of the wrap option because it's a little bit uh, more complex. So let's get rid of this image, okay? We will just add down there a few icons, icon box, okay? Let's duplicate this, okay? One, two, and three. Duplicate, perfect. So let me put this text above here and uh, perfect. So now what I will need to do is this. I will just get rid of this text down here. I will shorten the titles. As you can see here, content is in the wrapped options. 
So I will get rid of this too. It means that each content will try to stay into the row by occupying the whole, the whole space that it needs. In this case, you see the content here needs just uh, this space. And uh, let me go here and make it full width like this. Advanced, default, we go to full width, okay? Here we do the same. We go and we make it advanced, full width, okay? And here we do the same, advanced, full width, perfect. And we can also center this element, in this case, our button, we make it centered. And as you can see, I created a pretty complex structure just by using a single container, in this case, which is a best practice. The less number of containers you use, the fastest will load your, your pages, you will load faster. And so you go here, and you can, in this case, maybe add some padding, advanced padding top and bottom, so that I have a little bit more space. And voila, basically that's it. We, we created a, a basic structure in this way. So this is uh, the functioning of the, of the Flexbox container. So now if I go back to the layout and I take off the wrap, as you can see, everything will try to stay in the same row. But if I use the wrap, each content will try to occupy the, the maximum width that it can occupy. In this case, I've made all the elements 100%, as you saw. And so they are occupying all the space of the of the row in this case. Well, these other contents are just taking the space that they need to exist. <laughs> so voila, if I add some more content like this, they will just go like this. And voila, these are more advanced customization. Anyway, we will learn how to use them during the tutorial and we will be able to create very complex structure by optimizing the number of containers and the structure with all the settings that we have here with the Flexbox containers. Now, let's start again by building a new kind of structure. We click on the plus icon, we go on Flexbox. We go now onto the um, uh, row direction, okay? And we can click on the plus icon and start adding some content. We will add a first container here on the left side and we will add a second container just by duplicating this one, okay? And be careful here because the containers that are contained inside other containers, like in this case, you see in this structure here, I have the main container oh, and uh, then I have two containers, the first one on the left and the se second one on the right side. Be careful here because the contained elements, uh, if you add them manually like this, uh, they need to be in full width in order to cover all the content, all the space that they, that they need inside here. So even this one, for example, I put it full width, the second one. Okay, full width, perfect. Let me say now that I want to create a structure similar to this one with uh, some text and buttons to the left side and an image on the right. We will just need to insert some content here by selecting the first container clicking on the plus icon, I will add an adding text and I will add a text editor and I will add a button, okay? And then on the right side, I will click on the plus icon or rather selecting the container, click on the plus icon here and clicking on the image. Okay, perfect. I always select before the container because if you do not select the container, when you add the elements by clicking on them, they will create a new container. And so this is not what we, what we want right now. By selecting the main container here, I can position all the elements differently. For example, I can, design to, I can decide to align items center like this. This is great. And I can also decide to increase or decrease spacing between the elements and do whatever I want with all the options that we already saw together. So here, for example, if I increase the column and row spacing, it goes like this. And if I leave it default, it's 20 pixels. So leave, uh, let's leave them default right now. Here, the image, we will leave it like this, perfect. And um, as I was mentioning, you can, uh, you can also obtain some very complex structures even by using less containers. In this case, for example, the first container here on the left, we will make it, uh, if we want to get rid of one container, in this case, we can do so because we can get rid of this one because the image can stand out of the container. Okay, as you can see here, we can get rid of this one. We delete it, okay. So we are, you, we are using less containers, which is a best practice. The first container, we will put it on 50%. And the image, we will go onto the advanced tab and we will go to the custom width and we will go to 50%, same here. Okay, 
now it works perfect as, a, as if uh, there were two containers, but they're just one main container and image. Why I need a container to for the first part? Because I need to these elements to be um, how do you say in a in a column. While I need the whole design to be in a row. This is the first container and this is the second container. The whole design, the main container, is a row. You see here is horizontal. But the contain the design of the of the specific container, the first one, is vertical because all the elements are placed vertically. Now, what happens if I want to uh, add, for example, a second button which needs to be in the same row at n and uh, not follow the vertical, um, the vertical direction? Because if you, if you duplicate this button, for example, as you can see here, it tends to stay directly into the vertical direction. It's not uh, at the right side of the, of the button like in this design here. What happens here is that I just need to do the same thing as we did before. So I click here on the container, the first one, and use the wrap content, the wrap element. I go to wrap, I select wrap, okay. I go and uh, I go and make it horizontal, okay, perfect. And as you see here, this is perfectly aligning one side by side. In to be sure that all the other content is correctly aligned, I can go in the first one and make it advance and make it full width. Okay, so that I'm sure that all the content will be taken from this first widget. Same thing here. I go to the advanced tab and I make it full width. So all the, all the widgets will be full width while the buttons will not be full width and will be wrapped and uh, they will tend to stay one beside the other. So if I go and preview my page right, right now, I've created a, quite a complex uh, layout like this, all by using one main container, a second container here on the left side and a simple image here on the right side. So this is basically how Flexbox container works. Uh, of course, this is just a basic um, introduction, but we will, we will learn how to use them quite deeply during the tutorial. So this was just a quick introduction to make you understand the principles. And now we are almost ready to go on, but before diving deeper, we just need to go back here and see what happens if I need to change a single element positioning inside a container. So, for example, if I am inside uh, this main container here and I want to change the order or the positioning of the elements inside it, I can go and uh, select uh, the elements. For example, let's say that on mobile or on tablet, for example, I want to switch the order and I want this column to be on the right side and this image to be on the left side. Or even better, in mobile, I want this image to be before. So, what, what I need to do, I go in the image, to the advanced tab, I select full width in mobile, perfect. In order to have this image before the first container, only on mobile, I can go here into the order section and I can place the order to the start. Voila, that's very easy, you see. And so when we are on mobile, the image will appear before. And while we are on the other devices, the image will be in the second part. You see here, perfect, perfect, and tuck. In mobile, the image will be before. So this is an option that you can achieve in the advanced tab because in the advanced tab, as you can see, you can move around all the elements that are contained inside a container. Now let's simplify things again. So we delete this one. We unwrap all the content right here and we make it vertical. So we unwrap and we make it vertical like this. Perfect. And uh, let me show you how you can override some single element positioning inside the container. And if you want, for example, all the content to be to, uh, on the start, but only, like say, the button to be to the end, you select the button, you go to advanced, and you place the button to the end of the container. That's it. So very easy. You can also place it to the center and you can basically override the main container options and you can tell the single element to be positioned differently inside the container. So this is great. So this is it, the align self. And of course, also the order positioning, it's, uh, it's uh, something that can override the order of the elements inside the container. And this side uh, is very useful because you can, you can make grow the element to occupy all the space in the direction of the flexbox. In this case, the direction is vertical, so you can see nothing when I click on row, on grow, you see. But if I if I use the um, horizontal direction, you will be able to see an horizontal growing of the element. We will use the grow option often, uh, for example, during the header, the, when we create our header right here, and uh, you will be able to do many things with the grow option, which is quite useful. 
Okay, so basically that's it. This is a basic introduction to the Flexbox container. And I hope that you understand a little bit, but don't worry because during the tutorial we will dive deeper and you will become more and more familiar with this, or with all these options. Now let's spend a few minutes by learning the Elementor, the basic Elementor shortcuts. For example, if I am inside the WordPress dashboard, okay, I can quickly access my Elementor pages by typing command E and opening the finder. This is quite useful because you can quickly access your Elementor parts. Let's say that we want to go and edit our homepage. We type in homepage, we select our homepage, and we will just open Elementor to our homepage, which is great. So let's go on by diving into the shortcuts, still using our finder, which is this one, command E or just using this icon here. You will be able also to go and um, directly go to the general settings, for example. Voila, very easy. You can quickly navigate between all the different Elementor parts. And for example, you can even uh, create a new page and be creating it directly into Elementor. New page or new post even. Add a new page. Voila, I'm just creating a new page inside Elementor. This is very useful. So the basic solution here to open this shortcut is command E like this and it will open up the finder, which is a kind of a useful tool to quickly access some features, settings, and create new content right inside your uh, Elementor or even to the WordPress dashboard. As you see here, even if I'm in the WordPress dashboard and I click on and I type, type command E, I can still open the finder and quickly reach all the pages that I want to edit with Elementor like this. Okay, another interesting way to find out about shortcuts in Elementor is to go here inside the builder and open the keyboard shortcuts bar. From here, you can quickly access all the shortcuts and you can see there is undo, redo, copy, paste, paste style, delete, and so on. We also have the quick shortcuts for the panels. For example, from here, if I want to quickly access my um, general options of the page, I go and command shift epsilon and voila, these are the options of the page. If I want, I can quickly preview the page like this by clicking, uh, by typing common P, which is common preview, very useful. And if you want, you can also quickly access uh, other elements. Just go here, keyboard shot, shortcuts. You can go to the size settings, to the structure. Uh, the structure is quite useful, which is this one right here. You can quickly open it and close it by typing in common E, common E, voila, very useful. Then if I go back here, I can go and uh, uh, quickly access the history, the history of the page. It's useful because I can uh, I can quickly go and see what actions I made on the page, all my changes, and I can quickly restore them or delete them if I want. It's very, very useful. And we will use it during the tutorial, of course. And then so on, you can dive into the shortcuts. Uh, and there are some of these that are very, very interesting and useful. You can even save the page by typing in command S, this one. And this shortcut is quite useful because it allows you to save the page without having to click on the publish button or without having to click on the save draft button each time you, you finish working on your page, of course. So this, this is it. Basically, I hope that you will uh, learn how to use the basics of uh, the, some, some of these shortcuts because they are very useful and they can speed up your working process. Now that you have learned the basics on how to use the Elementor Flexbox container, we are ready to start building the header and footer of your website, which are the most important parts in order to make your website effective and easy to navigate. We will optimize everything for any kind of device. And so let's get started. In order to create our header, we will need to activate the theme builder. So we go back here into the editor and by clicking on the icon upper left side, we'll just need to click on theme builder. From here, you will be able to create your header. As you can see here, you have your header. You can also click here on the plus icon or by clicking here on the plus icon. Perfect. So this is our header. We just need to click on the X here because we will create it from scratch. Okay, we click on the plus icon. We'll add a Flexbox container and we'll choose to have it still from left to right. So uh, direction row, perfect. Now what we need to do here is to add a basic content so we'll just need to add a logo. We click on the plus icon and we add a logo, site logo. We click on the plus icon and we add also a site title. 
if you want. It's just something that I, I am showing you how to do so, and you will be able then to choose which kind of content you want to insert here in this header. As you can see now, if I click on the logo, I can change the styling, and what I need to do here is change the dimension, of course, because it's too big. So I go here into the width settings, and I can go into the pixels, and I'll choose to have a logo about 80 pixels, okay. I can publish now the page, and oh, before publishing, we just need to go in the header settings, this is very important, clicking on the gear icon here, header settings, we go on the advanced tab, no, sorry, we go to the settings tab, and we click on the HTML tag header. This is very important from SEO point of view, so make sure to do so. Gear icon on the settings tab, HTML tag, and just choose header so that this is recognized as a header. Perfect. Now what we need to do is to go and change the name here. We just leave header so it's a little bit more tidy. Okay, perfect. And clean. And when we click publish, as you can see here, if I click on publish, I can choose to save as a draft if I want. But if I need to publish this header, which is what I want to do right now, I need to add a condition. So I click on add condition and I can assign this header to the entire website. You see here, it's already selected like this. So I save and close, okay? And if now I, um, before going to, to do all, all the other stuff, I just need to select my container. So I click on the structure here, I select the container, or I can just click here on the handle. And right here, I will need to make it, if I want, I can leave it box it, and I can add a style, a background, and here we'll just need to add a, a, another background, for, for example, the accent background, okay? And this is just to make you consent of the working of the header. So it's just an example, just a little test that we are doing together. We will publish now. We're going to see our website from the front end by clicking on the eye icon here. And voila, that's it. So this is our header, perfect. If now we go and visit our dashboard and we go back and visit our site like this, we will see our homepage like this. So now let's add a logo to your website. You can easily create a logo using Canva if you are not a professional logo maker and if you do not have a budget or other ways there are a lot of different services online that provides you with custom logo creation from professionals like for example, for example Fiverr or similar services. Um, okay, so let's go. In my case, I already have my logo here. I've created it using Canva and uh, I've used it also an SVG format, so it's uh, quite professional and I can use it almost everywhere. And uh, let's see how it works here on my website. In order to add your logo, you just add it with Elementor your homepage, for example. And now we go to the site settings here in the icon of the site settings. We go and add in the site identity our logo. So we scroll down here. And if you have an horizontal logo, it suggests you 350 per 100 pixels. And for the fav icon, which is the icon that you see here in the browser tab up here, for the fav icon, you can use an, an icon which is 512 per 512 pixels. These are just suggested uh, dim dimensions, it's not uh, mandatory, of course. And so let's choose our first image as the site logo. And in this case, we will upload the SVG file, which is already there for me. So I have this one and this one, perfect. And um, remember that if you want to upload SVGs, you have to enable this option right from the options page in Elementor, the setting page here, settings, Elementor, advanced, enable unfiltered file uploads, because otherwise it won't upload SVG files. Okay, now we are here in this page and we can upload our logo. I have two logos here, one which is the um, squared logo like this, and the other logo it has also my, um, my full logo, let's say like this. So I upload this one here, the other one I can upload it there, Perfect. I can save changes and I can reload the page and I will see that my logo is now visible here. You see, it's a little bit uh, small, but it's there. In my case, I want a different kind of header. It will be another, a more modern header. And I want to separate my logo icon here from the, from the name of the website, from the title of the website. Okay. So let's see how to do so. I'll go back into my page, of course, here. I click again on the site settings icon. I go to the site identity again, 
and instead of using this logo here, I'm using both of them squared, like this, the same icon for both of them. Save changes and reload the page. Okay, I click here again on the icon of the site settings, and as you can see now, in my header, in my main header, I've got this logo here uploaded. I can go to styles, I can change the dimension if I want. In my case, I'll leave it just to 80 because it's fine for me. Okay, 80 pixels. And if I want, I can also go and style my title, but not immediately. We will do it uh, soon, but not immediately. And if now I am going to watch my, uh, to preview my website, I will see also that in my browser tab, there is my fav icon, which is this one, the icon that shows my logo in the, in the browser tabs. Perfect. So now that I added my logo and my five icon, I'm ready to customize my header. Now we will start customizing our header and we will create a modern good looking header like the one that you're seeing right now in screen. This one with logo, the side of, the, of our website, the menu here, the contact button and some social media icons. And this header will be optimized also for mobile. As you can see here, as I stretch the window, we will have the menu like this. And we will also be able later on during the tutorial to create a beautiful slide in menu like this one. Voila. <laughs> so to do so, we'll just need to start from scratch. And we're doing like this. We're going to our website. We already have the basics of our header created like this. And we will go on editing it by clicking here on the header element here. We can also reach the header by going to the theme builder and clicking on edit, on header and on edit right here. It's just the same thing. Okay, so now we are in this situation. We have our header. Let's go and change the background color. We just need it for the beginning. But before changing it, we just go and activate our structure, select the container. And I will show you a very interesting thing about container Flexbox. Here, if you choose the container layout Flexbox, you leave it like this, you can choose the content width. You can choose to make it boxed or to make it full width. In this case, if you make it full width and you choose, for example, here to make it in pixels and you give it a maximum width, like for example, 100, uh, 1140, okay? You will see here by clicking on this icon that the header will become detached from the sides. So left side and right side will be detached and you're actually controlling the full width of the whole container like this. If you click on boxed, it will be just the inside, of the content inside of the container that will be, you see, stretched from side to side. So it depends on you, on your needs, on your uh, design needs. But in this case, I'm creating a floating header like the one that you're seeing here. So I need to detach them from, uh, from side to side. So I just need to make it full width. I leave it the same, the same value here, 1140, perfect. And I'll just be uh, here, I'll just need to check here the behavior on different uh, different, uh, how do you say, you see uh, different devices. In laptop, I just go here, percentage, and I choose to have 90. In this case, I just need to check also in tablet mode, it's just 90, and in tablet portrait, and in, okay, perfect. All the other devices you see are 90. In uh, mobile, you can choose to leave it at 100%, or if you want to detach the side to side, you can also go here for 90. I will do like this in my case. And so let's go back to desktop. We have our beautiful header and we now have it detached from side to side on all the different devices. Perfect. This is my beautiful header. Voila. <laughs> that was easy, right? Okay, perfect. Now we can select our container. We can rename it and we can call it main header. Okay. We can go back here now inside the container options and in the style tab, we can get rid of the <laughs> terrible background color. So we just go here and we erase it like this. Perfect. Now going back to the container layout options, we will just scroll down here and we will choose to align items vertically centered like this, you see? So that the title of our website will be vertically aligned. In this case, this is our website title and we'll change the styling later on during the next steps of the tutorial. We'll just need to go now here to the plus and to add a beautiful menu. We type in menu and we'll choose this one, which is the menu, the modern good looking menu, which is the latest menu provided by Elementor. Okay, we just drop, drop it inside here. 
okay? And we can choose into these options, into the item position options, to have it to the end or to the start. In this case, I will make it to the end so that I'm recreating the same structure as you see here. So the menu will be to the right side, so to the end of the, of the space of the header, perfect. If I want now, I can add a button and, and some social media icons. So it's that what I would do right now, right now. I click on add elements, button, this one, perfect. I drag it here and I can use the structure element here to navigate better if I need it. So I just, you see, I just move the button here and then I will go and add some social media icon, perfect. So plus social media. Okay, if you want, you can even just click on the icon and they will be added there. But be careful because you need to, you to, in order to do so, you need to select the main container, you see? And then you go to the plus icon and to the social media, for example. I click on them without having to drag and drop and they will be immediately added to my header in this case. Okay, so I delete this one, right click of mouse and delete, perfect. In my case, now I click on the social media icons and I go to style tab and I select the custom color, okay. I will be able later on to work with primary and secondary color at a global level, which uh, will be great because we will be able to, uh, how do you say, to manage all these colors globally, which is beautiful. I'll show you a quick example here. If I go now here on my example website to the site settings and global colors, I will be able to easily change them with a click of a mouse right inside the builder, you see? Just with a click, beautiful. And all this thanks to the fact that, I'm, uh, that I've set it up all these colors globally, which is great. And you will see it's very, very easy and uh, straightforward to do so. So right now we just need to go outside. We do not save because I like this blue. And um, before diving into the into the styling of this uh, of, of all these elements, let's go here to the menu now and let's add some custom links. So I will select my first item. I will name it home, for example, and I can link it to the home page simply the, um, typing inside here home and you will find the home page link. You see here, I simply select my home page and voila, this is my home page link. Okay, perfect. So I go on with the other items. I go to the secondary item and to the second item and this one will be my about page, for example. So I type in about and I select the about page. Perfect. You see here, this is my about link. Okay. And I can go on to the third item. I will use this for the blog page or for the services page, for example, services page. If I want, I can also duplicate this or just add item. I add a new item and I will call this one blog page and I will type in here blog and this is my blog page. To the service page, I just forgot to type in services and it's quite easy, you see, and uh, really, really simple to add content like this. And now if I publish my header and I go and see my website like this, exit to WordPress, visit website, this will be my new header. If you do not see it immediately, just go here and purge cache like this, purge all. And now we can just navigate. You see, these are all our pages. Or they are empty right now. Just the home page have some content right here. And um, I can continue editing my header. So I scroll, I just hover with the mouse here with on edit with Elementor and I select my header. So I can edit my header again. Perfect. Right here, I go on the button and inside here, I can change the call to action and made contact, contact us. And I can change here the link to the contact page. Perfect. Very easy and simple. Right down here into the social media icons, I can choose to change the link. If I have a Facebook page, for example, I can paste the URL of my page right here. If I have a Twitter account, if I have a YouTube account, I can paste my URL right here. And if I want to add more social media items, I can go down here and I can select the social media I want. In my case, I will put it inside Instagram here you will find all the social media that you need right inside here. If you need, you can also upload custom icons and uh, if you do not find the icon that you are searching for right here. Okay, in this case, I will also paste my Instagram link right here, perfect. Perfect, so I can also change the shape here and I will make it square 
or I can even go into these styling options and I can make the padding right zero and it's the, the thing that I've done here, for example. And in this case, I can also change the colors, as I was mentioning before, but we will do so later on during the uh, global styling part. One last thing here is that I can go to advanced, I can go to the margin and I can unlink values like this, like uh, so that they are all to zero automatically. And once I have unlinked them, I can go to the right margin and make it 20 pixels. Okay. So now, what can I do? I can go to the main element, clicking on Instructor, main header, okay? And I can add a border. As you can see here, I have a border all around. Perfect, perfect. How to do so? I go to the Advanced tab. Uh, no, sorry, go to the Style tab and I select Border. And I click on Default and I select Solid. Here I can go and add a border width. I will go with a one pixel border width and I can choose a color, but in my case, I won't do that because I will do this later on during the tutorial. Okay, so as you can see here, this is a preview of my header. The structure is the same, perfect. And um, I just need to detach it a little bit from the top, you see here. Now my header is a little bit detached from the top of the screen and uh, to do so, we just need to go back here be sure to select the main header, in this case, the main container. We'll go to advanced, we'll go to, uh, or even better, if you want, you can go to the global settings here, global header settings, to the advanced tab, to the style tab in this case. We unlink values of margin and we use a top margin about 20 or 10 pixels. Perfect, publish. Let's go and visit our website now. And voila, this is the structure of our header. Don't worry about the styling because we will, we will be able to change all the styling later on during the tutorial. And now the important part is the content and the layout of the content. So let's check now how this header is behaving on laptop. It's quite good. On tablet, okay, this is a problem because we will need to change the styling of this menu as it's not quite uh, uh, nice. But the other elements are okay. On here it's okay and here it's a little bit of, of a mess and so we will need to uh, optimize everything for mobile. So let's start from the tablet portrait. You see here there is this icon that has appeared right now which is the mobile uh, mobile menu item. If you, if you want you can uh, change something here. Mm, let's see how to do so. You can go here by clicking on the menu right here, okay, perfect. And in the left side, we can go in the styling tab. But before going to the styling tab, we can also change the position of the elements. For example, if I change the item positions here, I can center, and if I open the icon, you see that all the menu items will be centered. If I leave them here, they will be on the right side, and if I leave them here, they will be on the left side. I will need to center them right now, okay, perfect. So at least all the items of my menu are uh, really, really, um, how do you say, straightforward to select when I open my menu. And I can even choose to um, replace this menu in the right side of the page, which is best practice in general. So what I should need to do here is this. I select my menu, I go to the advanced tab, and I place this element in the align self at the end. No, sorry. <laughs> I place the element in the order at the end. Okay, perfect. You see? And the align self is not useful right now. So let's leave them, leave them like this. Let's go back now to the content. It's uh, quite of a mess uh, <laughs> here because there are many, many features. So be careful to pay attention at each step. In the content section, we scroll down now, we go to the menu toggle and we choose to put it at the end. Voila. We also need to go to the advanced tab to un unlink the values and to have a right margin about 20 pixels. So voila, so that it's a little bit more okay, organized. Now if I click here, the menu looks great. Okay, perfect. And if I want also to give it a, a different styling to this um, drop down here, I can go back to the settings. Now, in order to be able to edit all this, so the background and the elements and so on. We'll just need to select the menu, okay? And here we go to the Style tab, we scroll down until we find drop-down menu. So let's leave this open like this 
and into the style drop down menu, we will be able to change the styling of this part. And if you want to make it stand out a little bit, is to add a box shadow, okay? And we can keep it really, really subtle. For example, we can go here and make it zero. We can have a spread about one, perfect, okay. Now it looks like a border, and um, the, um, the reason why I'm doing this, it's because in the border type, the solid one, it's a little bit, there is a bug, and so it doesn't work very well. But if you select shadow, you can either add a, a shadow, as you saw before, by adding some blur like, blur like this. I don't recommend you to do so uh, if you do not have experience as a web designer, because it can mess up things quickly if you add shadows uh, in a non-professional way. But if you want to add a shadow, you can do so by um, doing 10% uh, blur, a 10 pixel blur, blur, which is okay. And by, okay, going like this into the vertical tab, okay, 10%, 10 pixels, maybe a little bit less, or maybe we can go with the color and make it a little bit less strong like this. Okay, perfect. And so as you can see, the menu now is standing out a little bit more, but uh, I prefer to add a border. So what I will do, it's like this. I go into the vertical, zero, blur, zero. I leave the spread at one and I can go here and change the color. I will leave a very subtle color like this one. Perfect. Okay, right now it's well, I'm going to publish this. I'm going to have a preview, so let's see it like this in action. My menu is working fine, okay. And what I need to do right now is to change also if I want the colors of the elements, uh, but the colors we will see them later on, but the positioning. So if I need to see other kind of positionings, I just leave the menu options open here. In the style here, I can do nothing more. If I want, yes, I can just add a box shadow to the single elements, but we, we won't do so right now. So let's leave them like this. And I can go back to the content here. If I want to replace the content differently, I can go like this, but in my case, it will work fine centered. Okay, last thing I can do is go to style. Now I will also show you how you can uh, increase the distance between the menu and the content. You see here that it's quite, uh, it's too it's too near, in fact, because they, it's covering some of the other elements. To do so, you just need to go to style, to menu toggle. You scroll down until you find distance from drop down. Okay, and from here, we can increase or decrease the distance, you see. What we need to do, it's just like this, okay. We publish and we have a preview right now. Okay, now it's working fine. I have my menu right this, easy to access, voila, perfect. And it looks good. Now, if I want this space to get rid of this space, I just need to go here in the, in the title, for example, okay or in the logo, it depends on uh, which content are you using here in your uh, left side. In my case, I want the title to be uh, aligned like this. So the title is here on the left. Uh, I, I want this space to be, um, to be kept. So I want to keep this space here. So what I need to do, I go in the website title. In this case, I select this one and I click on the advanced tab and I go to grow, perfect. I'll do now the same thing here, but instead of selecting grow, into this icon here of the toggle. I will go to the advanced tab and I will select sites and instead of selecting grow, I will select shrink. Okay, now as you can see, everything is way more aligned, perfect. I can also check from landscape here and from mobile. Okay, and everything starts to, uh, to fit a little bit more uh, better, a little bit better. The last thing I need to do in order to optimize on my mobile here, it's uh, this, so I need to go to the mobile portrait, portrait and I will simply hide the contact us button and the social media icons. So I go in, inside the button here, I go into the advanced tab, I scroll down and I see that there is an option which is called responsive and I can hide this on my mobile portrait. I can do the same here in the social media icons and I can scroll down responsive and hide on mobile portrait, perfect. Now, if I go and have a preview, my menu will look like this. So it's perfect, it looks fine. And if I click here, I have my menu with all my pages, voila. Publish, let's go and see the menu like this in action on my website, looks fine. Let me check all different devices, voila, wow. We, we work very well, it's perfect, it looks fine. 
and we are ready to style it perfectly with our global styling. Wow, beautiful. Now that you have structured the layout of your main header, we are ready to start creating your wall design system. We will begin by creating a global styles page, which will contain some basic content like headings, buttons, paragraphs, and you will use this page to have a quick preview of your whole design system. We will then set up custom colors and custom fonts for your whole website. And if you follow step by step, this part of the tutorial, you will be able to create a global design system in which you will be able to make any adjustment and modification in a few clicks. This will be perfect when you will need to change anything by following your client's requests or your own brand design evolution. So now let's dive in. Now, in order to set up our global stylings, so colors, fonts, and the shapes and the forms, as you see here, uh, we will need a global stylings page. It's not mandatory, but it will be very useful for you if you download this by subscribing to my newsletter, which is all free, of course, and you can unsubscribe at any time. And I will provide you the link down in the description below and also here in the video. And when you, when you subscribe, you just access immediately to this page where you can download this global styles page from this link. Perfect. So once you download this global styles page, you will be able to upload it like this directly to your Elementor website. How to do so? It's very easy. We we'll just need here to download the global styles page. Perfect. And once you download it, you have a zip file which you need to open. And inside the zip file, there is a JSON file, which is this one, which is the file that will, you will need to upload to your Elementor website in order to have this beautiful page ready to customize your styling. As I was mentioning, it's not mandatory, but it's quite useful and easy to uh, to have a, a quick look and overview of your styling like this. Okay, now to upload this page, we just need to go here and click on edit with Elementor and we will just upload, uh, create a new page. So we go uh, into the comment center, okay, into the finder, new page, add new page, perfect. And we will call this page here in the page settings, just global styles. Perfect. We will leave it in draft because we do not want this page to be accessed from the front end. So we leave it in draft. And instead of clicking publish here in the upper right side, you can just click on save draft. Okay. Now I can uh, I can go and upload some content. So I, I upload my, my styling page. So I go and click on the folder here. I can click here on the folder icon. Perfect. I go into this icon, which is the upload icon. Perfect. And so I choose to upload my JSON file, which I've already downloaded from my starter kit, which is all free and provided by me. <laughs> Select file. I have my JSON file right here. I click on open. Of course, here it tells me that uploading JSON file may uh, may be uh, dangerous, but in case uh, in this case it's not dangerous because uh, it's a simple styling page. I click on continue. Okay, and here is my global styles page. I can click on insert and this page will be added directly to my Elementor website. Perfect. As you can see, this page has no styling right now. It's all like this. And if I want to edit this page, I will need to use my global stylings, which is the reason why we are here right now together. <laughs> this is the most uh, interesting part because we will be able to create a custom design style settings. And this is great because as I was mentioning before, if uh, for any reason you want to change your styles later on to, to the whole website, you will be able to do so by uh, editing all the global settings, which is very, very useful and uh, straightforward. For example, I always show you the, uh, the example of the global colors. If I want to change them right here, it's very easy and uh, it changes all the look and feel of the, of, the, of the whole website. As you see here, if I change this to red, it goes like this and it will be changed throughout my whole website. <laughs> this is beautiful, wow. And not only for colors, but also for fonts uh, and so on. Even for buttons, for example, if I want my button to be rounded, I just go to buttons here, I change my border radius like this, and voila, they will be updated throughout my whole website. Wow, that was easy, right? Okay, so let's see how to set up all this. And everything will start from our global styles page. Okay, now we are ready to start customizing our global styling and we will start by uploading a custom font. 
If you remember, at the beginning of the tutorial, we just went through the Elementor settings here, and we decided in the advanced options to disable Google Fonts. In this way, you won't be able to access Google Fonts directly from your web WordPress website, directly from your Elementor builder. So if I go, for example, into the site settings, and I go, and I go to the typography option, when I click here on the, to, uh, on, the, on the pen here, on the pencil, into the typography option, and I go to font family, I can only choose the system fonts, and I do not have any other font. What happens if I want to upload a custom font, and why this is a best practice? So what happens is that I just need to download a Google font here from uh, Google Fonts, for example, or from any other fonts website around the web, and I need to upload it manually to my website using the custom fonts option of Elementor Pro. And this uh, is the best practice, why? Because uh, it allows me to have a website that will load very faster without having to load styles or any other data from Google Fonts, which is what happens when you enable this option here to load Google Fonts inside your Elementor Builder. And so it's a best practice to upload fonts using the custom font rule, the custom font settings right here. So let's do it together. In, you, in your resources that you can find uh, by subscribing to the Elementor Starter Kit that you find the link in the description below, you will access this page where we have also some resources dedicated to fonts. In my case, I decided to use this font, which is called Atkinson Hyperlegible, and I click on Get Font. I download this font, okay? And then I go to Elementor, I go to Custom Fonts, I go to Add New, I give a title to this font. In this case, it's the same title of the font, Atkinson, hyperlegible, perfect. I click on the add font variation. I choose weight normal and style normal. I go to the TTF file, upload, select files, and now I find here my zip file. But I can't upload the zip file. So what I need to do now right here is go into the download folder, open the zip file, in this case, Atkinson Hyperlegible, and inside the zip file, you'll see all the TTF files. Okay, we will be able to upload all these TTF files to our media folder. And in this case, the first one is the regular. So I select the regular. I select in uh, to the, uh, to the um, lower right side of the page, perfect. And I keep on adding, I keep adding the other font variation. In this case, I have four variation. The second one, its weight is bold and the style is normal. Always TTF, upload. You see, in this case, is uh, bold. Select, go on, add font variation. In this case, it's normal, but it's italic. TTF, upload, italic, okay. And then I have the last variation I added here, which is the bold italic, so bold italic, okay. TTF file, upload, in this case, it's bold italic, this one. Now, depending on the fonts that you will choose, when I, when you click, we will click on publish here. Now, what I was saying is that depending on the fonts that you will choose, you will need to add different kind of variations. Now, there are some fonts like, for example, Roboto or many others that have many styles. As you can see here, there is the thin, light, regular, and as you can see, each name corresponds with a numeric value. But inside Elementor, when you are uploading fonts, as you can see here in the weight type table, you just have the numeric values. So in my free resources, I leave you in the font sections, all you need to match the font weight name with the font weight value. And this could be very useful because sometimes you have fonts like in this example, Roboto, that when you download them and when you upload the files into your media library, you won't have the matching of the name with the value. Like in this case, you have them here, but you do not have them in the file. So if I get the font, I download it, and I open the zip file right here, you will see that inside the zip file of this font, you won't have the number, you just have the name, you see? Black, black italic, bold, bold italic, and so on. So when you are uploading the fonts as we saw together right here, and you are adding different uh, variation of this font, let's say that, that I want to add a variation which is black, for example. I click on add font variation, and I do not know which number is black. So I leave you this table right here, which shows the values of, uh, of, the, of the names of the weight fonts. In this case, black is 900, extra bold is 800 and so on. So you will be 
uh, able to match them very quickly just by using this table. In this case, for example, let's say that we are uploading uh, a black font. We'll just need to select 900. And if it is a black italic, we go in italic. If it is a simple black, we leave it normal. And we can upload our TTF file. Let's say that this is a black file and that's it. Voila. Okay, this is not my case, so I will leave it like this. Perfect. So be sure to access the resources because there is uh, this table and many other things that I will keep on adding to make your Elementor journey smarter and less harder, of course, easier. So now we just added our custom font, Atkinson Hyperlegible. If you want to add other custom fonts, you can click on Add New and simply give it a name here and start adding all the fonts variation. But in my case, I will keep it simple and leave just one single font. So if we go now back to our website, for example, in the global styling page, and we reload the page simply, okay, after saving it, of course, after saving the draft, we will be able now to access the global settings, the site settings, okay, and when we go on typography, if we click on typography and uh, choose to click on this icon, right here we will be able to upload to use our custom font. As you can see here, there is this Atkinson hyperlegible font, which is at our disposal right here. So I click on it and voila, in a click, all the font it's applied to my whole website. So this is my basic website. If I apply a font here in the global typography to the body, in typography here, this means that this font, as you can see here, will be applied to the whole website. Let me show you clearly. If I return to the default font, you see, if I go with the Tahoma, for example, it changes. If I go to the Helvetica, it changes. If I go to the Times New Roman, it changes and so on. In this case, I want to keep it Atkinson hyperlegible, perfect. And I save my changes. And I basically just added my custom font, downloading it from Google Fonts and uploading them to my custom font folder here on Elementor. So be careful to add all your fonts right inside here because it's the best practice to make your website load faster. So now that we have our custom font, we can go and create some custom font stylings. And the best practice here is to create all the stylings that you will need to rule the titles, for example, and the paragraph throughout your whole website. Let me show you how to do so. The first thing to do now right here is to come back to typography and choose the global typography. For example, here we can choose the dimension in pixels of the size of our paragraphs. So let's say that we want a bigger paragraph. We can put it 18, for example. And as you can see here, it will be up, uh, updated throughout the whole website. In this case, 18, it's uh, it's quite good because it, you, sh you see that I can read it well, but the basic one, normally it's 16 in general. So choose between 16 and 18. It's uh, generally speaking, it's uh, the, the standard values are these in general. I like to, to have bigger paragraphs sometimes. So 18, it's not bad. Okay, I like it. And let's go and choose, for example, also the line height, if you want. I suggest you here to use EM, and you can use something like 1EM or 1.3, for example, or 1.5, okay, this looks good. And if you want, you can also change the size and dimension of fonts and uh, line height, height, also on tablet, mobile, and so on. Let's see how it behaves on tablet, it looks good, on mobile. Maybe on mobile, we can make it 16 pixels instead of 18, and it will look still, still look great, perfect. Okay, so as you can see here, we can save changes, and we, we can go back to our global fonts now. So the typography now, we just make it, made the, um, the standard changes here, and all the changes and settings that you applied here to the global typography, to the theme style typography, will be applied globally throughout your whole website. Now we will create some global fonts that we can choose when and where to apply on our website. So this is a very powerful feature and once you click on it, you can go back to the desktop view right here. You have four system fonts, which we will not use them. We will just leave them like this. And you have down here custom fonts. This is where we are going to add our custom fonts. We keep this style guide preview on and we go on and add new styles. Okay, the first style will be the style that we will be applying to our main titles. So we will call it XL titles, for example. Okay, okay, and let's uh, edit this style. 
I will suggest you to go with something like 40 pixels, for example. We can go with the bold weight because these will be fonts uh, used for the titles. As you can see here, this is the example that is showing up for, for perfect. And line height, let's go and use 1.3, perfect. Let's go and see now on the laptop. Okay, we'll leave it like this. Let's go and see on tablet. Maybe on tablet we will need it a little bit smaller, so we'll go about 35. Okay, maybe something more, 37. Okay, now we go to the mobile, and here on mobile view we can go even smaller, about 35. Okay, so these are our, our Excel titles, okay, perfect. And they look good in all devices. They are basically 35, and then here 37, and then here, if I click here, they are 40, perfect. We can go on by creating other titles. For example, we can have the L titles, large titles. Then we can add uh, something like um, medium titles and then S titles. Okay, our L titles will look something different. So they will be, uh, let's say 35 pixels, okay? And then down here, bold. And then down here, we will have the line height uh, based on the 1.3, perfect. Okay, you see here, that we are just creating all the titles that we will be then applying globally throughout the whole website. For example, here in the example, I've used the Excel title here, or I just created a very, very Excel title here, which is different, we will create it at the end. Then here, I've used the normal standard um, L titles here too. And what happens is that if I want to change dimensions of or anything else about these titles, I can go then into the site settings, I can go to my global fonts, and for example, let's say I want to change uh, uh, all my, let's, let's see the page directly right here, all my uh, Excel titles, okay, which are these, perfect. I can go right here and I can say, let me do them a little bit smaller or a little bit higher. And this is applying throughout the whole website. You see here, wherever I'm using them, they're being updated like this. For example, here too. Now here, this is a different uh, title, so it's not being uploaded. Perfect. So basically, this is very useful. And uh, let me see here my XXL title, for example. I can change dimensions and so on. And this is applying throughout the whole website. Okay, so let's continue adding styles. 35, perfect. Let's switch back now to the tablet mode and we will make it a little bit smaller here. Let's give it uh, 30 pixels, okay. Maybe something more, 32, perfect. Let's go here in the mobile view, okay. It needs to be a little bit smaller here too. 28 maybe, that's good. 30. 30 less, even better, okay, perfect. Let's go on to the M titles, going back to the desktop mode, M titles, okay, M titles. Okay, if it doesn't work, just save changes and reload the page, okay. Sometimes it can happen that there are some small bugs like this one, and if it doesn't load immediately here, you can just click here on the site settings icon and re-click it again, okay. In this case, we are we were Upgrading our, uh, updating our global fonts, perfect. The M titles, perfect. Now we can customize them. We will give them, let me check with 30 pixels. Okay, that's good. Let's go on with the font weight bold. And down here we have a line height, the same, 1.3, voila. Let's go on here on tablet portrait. Sites will be a little bit smaller and uh, let me, to 28, okay, that's good. And then we'll go down here to the mobile and we'll give them to the M titles something like 25, maybe a little bit more, 26. 26 looks good or 25 is good, okay. Okay, now the last one, the S titles, perfect. The S titles, we will just, oh, this is this this is a very weird bug, you see? It's a bug. 
It doesn't open here. Okay, now it opens up. Okay, perfect. Now we just choose a font uh, size here. 28 should work good, okay. Weight bold, line height EM 1.3, voila. Let's go into the tablet mode and let's make it a little bit smaller, 25, that's perfect. Let's go to the mobile and we'll make it even smaller now here, kind of maybe 20, it's a little bit smaller. 22, it's perfect. Maybe something more, 23? 23, no, 22, it's good, okay. Let's save changes now. And we basically just created our global titles, as you see here, very, very well uh, configured like this. And um, we, we can apply them now globally throughout the whole website. But what happens if I want big, big titles like the one that you saw in the examples uh, side here? We just need to create an XXL title which is something that I recommend you to. Let's click on add style and let's add an XXL title. Wow, <laughs> this one would be huge. And let's make it 70 pixels. Wow, this is the titles that we will be using into the um, uh, hero sections of our pages. Oh, let's make it a little bit smaller, maybe 60, but 60 is not enough. 65? 65 could be great, okay, 65. Now we go back down here and we choose bold, of course, so it's even more uh, powerful. And here, EM and 1.3, as always, perfect. We can choose also here on tablet mode to make it a little bit smaller, like, for example, 60 pixels on tablet, even, even something less. I would say 55 here, okay, on tablet. And on mobile phone, we'll go with something about uh, 50, mm, 45, yeah, 45 looks good, okay. Now we can even go and place this above so that it's hierarchically correct, XXL, XL, L, M, S, perfect. And we will add a couple of more styles. We go and click on add, we will add a subtitle style, subtitle, Okay, and we'll give it some something like 22 pixels here, or even something a little bit less, 20 pixels. Font weight, we don't touch it. We transform and we uppercase everything. Let me see, this is the title, perfect, the subtitle. And uh, as a line height, we keep the same EM. Now in this case, we will make it 1.5, and letter spacing, we will just add some letter spacing, something like this. We'll go to one or even something more, two, two pixels, voila. Word spacing, we can keep it like this. Let's say changes and basically this subtitle style is the styling that you will be able to apply, for example, to this subtitles here or even to um, subtitles like this one and they will work very well throughout your whole website. And so let's go on now by adding the last two styles. This one will be the big paragraphs Okay, big paragraphs. When you have to um, have some big bold paragraphs, so let's click here and let's make the size about 20 pixels. Okay, this is a big paragraph. And the line height, we will keep it the EM 1.5 in this case. And uh, that's it. I do not want to make any other changes. So you see, instead of having 18 or 16 uh, pixels, I have a big paragraph here that I can use throughout my website, for example, for call to action or some other uh, important um, parts of the website. Let's make it even bigger. Let's do it 22. 22 works good like, like this. Now we save changes and we can add another style, which will be the style that we will use for buttons throughout our website. So buttons and links, buttons and links, uh, and uh, navigation links. We can, we can call, yes, buttons and links, like this. Nav links, okay. We click here and we can choose a size here. For example, I, I will leave it like this. I, I would not choose a size here, but I will go right inside here and put it bold. This is sure. This for sure. If you want, you can transform an uppercase here too, but in my case, no, I will leave it bold and default. 
and I can have a line height, a different one, EM 1.3, okay? Letter spacing, word spacing will be, will be just the same. Let's save changes here, okay? And now we have all our custom fonts ready to be applied throughout the website, which is great. In order to apply them, we will be able to do so by accessing our style guide page, okay? Global styles, this is, this is the our global styles page. And um, as you can see in this page, we have the H1, H2, H3, H4 titles. And in order to apply the stylings here, we just need to go to the site settings, typography. And down here, if you scroll down, you see typography settings, H1 typography, we go to the default icon here and we can choose the Excel title. Do not choose the XXL because we, we made the XL title to work well with the H1 titles throughout your website. And uh, especially if you if you plan to have a blog or something similar, just choose the XL one for the H1. Perfect. We'll go on with the H2 and we apply now the L. Perfect. With the H4, we will apply the M. Perf oh, no, sorry. H4, it will be the S title. And the H3, it will be the M title, perfect. As you can see here, they're looking gorgeous and perfect. Down here, the paragraph, we won't touch anything because it's already okay like this. And now down here, we will apply subtitles and the very big titles and something else here. And how you can do so, it's very easy. We can save changes now. We can go back to our page by clicking on the X icon here. We are back to the global styles page and we can go and assign the different stylings. For, so for example, I select here my subtitle, I go to the style tab and I apply the global typography so that I can quickly see changes when I do changes to subtitles and voila, this is my subtitle. As you can see, there is also a global color assigned. We will just leave it like this for, uh, for now. We go to the big title and we go to style we go to typography and assign the XXL title. Voila, this is our very huge and big title. We go and click on the heading text to the medium title. If you want, this is not mandatory, but you can do it if you want to have a quick preview of, uh, pr for example, an XL title, you can use this one, or we can use even um, an L title right here, perfect. This one should be the big paragraph, so we go to style, typography, and let's assign the big paragraph Voila, content, this is perfect too. And uh, that's it. We click on, on the save draft because we won't publish this page. Okay, and this is our global styling guide page. Now let's go on with buttons, with forms and all the other global parts of the website that we need to keep in, uh, in track. And uh, we will then uh, uh, customize all the links with colors and uh, custom stylings. But this is quite a, an advanced styling, so we will do it uh, later on in the next steps. So let's see now buttons. This is a very important part of the of the customization and for now we will just go and change the layout, the shape and the font. So we'll go here back to the site settings. We go to buttons and from here we will be able to choose the global typography. Default, scroll down, buttons and navigation links and voila, they look, so re they look already great, you see, like this. And now we can change the border radius. If you want, you can make it pills like this. Or in my case, in the case of our example website, we will leave them squared. So we'll go and square up everything <laughs> like this. Zero. Perfect. So now here we have our basic stylings of the buttons. You can choose border radius and so on. You can even change padding, but I don't suggest you to do so because it's already quite optimized like this. Unless you want smaller buttons, of course, you can do something like this. And you can even change padding left and right like this, for example, and have smaller buttons. But in general, they look already great like this with the standard paddings that are applied by Elementor. So let's save changes right now. And as you can see, when you scroll down, the styling of your buttons will be applied also to the forms in this case. So to preview our forms, and to change them globally, we can go back to the size settings and we can choose the form fields team styles. Okay, let's click on them, on them, form fields. Okay, now we go on the, okay, we scroll down, down here, onto the border radius now, we can place it to zero 
And as you can see now, down here, all the form fields are to zero. If you want to change them and make it look more like a pill, like this, you can do it. I don't. Su I suggest you to avoid this. If you want, you can go with a five pixel, with a 10 pixel, looks good. But um, anything more than 10 pixels should be justified in some way <laughs> because uh, it's kind of uh, weird. So I'll put it zero because my design, it's uh, zero pixel in this case. And don't worry if uh, stylings, uh, the times are from time, they, they get lost like this, you see all the buttons, uh, they just lose styles because we just need to save changes and reload the page and they will look great again. Okay, perfect. As you see here, all the styling are now correctly applied. Perfect. Now, what we need to do, we need to go on and see comments because if you need to create a blog later on, you will need to have a comment section and let's see how this works. We go back to the styling page, okay? We click on the gear icon up here, we scroll down and we select allow comments. So now we can preview our comment section. If it's not the case, we just need to save the draft and reload the page. And by scrolling down to the comment section, voila, this is it. The comment section will be here. In this case, the post comment button, it's a little bit different, but don't worry because we will be able to style all the colors later during the second step of this part of the tutorial. So now that's it, the comment section looks good too. Uh, we can even change something about the um, some other elements of the forms. If I go back to the site settings and I scroll down to the form elements, I can even decide to give the labels a different global typography. For example, I can go here and tell them to be with the buttons navigation. You see here, and it, in, in, this, in this case, it is changing like this. Okay, so let's save changes. Perfect. Uh, this is weird. Normally, you do not need to have this uh, twice, but uh, I think it's a, um, a temporary bug in this case. And voila, that's it. We styled all the fonts and all the layouts and shapes of buttons, forms and text fields. So now we are ready to dive deeper into the color part of the, of the global styling. Now, if you access the Elementor Starter Kit, which is available for you for free, if you subscribe to WP Rose newsletter, which is my personal WordPress newsletter where I share from time to time special content about WordPress news, tutorials, and reviews. If you subscribe here, you will be able to un unsubscribe whenever you want, of course. I, I won't bother you more than you want. You will be able to access directly to this page, Elementor Starter Kit, in which you can also find some good stuff about colors, which is the thing that we will talk about right now. We will set up some global colors, to create your own color palette, you can use this beautiful website, which is called coolers.co. And here, if you click on the make a palette link, you will be able to press the space bar on your keyboard and generate as many as, as, you, as many palettes as you want. Okay, so if you are ready now with your palette, you can export it like this, choose PDF, give it a title, click on export, and you will have your own palette in PDF, you see? And right here, you will be able to choose your colors and uh, copy and paste them into your Elementor website. This website is great because you can, uh, not only you can generate as many as palettes as you want, but you can also, um, how do you say, customize them very, very easily. Let's say that you like this right here. You can block it like this. You can lock it with the lock icon. You can even lock this one if you would like it and so on. You can even replace colors if you want to drag them, whatever you want to, around here. And when you lock some colors, when you press again the space bar in the keyboard, it will change the only the other colors like this, you see? So let's say that we like this carrot orange, we block this one too, we move it like this. And so we are slowly creating our palette. Of course, all the colors that are proposed here by the, by the software, by this website, they are correctly, how do you say, they are, um, they are suggested to you based on the color complementary uh, working. So for example, if I block this one, I unlock this one, can go on and choose something a little bit different. Let's make this pink color okay. And the last color that I need, let's say it's this one. Voila, this is my color palette and I can go on like this. If I want, I can even go here and view shades. If I do not want this, uh, special this, this particular shade, but I let's say I, I want a more darker one. I can go here and select this one, 
and I can do the same with all the others, of course. I can see all the shades and select them like this. Uh, if I want, I can also go and check the contrast, for example. But this is um, um, a contrast that is uh, okay for white text, for example, but it, it will not work, for example, with uh, black text. Uh, same here, of course. You can check contrast and you can see here this works good with black text but not with white text. So now if you are happy with this palette, we, you can export it in PDF, of course, as I, sh as I saw you before. Okay. And export like this. And you will have your PDF with all your colors here. You will be able to copy and paste them, whatever you want. To work better with colors, I also suggest you to use this uh, browser uh, extension, which is made for Chrome. And if you're using Chrome, it's great because it's called Colorzilla and it uh, helps you copy and paste all the colors directly from the browser. Let's say that I want to save all these colors and be able to reuse them wherever I want into my website without having to switch between pages and so on. I can go here into these extensions, which is called Colorzilla, like this, Colorzilla. I install this extension, it's free. I have already installed it, so it's, uh, I can't remove it right now because I need it. I install it, okay, perfect, it's free. And once it's installed, you can find it right here. We go to the page where we have our colors, for example, this page. We click on Colorzilla and we can pick, pick colors outside browser. We select the first one, we select the second one, we select the third one, and we go on like this. Okay, pick color, pick color, and so on. Pick color, pick color, okay, pick color, voila. So we have all our five main colors like this. And um, then if we click again here and we go on color picker, picker panel, we will see all our colors right here, which is quite great, you see? I have all my five colors right here. The, the pink, the space carrot, which is a little bit pur purple, the orange, the gray, and the and the green one, so perfect. They are just here, ready to be uh, copy and pasted, whatever I want. So in my case, in the free resources, I have also let you, I've also leave, left you all the colors that I used in my example website, which are these, which work together quite well, and I like them, they are quite flashy, but, uh, uh, nice. And uh, let's say that we want to experiment now also this new color palette that I just created. Let's go to the Elementor website and make sure to access the site settings. And from here, we will go back and choose global colors. So we click on global colors. Perfect. These are the basic colors. The primary color, I will say that um, it can be the pink or the orange one. Let's say that it's the orange one. We copy it, we put it here, and we paste it right here. Perfect. Let's go on with the other colors. So I have the color picker here. I will use the rose color, the pink color, not rose, the pink color right here. And I will make it my accent color. So I will go here and paste it here. The secondary color, I will use this color right here in the color picker panel, which will be this one. Okay, secondary color, now okay. And then I will use my text color as this one. So color picker, 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 picker. <laughs> and I will use this color here, which is a light gray, of course. And of course I won't use this color for text because it's a little bit too light. But uh, here they are, my main colors. I can use this one as a primary color and I will leave it like this. I will call it just accent one, okay? This one will be accent two. I can just drop it here, accent one and accent two, okay? Secondary color, I will call this, um, let's say, uh, dark one. Okay, and this one, instead of using it for text, uh, it will be just uh, my light color number one. Okay, I can even add custom colors and here comes the very, very powerful features of the global colors of Elementor. I can add, for example, some colors for my borders all around my website. I will go with the border color one and the border color two. Okay, I will then add some colors for my paragraph and headings. So I will add here my headings color and my paragraph, my text color, my global text color, okay. 
And for the global text color, I would choose something like, um, let me say, something quite uh, quite uh, dark, of course, because it's, it needs to be um, good for reading it into black on white, white background, perfect. For my headings, uh, I will choose something from my color palette. Let me see if I can use, for example, oh, let me check here. Okay, the green, the green color, this one. Okay, I would use this one. I copy it and I paste it here. And this will be my headings color. Okay, perfect. And then my borders, for the border number two, I will use a very light color, which will be, let's say, this one. Okay, and for my border primary color, I will use a more, a darker color, which will be, let's say, the same as text for uh, to start. 21, 21, 21, okay. Let's just go here and copy the same color and paste it here. No, 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 I don't wanna cancel. I don't wanna delete this color, okay, perfect. Right here. Okay, uh, now I can add a few more colors for my backgrounds to add some section backgrounds. So let's generate these colors starting from my color palette. And to do so, I, go, I will go here and I will use this beautiful function here to view shades. I want a really, really light orange shade let's say this one, and I can copy and paste it right here. This will be my light biggie, light BG color number one, paste it here. And all this color will become very handful and uh, useful during the creation of our website. So this is the most um, intricate part of all the settings, the global settings of uh, Elementor. Once you do well this part, everything else will become a breeze, wow. Light background number two, let's go and choose a number two colors. I uh, will choose a shade of this one. Okay, a very, very light one, white smoke, perfect. Let's go here and let's have a third one. Okay, let's say that I want a third color here, which will be used for my backgrounds. And uh, I, want, I want it to be this one, shade, like this, voila. Okay, it's too similar to this one. Let's see some shades of this one. Okay, maybe this one here. This is this is interesting, okay. I can copy and paste this kind of very, very light pink, okay. And this is the light background number three. Number three, okay, perfect. Okay, so we have a global color and an accent number one. Accent number two, let's say that we want an accent number three. It's good to have a number three. So we go to the, where is it? Okay, add color, accent number three. Okay, voila, save changes. I have all my global colors. I also need here to add a white because it's nice to have a white global color. White, okay. I will use it for many different reasons. And if you want, you can even add some transparent colors. But in my case, I will just go and keep it simple like this. My white color, I'll leave it here. Save changes. So these are all my global colors. If you want to use the same palette that we use in the example website, you can do so because I, I left you all the colors right inside the resources page, which is this one. Okay, so you just keep copy and pasting this and using the instructions that I made you here, so white border, headings, uh, and these are all the colors that you will apply globally into your website. Perfect. In the Elementor Starter Kit, you will also find uh, in the color section, the second palette that we just created together, which is this one, with all the indication about the type of colors. So you can also use the same one if you want to follow along step by step during the tutorial. Of course, you will be also able to create your own colors, but uh, I just wanted to leave them here for you in case you wanted to test them out. So let's go on now here by clicking on the icon here, perfect. And what we need to do right here is to choose the colors of our headings, of our text and so on. So we reload the page basically the size settings page. Sometimes it takes uh, a while to reload, sometimes uh, it works fine, okay, in this case it worked fine. Let's go on to the typography options. And uh, now we say that the text color should be a global one. And in this case, we'll use the text color, which is this one, perfect. We will do the same here now for links. Our link color will be different, will be the accent one. 
And as you can see now, it, it's uh, updated throughout all my website. I can also choose different accents to see how they work. You can even choose the this one. But in my case, I, I like this one. I keep it orange. And on hover, when mouse uh, goes uh, through the links, I choose to have the accent number two, so the pink color. Okay, perfect. Like this. <laughs> They're weird, but uh, I like uh, to experiment also in the this uh, in the design field. So why not keep them like this? Okay. Now we can go back to the H1, H2, H3, and let's say that we want a different colors for all our headings. We'll use the headings color. So this one, perfect. Heading, heading, heading. So this will be used throughout all our website. Okay. Let's go here. The heading color. Let's go to the H4. Of course, if you need more titles, you can use also the, you can style also the H5 and H6. Let's save changes now. Okay. We can go down here and style buttons. If you see them kind of in a weird manner, don't worry because you just need to reload the page to make everything look better. We go to buttons right now. We go now to the text color and we will apply, um, Maybe a white color, a global white color, okay. Use always the global uh, feature right here. Do not use single colors. And we go to color here, which is the background color, and we use the accent color, okay. This not this doesn't look great with the, um, you see, with the, um, with the white text. So we can also go and use the text color like this one. This looks better. And we can change on hover. For example, we can have the text color become white and or stay maybe dark we use the text color and uh, we call we change the color of the background like this so that it becomes like this this can work well okay we, we can leave them like this perfect and we can now go on by you can see here all the buttons are updated throughout the whole website to be sure that there are no buttons that have a border like in this case you see there is a small border applied to the comments section we just co go here into the border type and we use none okay <clears throat> even if you do not oh no sorry you you have to let's make it default you go back to normal and you use none as border okay perfect you see that the border is no more there so perfect okay that's great we save changes and so now we styled all the buttons throughout the whole website as i was mentioning before if you want to change also the shape you can do it easily like this and don't worry sometimes it loses styles but it's normal <laughs> it's uh, an elementor bug let's go back to save changes we go and click um, here on the x perfect okay now we can go and save draft okay it's already the case we reload the page and we will see all our styling applied to our pages. Voila, that's it. Very interesting, you see. So now as I um, as I created all these different buttons here, you'll see the styling applied like this. They work quite well. And I, I love this kind of button here with the, with the pink pink and, uh, and dark background. That's nice, that's working fine, okay. So um, if you want to make your links more visible in this case, uh, you can add, um, how do you call it, uh, an underlining like this, you see? These are all underlined links. To do so, you will be um, forced to use custom CSS in our case, and you can do it by clicking on Site Settings, and you can copy-paste the CSS that you will find in the Elementor Starter Kit resources. You can click on the Useful CSS Codes, just ready there to copy and paste. You select this code here, which is the underlying links in content paragraphs only. And you can go back here. You copy and paste uh, all the CSS in the custom CSS tab right here. And voila, all your links inside the content only, they will be underlined like this. This is the best practice because it makes your links stand out throughout your whole content. And uh, it's more, all the, the, whole, the whole website becomes more accessible like this. Perfect. Let's save changes. Okay. And basically we are ready because we are now ready to use all our global colors throughout the whole website. Okay, there's something here missing. We see that this button here has a white text. Sometimes this happens because inside forms, if you go in the style tab, you will find in under the button section that this text color has been applied automatically. So I just need to remove it. 
and remove it also here and remove it also for the hover okay so it will be inherited for the globals from the global settings perfect voila that's it we basically styled all our global settings right now so congratulations because you just made the most difficult and uh, uh, most boring part of the website but in my case i also i do not find it boring i love it but i i see that it can be tricky if you are a beginner but once you you do this part well everything else will become more and more easy and you will be just able to have fun by styling all the content of your website that's it we created our styling voila now we are ready to go on with the header customization we will create then a footer and so on now you have accomplished the most difficult part of the tutorial. You have set up the basic content of your header, you configured your global colors and global fonts, and so now you're ready to start designing all your website. You will finally start to see your colors, your fonts combining together and express your brand through your website. I must say that from now on, it's the most interesting part of the video. So I hope you will enjoy it and you will be able to create a beautiful website, good looking and effective for your brand or for your clients. So now let's grab a cup of coffee or a cup of tea like me here and let's go on creating your website. Okay, now in order to work better, we just go and edit with Elementor our home page, which will be something like this. If you followed my step-by-step -step tutorial it will be something like this. If you have an empty page, don't worry, we can recreate our home page Starting from scratch, we will add some content using Flexbox container and we will use this one. We will just add inside here a simple heading like this and we will place this heading into H1, okay? And we will style it to the center of the page and we will give all this container here an, uh, a minimum height in this case. Like this, we can place the content to the center and this will be helpful in order to let us style better also the header and footer. We can add also a background. We go to style, background, global color. Of course, we will only work with global colors right now. We can choose this one or we can even choose a lighter one, like for example, this one, light background, and we will publish our homepage, perfect. Now we can go and edit our header. As you can see here, when I'm on any page uh, where there is my header, I can quickly access my header customization by clicking here into the header, okay. So now I am inside my header and I'm editing the header starting from the home page. So I can still see the home page, but I'm editing the header right now. This is great because I can make some testing and uh, and so on. So let's go and start styling, for example, our, our title, the website title. We click on it, we go on style. If you want, you can change the text color like this, for example, or like this and so on. I'll choose to use the dark one, which I love. Okay, perfect. And I can go and change now the typography. Always use global typography. I scroll down and I try the S titles. It looks gorgeous and so I, I leave this one. And you start now seeing how all your global styling will work well, giving you the whole ecosystem of your website, the whole design system of your website. We can even here in this case add a background color to my logo because uh, as I added uh, an SVG logo with a transparent background, I can go and style the background, which is under the advanced tab, background. And this is a little trick that I will do but it's just in order to, sh to show you what you can do when you, when you take advances of all the options that you have with Elementor Pro. Now let's style the menu. This is very important. Let's select the menu, let's go to style, and let's go to typography now, and the color, the main color of the, of the menu here, you can choose wherever you want. In this case, I will choose the uh, dark color, number one, perfect, and I will go with a background no, not with a background, but with um, an active, an over and an active color. And I will use the same colors that I'm using for my links. So for the hover color, I will use the accent number one. And for the active color, I will use the accent number two. Okay, so as you see, it's like this, perfect. Under the styling, I will scroll down and see the typography options. Uh, okay, here, I click on the default and I choose to use my buttons and navigation links. Voila, they look gorgeous and great, you see? We can go on by styling our icons here, our social media icons, and you can uh, go and keep them, maybe instead of squared, we go with circle, okay? And we can, or maybe something like rounded like this. Ah, oh, this is great, I like it. 
Let's go on styles now and we change the primary color which will be assigned to the icon itself will be a dark one, oh, to the background in this case, okay. And we can also use the secondary color for the color of our icons. We can use this yellow here, for example, or we can use a different one, the pink one, or we can use the, the accent, this one. And of course, we have to change the other one like this. So let's play around with all this until you find the color that works better for you. In this case, I will use this one. It works good. And maybe I will go with a pink one right here. Why not? Or maybe instead of a pink one, the orange one. And let's switch here with a dark background. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's a kind of a weird, but uh, it can work. I can go also and change the sides of the icons like this. Let's make them 22. Okay. I can increase the padding or spacing. Let's do something like this spacing between icons, okay, if I want to give them more visibility, and that's it, perfect, let's click on, oh, something else I want to do here is to change this pink color, I want to, to use the same color on the actives, the same orange here, okay, it looks more, more interesting like this, perfect, so let's go and visit our website now, okay, this looks quite good, if I change pages, you see it's quite easy to navigate between pages, okay. The button here leads to the contact us page, perfect, okay. And these are all the icons. For the icons, I can even change the uh, secondary color on hover. If I scroll down and go on icon over, the secondary color, I can put it about pink, which works fine. And like this, it's consistent with all the other stuff in the page. I can even go back to the content and make them squared so I can keep the consistency with buttons. And I can even make them look more... No, I will leave it like this. Publish. Perfect. Let's check now. Tablet. Looks good. Look, looks good. I can change the color of this if I want. As you can see here, sometimes there is an automatic applied background color to the drop to the... Uh, how do you say to this, to this menu button button if i want to get rid of it i can just go here into the options that are connected to my menu toggle okay normal i will leave it uh, let's say uh, i can change it to orange yes why not i can give it a background color if i want maybe here i can use a dark background or it, it becomes too similar to the social media icons so i can invert them I can use the dark color here and the orange color here if I want. Looks better like this. Or I can even leave it white. Okay. I can go and hover and I can, you see here this, there is this hover. I can change it by going to background here and leave it white. Okay, so when the hover is over, it is white. And active, I will leave it also white background, perfect. And the color of the active icon here would be the pink one and the color of the hover, I can put it pink like this, like the links, okay, it works fine. And I will publish, perfect. We'll go now here in the mobile view and I will just click here to preview it well and it works gorgeous, wow, it's perfect. <laughs> so we basically we optimized and we created a beautiful header like this. So we have a square logo here, we have the name of our website and we have our menu for mobile, tablet, and for desktop. Beautiful. Now, what happens if you want to make your menu, your navigation bar, always visible when you scroll down to the page? You just need to do a simple option, and this can be quite useful. As you can see here, the menu bar is always visible when I'm scrolling down the page, and the same happens also on mobile, which is quite useful if you want to have quick, quick access to your mobile menu in this way. So, to do so, we just need to go back here and to apply a simple option. We go back here into the options, of course. We select our main uh, container. So we go into the structure, we select our main header in this case. We go into the advanced tab, we scroll down here and we find the motion effects. We open this and we choose sticky and we choose top. Okay, we can choose also to disable the sticky effect in some devices. If you do not want, for example, to have the sticky option on desktop, but you only want it on mobile, you can delete all the other devices and leave it enabled only on mobile and vice versa if you want. Now, if I try to scroll down, 
I will see that in a page that, that has enough content, the navigation bar will follow me. Beautiful. Let's see how it works. We publish it now. Okay, we can back. Uh, we can go back and edit the content of my page. For example, we can just duplicate this section here, and we duplicate this one again. We publish. We go back to our. Oh, even without going back, if I scroll down, you see now here, the navigation bar follow. So there is a little bit of a problem here because the background color is transparent, and as you can see, it overlaps like this. So to avoid this, we go back to our header. Okay. And now here we assign a background color. We can go to edit container, okay? And we can go to style, background, oh, sorry, background from here. And we change the color and we made it white. Perfect, so let's publish. This is our white color and when we scroll down, our header follow us, hmm, beautiful. If you want to keep the 10 pixel margin to the top, you can just go back here advanced to the main header scroll down motion effects and under the offset you can just choose 10 pixel like this you will see it's preserved so we published and now the header will stay like this it is it's like a, a floating header <laughs> it's great it works fine it looks gorgeous and uh, it's very, very nice, works well. Now I found out that was uh, when I was making a small, uh, a quick check, if I go on laptop view, I see that the elements are not correctly aligned, you see? This depends on the fact that there are some elements that are too big and they're, they're not fitting inside the space that they have at their disposal. So here I can go and make some different kind of approaches. For example, I can click on the menu here and tell the menu to transform itself into a button, into a mobile button, before, so even when there is a laptop view, like in this case. If I want to do so, I go in the laptop view, I select the menu, I scroll down into the content area, I go to additional settings, and I tell that the breakpoint should be, should be the laptop. Voila, so as you can see, the content now is correctly aligned again, and I can access the menu like this, in this way. If I want to leave the menu like this, with all the links visible in the laptop view, I can simply play around with all the other elements. For example, I can go in this first element here and change a little bit the styling. I can go and click on style and click on edit style here and I will place it about 20, 25 pixels. And as you can see now, everything looks good, perfect. So just by playing around with some small, um, some small, small touches here and there, you will be able to make all the objects fit correctly in the header in this case. You can even go to the button and change uh, change the um, dimension of the um, of the styles of the of the text, of course, of the typography if you want. You can change the dimension of these icons, the spacing of the icons, and so on. You can change and play around with all the elements, of course. Now we can publish and we can also just make comment P and just have a test, okay, it looks good. Also on, on tablet, it looks perfect. Okay, that's it. If you prefer to have a, a more standard header and have it full width, for example, you can just go to the header section right here. You can just go to the layout, to the main header layout, in this case, to the container layout. And instead of using full width, you use boxed. Like this, the header will st will automatically go and stretch to the whole content. So if I go and preview my website right now, the header is now full width. And so you can just arrange the borders and get rid of the bar top, bar top margin, for example, and you will have a normal standard full width header. But in my case, I love the fact that this header is full width and it's boxed like this. So it's great to keep it like this because it's kind of a more modern looking Yes, beautiful. Now we'll go on by creating a beautiful professionally designed footer with all the elements that we need to run a professionally designed footer. <laughs> so, for example, our logo, a sentence here uh, that repeats the title of the website and maybe some content. We will add something in right down here. We can add social media icons and we will, we will be able to add some links, some main links to our website. And then, a simple disclaimer down here with our business information and so on. So let's go on right here. To do so, we just need to access our theme builder. We go and click on the Elementor icon here, theme builder. Or if you are on a page here, you go and go and click on theme builder, it's the same thing. And we click on footer 
and we add a new footer. This footer will be the global footer that will be applied throughout our whole website. Let's click on the X icon here. We just can keep the structure right here if we want, okay? And down here we have the footer. Before starting, we go to the gear icon, like here. We change the name of our template. We just leave footer, like this. And we change the HTML tag to footer. That's very important, okay. Let's uh, save our draft right here, perfect. And let's start adding the content. We go and click the plus icon. We click and choose the Flexbox container. And uh, in order to be able to add all our content, we will use this one. So the four columns container. Okay, we will add a second container down here, which will be a normal column direction container, this one. Okay, in the second one, we will be uh, inserting just the, um, the, the, the copyright uh, uh, and the, all, the, all the stuff about our business, for example. And in the first container, we will add all, all our columns. So let's take this page and make it okay here, perfect. We will use the same structure. So we will start by adding here the logo of the website which is globally recognized, perfect. Into the style section, we will make it the same dimensions as the first one, so 80 pixels, and we will place it to the left, okay. Now we will add another content element, which will be the site title, okay. Let's put it like, like this, right here. We will use this as a div, okay. And we will assign the style globally, so we will change the color and use this dark color, and we will change the typography and we will use the as titles, so it's kind of similar to the first one. If I want to add a background to the logo, if I have a transparent logo, for example, I can go here and I can choose to use the advanced tab, okay, and align to the start. So you see here, if I align to the start, it becomes uh, no more full width, but it's uh, just the dimension of my logo in this case. And I can use the styling to add, no, I can use the advanced tab to add a background color, like I did to the header. So I go here, I use my global color, this one, and I can even have a, an hover color, which can be the pink one, for example, you see? This is great. This look very, very good, looks very good. And I can do the same in my header if I want. Okay, now I can add, a, it's best practice also here to add a short text. I can add a text editor, for example, where I describe all my um, on my content, for example. Oh, yes, I can do another thing here. I can go to the sites, oh, I can save my draft, of course. I can go to the site settings and add uh, another global font, which will be very useful to have small and uh, um, small paragraphs, of course, little paragraphs. So add a styling, small paragraphs. Okay, I will add this on the fly, small. Okay, I can also replace it and put it here. And I will give it a little bit smaller dimensions. 14 pixels, weight will be like this, line height 1.5, no, 1.3 maybe here. And save changes, okay? Now we will go back to our page and we will assign to this paragraph the small paragraph styling. Go to style, typography, Small paragraphs, voila, perfect. We can even increase maybe a little bit if you want, but in this case, it looks good, okay. And here I can insert some good stuff about my business. So it's very important to, to use well this space here. If you want, you can also decrease the spacing in the columns here. We can go into the first container and we will say that in the layout, we we'll scroll down here and we have zero or maybe 10. Oh, let's do 10 pixels. <laughs> Voila, 10 pixels, looks better like this, okay. We can even insert some social media right here, okay. If you do not want to style them back from scratch, you just need to save your draft and you can quickly access your header like this, you access your header and you copy and paste styles. Right click of the mouse, copy, you go back to your footer and you can paste styles like this. Right click of the mouse, paste style, perfect. So you can align this in this case to the right side. It looks perfect and beautiful. And the only style that did not paste, uh, it was the squared style, you see? It just applied the rounded one, I don't know why. Okay, I just need to click again on square and now it's correct. 
and it looks beautiful, wow. I can go on now by um, adding all the other content. I click here, uh, on, or better, I select the second container using the structure content, and I can go on the plus icon and add some content. The first content will be the title, so the about or uh, some other titles that you want to put inside there, and I will use for that a heading. I will change the title right here, and I will use it links like this, <clears throat> for example. Here I can use an H3 or H4. Normally H4 it's good, okay, so I, I leave it H4. And I will be able to go and style it if I want, changing the colors, changing the um, typography and so on. In this case I will use the same typography as the um, a uh, small typography, but it's uh, I'm not I'm not um, obliged to do so because it's already applied, because it's uh, already an H uh, uh, how do you say an H four, and the H four has automatically applied from the global styling my my S typography. So you see it's the same dimensions in this case. I can change the color if I want of the links, like this. But in my case, I will leave it globally, like this. Okay, perfect. I can add then a list an icon list, which is a great widget to add some links. And in the styling of this list, I will go into the icon, changing the color, maybe I will use the pink one, it works good, or even the orange one, but I, I'm starting to get a little bit too orangey, so I will use the pink one, or even the darker one, this one, or even the, um, the headings one, I like it, okay, perfect. I can increase a little bit the sizing, the size of the icons, like this, I can go into the typography, into the text, and I can assign the big paragraph here, like this, and I can assign also a color if I want, maybe this one, and so on. So here I can go and assign also a hover color, like this, this one, perfect. Okay, let's go on now, and you see that there is no spacing between the columns, we will just resolve this by selecting the main container here, we go into the layout, and I don't know why, but in this case we have to re-establish the global assigned values, which is 20 in this case. Okay, works fine, okay. Perfect. Now I will just copy and paste stuff, duplicate, because you, you learned how to do so, how to insert all the elements, so I will just go faster like this, and I will show you how to align everything in the best way, okay. Perfect, and I will copy, duplicate this one too, like this here. Perfect, so I have all my elements like this. Of course, if you want to change the elements right inside here, it works from the content point of view, very similar way to the normal menu. So you go inside here, you can change the icon, you can change the URL. Let's say, for example, that here you want to link to the About page. Choose About, you can change the icon. You can change and uh, maybe instead of the check you use the user icon and you link to the about page for example okay let's say that you want to link here to the global styles even it's <laughs> if it, if it's just uh no no global styles is not a published page but we can use the service page for example services we can use this page with this icon for example services we type inside here services and we select the services link and here we can link to the blog page, for example, we go here, we go to the comment icon, this one, and we go and insert the blog page right here, and so on. So it's very intuitive, you can add more items, of course, you can uh, do whatever you want right here, and you can even uh, go and apply different kind of stylings. For example, you can place things uh, around, in this case I will leave them right here, you can add a divider if you want, you can go on and play around with all the styling effects. In, in this case, in my icon, I will just go and uh, make it more aligned to the center, like this, and uh, vertically aligned, or yeah, they looks great like this. I can go and copy and paste my styles, paste styles and paste styles, perfect. And um, that's it. If I want, I can also go back here to the handle of the, of the container, and I can also add some padding. So I go to the advanced, I click on the unlink value, and I add some top and bottom padding. 50 and 50 normally works very well. Now to finish my um, footer, I also need to add a background color. So as I did here, for example, 
a very, a very light one, so I will keep my container selected, go to styles, go to background, classic, global color, of course, and I will use, let's check this one, it's too dark and uh, no, I don't like it, this one, this one it's good, I like it, let's see the last one, this one, no, it's too pinky, no, well, but it's, it's nice. A little bit too pinky, but nice. Okay, maybe I will use this one for the for the other section. Let's go back to the number two. Okay, this looks good. And now let's add um, the copyright in the footer. So let's go down here. We will use a text editor. Okay, this one, we'll drop it down here. We will put it in the styling section to the center. And we will add also here some padding. So we'll select this. We go to the advanced tab, we unlink, and we add some 50 and 50 down and up. Down, uh, you will see that uh, the, um, the paragraph here adds uh, automatically a spacing. So if you want, you, call, you can also add a little bit less to the bottom, like 30 works well, or even maybe 40. 40 works well, perfect. Okay, now to the background styling of this section here we will be able to have another background. Let's see if the light background works good, <laughs> okay? It's a bit weird, but uh, why not? Otherwise, we will be able to choose maybe this one. Okay, this one is better. Now we will be able to style this paragraph here. If you want, you can apply the text color. For example, the... Text, well, this, uh, this doesn't need to be assigned because it's already global, so let's get rid of it. We can assign a global typography if you want, so the small paragraph, for example, so it's a little bit smaller and less, uh, in text less space. And inside here, generally speaking, you need to put all the links to your terms and conditions, to your privacy policy, or just your information about your business. For example, you can add your copyright symbol like this, and you can add the year of your, um, of your website, for example remember to update it each year, for example, and, and so on. So you can add all your information about your business and you, if you need to add a link, you select a word and you simply add a link like this to a page, to a post, to whatever you want, voila. And in this case, you see that links are not so much visibles, visible, so I can go and change the background color. I will put something more, the first light color, no, something lighter, I need a lighter color. <laughs> Let's do um, this one again. The same that we had in the, in the first footer. Yeah, it works good. Okay, now we can go and, uh, and see if we can make a simple thing. So divide and separate the, the two sections. So we keep this, uh, this uh, second container selected. We go into the advanced tab and we scroll down, no, sorry, into the style tab and we scroll down to the border we go and make it this border solid. We will use now a global border color, which will be, for example, this one, the darkest one, okay? And we will apply a border width about one pixel, but we will unlink values and we will use only the top border. So we will just get rid of all the others and put them to zero, perfect. So we, we will have just a preview like this. Okay, perfect. We have a top separator like this, which works fine. And we, ha we have a beautiful footer. If we want to make our footer look more like the, the header, we can also detach the footer and not making it full width by simply going here and making the layout full width like this, as you remember that we did before. So in this case, instead of using percentage here, we use pixels into the desktop view, 1140 1, and we, we will be able to see that our footer will, will be now be boxed. Okay, it just needs to be loading the content, okay. Voila, perfect. We'll just need to adjust the spacing and uh, paddings all around, uh, the all over the, the footer, but you get a concept, you get the idea. In my case, I will leave it full screen because it works well. I will leave it boxed like this, okay. Perfect. And full width in this case, okay, box. Okay, perfect, I like it. Okay, now let's start optimizing all our footer for tablet and mobile. If we switch on tablet view, we see that it might look something like this if you added the same amount of rows as me. 
and I will show you how you can adjust the amount of rows on mobile. In this case, on tablet, I want them to be four, to be four in, instead of, um, uh, to be four, to be two by two. So this column, this one, this one, and this one should be in the second row. To do so, we just need to select the first container and under the layout settings, we go and increase the width just to 40, like this. And then we go here to the second one and do the same thing, 40%, okay. We go here to the other one, we go to the percentage here and 40. And be careful and be, be sure to select here percent, of course, and we go here 40%. If you want to align better all stuff here, we can go to the first one here and we can make it grow by going to the advanced tab and instead of, and, and choosing grow like this, perfect. We go and do the same here to this one and we will choose style, uh, sorry, advanced and grow, perfect. And so like this, you see everything looks better. You can also make grow the second one if you want even more alignment consistency like this and make this one grow too, advanced and grow. Voila, beautiful, you see? And so we will have this situation here, and then when we switch to tablet mode, we will have this situation here, which looks great and fantastic. If you want, you can increase also the distance between, uh, between the columns, uh, between the rows in this case. And to do so, we just need to select our main content here, and we will go to layout, scroll down, we will unlock the values here. We will choose for the columns, 20, for the row, a little bit more, 40 like this, or even a little bit more 50, you see? It looks even more, um, how do you say, well organized. Let's let's uh, now publish, okay, let's publish. No, before publishing, just let's finish the other mobile portrait. We select mobile, okay, and we will see that um, as we copy and paste the styles of these icons here, we just need to go here and make them look also uh, visible in tablet in a mobile mode. So we go to advanced, scroll down, responsive, and we just show them on mobile too. Now we are ready to publish our footer because you see all the content looks great in each and every uh, device. So we go back to your, our desktop view and we're ready to click on publish. We, we can add a condition and the condition will be on the entire website. We save and close. And when we go and preview our website now, if we go to the home page, for example, we scroll down, we will see our footer like this. If you want, you can also divide, separate the footer for the rest of the content to make it more clearly uh, divided, like separated, by adding another border to the other content area, to the other container. So we select the main container here, advanced, we scroll down to the borders, oh, style, we scroll down to the border. We, had a, we have a solid one, border width, we unlink and we use only the top one and we give it val value to one. And as a border, we we can try also the, the, the light border, the second one. Let's publish and let's have a preview. It's very subtle, but it can help. And it helps stand, make the, the future, future standing out a little bit more. Take a moment to admire what we have done together and what you have achieved right now by following this video. Are you happy? I hope so. In the case you are happy and you are enjoying this video, just give me a thumbs up. If you want, you can also subscribe to my WP Rhodes YouTube channel, where I share content about WordPress, of course, and you can drop me a feedback in the comment section below. I will be very happy to read about your website and how you are enjoying following this tutorial. Now we are ready to create a beautiful homepage for your website or your client's website, and I will give you plenty of advice and practical information on how you can structure a beautiful homepage by applying good design best practice and by creating engaging and high converting sections and call to actions. You will learn in this part of the video also to use grid containers, flexbox containers, to create complex designs and to optimize your website for any device. Now I'm drinking a coffee and let me know in the comment section below what is your favorite drink when you follow this kind of tutorials. Now let's go and create the beautiful homepage of your website. Now we are ready to start creating our beautiful homepage. So we will start from scratch, from a blank page, and we will create a page like this one, right here. With some slight animations like this, with a beautiful hero section, which we will start from, which is this one. And uh, we will scroll down here, we will add a grid. So we will, we will learn how to use also Elementor grid containers. 
by scrolling down here we will have another section where you can showcase all your services for example or some important stuff about your business about a business of um, of which your website is about and down here there is a, a cool call to action section if you if you want to showcase some uh, some strong points of your services you can highlight them in these boxes and at the center of the call to action you will be able to put whatever you want in my case I put my image but you can uh, you can do whatever you want here then we will also uh, showcase some featured and latest news from our blog from the in this case with a, a beautiful carousel like this one that you can personalize and customize perfectly whatever whatever is your um, how do you say your objective here your uh, your purpose you can create beautiful carousels like this one and all the content inside the image the title the button like this one could be completely customized like i will show you in a um, in during the video down here we will have a beautiful call to action section with a background video which will be the section before the footer so we will close our home page with this beautiful section here with a background video and some cool effects okay so now we're ready to start so let's go inside our website let's click on the home page and click to and, uh, and click on edit with elementor if you want you can also as always click on pages and click on the home page to edit it or even better you can use the shortcut command E or CTRL E and you type in home page if you already created your home page by following the, the steps that I showed you previously you will be you will be founding your home page here home page perfect so basically we just enter our home page like this perfect now we erase all the content we delete all the content and our home page is like this, a blank page ready to be filled with our beautiful content. So the basic structure will be this, will be this one. And uh, let's see how I build it in the tutorial, in the website, in the example website. In my case, I've used two columns, you see here. There's the first column here, which is a container, which contains different widgets and the two buttons and then there is a second column which is a second container in my case I can also try to not to use this second container I will try to do it uh, we will see what what we can do because the objective here not the objective but the the final um, point is to use less container um, the less number of containers that we can in general so less containers we use the better it is in general so let's go and see how we can start we click on the plus icon we choose, of course, Flexbox in this case, and we will choose the direction from left to right. If you want, you can also already choose this one, two columns, but in my case, I prefer to show you the step-by-step -step proce process starting really, really from complete scratch. So let's choose direction row. So we have a blank container like this one, empty, and we can be sure to open also the structure of the page, perfect. And then right here, we will be able to Oh, so let, let's put it like this, which will be a little bit better. Okay, we will be able by selecting the container to go on uh, go on the left side here. Click on the plus icon, and we will add a first container inside. So, okay, as you can see here, there's this container needs to be uh, changed in matter of width. We just go to content width and we click on full width. Perfect, so that the container will occupy all the space that it has inside that it has in inside the the main container. So first container, we can call it Eero section so that we can also recognize it later on when we'll be having, we will be having more containers inside. And this one, this first container, we, will, we can call it title and CTAs. Okay, title and CTA. So what we can do now, we can start by adding some content inside here. We'll click on the plus icon here and we add a heading. We can drag and drop our heading, which will be, of course, here uh, an H1. I, I'll talk to you later about H1 and H2. Let, let's leave it like this for uh, for now. In uh, in styling, we, we can already assign the global typography XXL because it's the styling that we want to apply to our big titles uh, of our hero sections. We can, of course, change the content here. We can uh, we can write down follow my tutorials on YouTube <laughs> as you're doing right now. And if you want to make it look more personal, we can also use this cool effect here, which uh, is just this one. I just added a, a simple tag here, which is the I tag, <laughs> like this. And this tag, it's uh, an HTML tag that allows you to make your words like this. You see? Okay. 
So let's go right here now, okay? Inside this uh, widget, we go to the content and we can add an E before and after like this. E before and after. Voila. I will leave you all this content right into the um, into the page where I will I'm sharing with you all the resources the Elementor starter kit. So make sure to click on the description link Elementor starter kit and access the resources including all these little codes and all this little stuff that if you're not familiar that will be very useful for you to to add. So you, as you can see here this sentence looks nice already and uh, we can also add something more. So let's add another element. Let's add another heading in this case, and this one will be the subtitle. We just replace it and move it here above the main heading, and we will give it a subtitle style. So we go to style, we can go on typography here, and we will go and choose subtitles, perfect. Now into the content area, we can choose if we want to change the H1 and H2. This is very important from an SEO point of view. You have to choose in which of the two sentences you want to put on to put inside your main keywords. For example, let's say that this is a, um, a website based on, um, let, let me close maybe here. Okay, let's say that this is a website based on WordPress tutorials for beginners. So this is my keyword, this is my main keywords, which uh, they will be very important for me to rank in Google. So I want that people that are searching for WordPress tutorials for beginners, they can find me. So what can I do now? I can just paste here in my subtitle the words. And since the H1 title is the main title that represents also the main content of the page, that's, um, yes, it's supposed to represent the main content of the page, it's good to assign the H1 title here to um, the title that contains my main keywords. In this case, the first one, even if uh, from the from the design point of view, it's smaller, you see, normally the H1 is the bigger title. In this case, it's smaller but it is containing my, my main keywords. So I leave it like this, H1, and here I will leave H2, which is the second uh, title, uh, which will contain my um, call to, uh, my, how do you say, my more emotional <laughs> sentence without uh, uh, many keywords. In this case, you see, follow my tutorials on YouTube. Uh, there are no, uh, no special keywords inside here. So I, I hope you understood this, um, this, um, this, how do you say, <laughs> this little SEO explanation. And uh, anyway, you have to know that th there should be only one H1 title in each page. In my case, this, this home page has this one H1 title. And then all the other titles will be H2, H3, and so on. And there is a kind of a hierarchy, 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 yes, hierarchy, hierarchy maybe, it's in English, I don't know how to pronounce it. Anyway, a hierarchy between all the H titles. So one H1 and the others are all the other titles of the page. Let's go on now by adding a short text with the text editor. If you want here, you can type in whatever you want. Even here, you can use all your keywords. Uh, so it's important, maybe we can just make right, right inside, learn how to create a website using WordPress and Elementor Pro. For example, these are keywords for my, for my website. And so right inside here, I can also choose to um, change the styling. So go to typography and use the big paragraph styling so that it can stand out a little bit more. And I can go to plus icon and add also a button. Okay, this is great. So this will be my first section, which is this one, you see. So all the content now should be placed on the left and on the right side, we should have an image. How we do so? It's very easy because now we can just go to the first column here to the container that contains the title and CTA, we select this. And then what do we do? We, we go here into the content width and we place it to full width, of course, and to percentage, we will give it 50%. Okay, it starts looking more like this one. Great, this is great. Now we need to do something else. We need to add some more spacing and breathing room up and down. So we go to the main hero section, we go to advanced, we unlink the values and we choose to add some padding up and down. Maybe we will start with 50. Let's see if it works well. We can also increase it to 100 if you want. Or yeah, you can just play around with your with your design and see what fits best for your page. In this case, 100 looks good, okay? So I can leave it like this. If I'm happy, I can publish already my page and see it while I'm creating it. Or otherwise, I can just save it as a draft and have a preview, a quick, a quick preview like this. 
Okay, it looks good. It is already interesting and uh, well organized. And now we will just need to go on by adding the image on the right side. Okay, so let's click on the plus icon and um, we will go and add an image right here by typing in image and we will add this image right here. Let me see, okay, I just click on the image while I was selecting the main section and you see it added my image right next to the first container. So this one is uh, this one will be my main image. You can I suggest you here to use an image that um, that has a transparent background so that you can achieve an effect like this one uh, that uh, makes your image stand out from the con from the background which is kind of great uh, solution to impress your first time visitors maybe. And um, to do so, of course, you can use Canva or similar uh, tools like Photoshop and so on. But Canva is the most intuitive for me. And so uh, I've just used it, for example, in my case, to create this image and to remove my background. Okay, so right now, what do we need to do? We need to make this image 50%. So we go to the Advanced tab. We go and select here the Custom Width. We make sure to select Percentage and we type in 50%. Yes, that's perfect. Okay, I just forgot one thing, but I will show it to you later. Now, what do we need to do is to place this image on the on the um, on the bottom. You see, like this, by typing in by align self end, because in this case the image will be sticked to the bottom of the um, of the container. Like in this case, I want it I want it to be like this, and uh, I can also add a background if I want. So I can select my hero section here, and I select the background style background type, we can choose classic or gradient. In my case, I've selected gradient to achieve this beautiful effect. So I'll sh I will show you how to do so. We select gradient, then we choose the first color that will be in my case, let's say um, this uh, pink one, okay? And the second color will be a light color like this one, okay? Now I just need to play with the locations, you see, and increase and decrease the percentage. In my case here, when I go to the background, I can see that in my style, I've played and I put it 58 and 36. So let's see if it works well even here. Oh, that, that was not, uh, 58 and 36, I just inverted, 58 and 36, okay. Perfect, you see? They're working already fine, and I can then play with the angle like this to achieve the same effect. Okay, let's play it like this. Okay, let's say that the this pink is a little bit too, okay, orange can work well, but I also have this blue here, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, but it's a little bit too, too dark. So let's see if I have another color here. Maybe this one, yeah, this one could work fine. Okay, let's leave it like this for, uh, for now and let's uh, publish and go and see. If you want to have a preview, a quick, quick preview, you can also use this icon here or type in command P on the keyboard, command P, CTRLP. And okay, that's interesting. Now, what do we need to do? If you, if you want also to make this image sticky to the bottom like this one, and you have a similar image maybe of yourself or of your client or of a person, of, a, of someone <laughs> anyway, you have to, uh, how do you say, to um, remove the bottom padding. So what do we need to do? We need to go inside our main hero section, this one. We go back to the advanced tab and we go to the bottom padding and we place it to zero. Perfect. Now to make sure that not uh, um, both of them, they will be sticking to the bottom, we have to add uh, some padding to the first container. So we go to edit container to the first one, to this one, which, which contains our title and CTA, and we add some padding bottom. So we unlink values also here and to the bottom padding we go and make it, uh, we can also use margin in this case, it's a little bit better. To the bottom margin we go and increase it from, yeah, let's say also here we can place it at 100 so it stays like this. Okay, perfect. Publish, let's go and see. Voila, so this is the structure. Of course, this image will be higher because I will choose now on a higher image that will uh, that will cover uh, most of the um, of the less of, of the part of the space right here. So let's see how it works. I click here on the image. I go to content. I select the image, and I upload my image right here. Be careful each time you upload an image to uh, correctly 
insert your alt text, which is the text that is supposed to describe the content of the image and also the function of the image in the page. In this case, I will make uh, an example, for example, uh, profile picture of Pascal Claro, founder at WP Roads, a WordPress, a WordPress website. <laughs> Okay, and here in the title, you can also insert your keywords. This is the best place where you can insert your keywords because also images are contributing, of course, to your SEO uh, to make to help yourself being found on a search engines. So in my case, if I want to um, place some keywords, I will place, of course, my name, for example. I can place my, um, my brand name and I can place one or two keywords, like, for example, WordPress tutorials. Voila. Then I can also fill out uh, all the other fields, but in my case, the most important one are the alt text, not in my case, in every, in every case, the most important fields are the alt text and the title. Of course, the alt text has this function because it's also very important for accessibility. So make sure to fill it well. And let's click now to selecting the image and insert the image into the page. Wow, that looks already perfect, you see? Let's click now on publish, go and see the page, how it looks like, <laughs> beautiful, you see? In a matter of seconds, of minutes, in this case, we just created a beautiful, beautiful hero section to welcome our visitors. Now let's continue by adding two buttons, one side by side, side one beside the other, yes, <laughs> like this. So how do we do so? We can just go here and duplicate our button by clicking with the right click on the mouse and we go and duplicate this element, or we can use the command D option, command D, and voila, duplicated. Now, what we need to do here is to change the behavior of all this container. This is not so easy. Uh, actually, we can do this thing here in, in multiple ways. But of course, here I'm going to show you the most optimized way to do so. Actually, I'm going to show you the two, two ways to do so, uh, so that you can choose. The first way is the easiest one, but it's not the well-optimized one. So I will show you how to proceed. You just add a new container down here. Okay, you put it to full width and you insert inside this container the two buttons, one and two. You go to the container now and you select the direction, voila, like this. It's very easy, fast, but in this case, it's not very well optimized because you have used one more container. Less number of container you use on your pages, the best it is because your website will load faster and will be more optimized. So how we can get rid of this container and still have the two buttons, one be beside the other, we can go like this. Let's go on the history right, right here and let's, let's click here in the button duplicate phase, okay. You see here, it's before I added the container, I choose to come back here to the historical point where I just created the duplicated button without the container, you see? This is quite useful if you want to go back in your history of uh, editing the page. Okay, in this case, I, I want to stay here, perfect. So I can go back to my page. Okay, to the plus, perf perfect. And here, what do I need to do? I need to uh, change the direction of this row. So I click on the main container and I change the direction. So I go to, to the layout and I put it horizontally. Okay, so now it's a mess, but don't worry because we are going to make it look normal. We scroll down, okay, and we see that there is a wrap option. We click on the wrap option and everything will look again normal, perfect. And as you can see, this looks already fine because we have the buttons one beside the other. We didn't have the, um, we didn't have to add um, one more container, so we we get rid of one container that we do not need to add to the page. And uh, most of all, all the content looks good. So to be sure that everything is correctly aligned, you can also select each and every widget and make sure that each and every widget has in the styling option, not, sh not in the styling, but in the advanced option, the width, full width. You can put it full width or you can also go and make it grow. It's the same thing right now, okay. In this case, I will also choose my title here, advanced, and I will put it to grow. And here the text, I will go to advanced and make it grow. Okay, uh, you don't do that with the buttons because you do not, you do not need them to be, uh, to, be more, uh, to be more big. They are enough, they are right this perfect. Okay, so let's leave them like this. We publish the page and go and see a preview. 
And voila, we have two buttons, one beside the other. In general, I also suggest you from a marketing point of view to have only one button, because if you have only one call to action, it's of course stronger than two call to actions. But this depends also in your website case. And it, it's, it, it might be very useful to have two call to action in some cases. So I just wanted to show you how to align two buttons, one beside the other. You can also change the content, of course, of these buttons. The first one, we can call it uh, contact us. Contact me now. And we can link it to the contact page that we already created together at the beginning of the tutorial. And we will also style and uh, create some content later on during the video. And then the second button here, you can change it and maybe uh, find out more or uh, 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 discover more about my services. You can you can enter which which call to action you want, of course. Uh, maybe here we can add some. Even we can also get rid of this or this or this, and we can just insert an icon, for example, if we have a, a link to a, to a video or to whatever we want, like this. You see, you just use the icon icon spacing zero, and you got a beautiful button with just an icon if you want. Or you can uh, also add, find out more. Okay, in this case, we need some spacing between the icon and the text. And you can also position the icon after, and so on. So you can play around with all this kind of, uh, of content and do whatever you want. In this case, uh, I will get rid of the icon, and uh, I will add uh, a simple uh, scroll down effect. So. I will put this to zero, and here I will leave the, um, I don't know how to call this, but uh, this anchor link, and I will call it section, section one, for example. I will then copy this one, section one. I will go now to my nest section. I will add a container here. This will be a Flexbox container from up to down, and I will go to this second section I will rename it by double clicking here. I will call it, for example, boxes, which will be the second section, this one with all these boxes. boxes. And uh, I can go to the advanced tab and I can assign here the CSS ID section one. You see? So in this case, if someone clicks on this button, find out more, it will be scrolling down automatically to the section one. We can publish and go and have a preview of the page. And if I click on find out more, you see it scrolls down automatically. Find out more, voila. Of course, now the section is empty, so I don't see nothing. But when the section will be filled with content, you will click on the button and you will just scroll down to the second section. This is perfect. So let's go on now by adding, before diving into the second section, we will just need to optimize all this first hero section from a mobile and responsive point of view. Let's select this hero section, perfect. And let's click on the first one, okay. Okay, now I saw that here it's not behaving very well, so we need to uh, retouch a little bit to the, uh, the responsiveness of the header, but we will do that later. And um, okay, but the section is uh, looking good. Okay, maybe we can just um, adjust a little bit. Uh, no, I think it's, it's fine, yes. Maybe we can get rid of this. Okay, in my case, this will look good and better like this, okay. And then we can add the tablet view. Okay, looks good. Mobile landscape. Okay, maybe this one, it's a little bit weird. So what can we do now? It's to change the dimension of, uh, of the sections and also the alignment of content. So we go to the first container. Okay, this one, which contains the title and CTAs. And we tell, we tell it to be 100%. So we go to percentage here and we put it 100%, okay. Now we go to the image here, to the second element here, and we tell to the advanced, we go here and we put as a width, a full width. Okay, that's perfect. Then we go back to the hero section, okay, and we change into the layout, we change the direction and we may make it column vertical, perfect. So as you can see now, all the content is taking up the space, but no more in a side-by-side -side, uh, uh, two column section, but each column on its, uh, its own row. So what do we need to do? If you want, you can also align all the contents uh, to the center, to the middle, and you can also make this image a little bit smaller. So let's start from the image. I select the image. 
I go and align the image to the center. Now I can leave it aligned here like this to the end, okay. I can just go now to the style of this image. I can place it to the center and give it a width. For example, I can put it 200 pixels or maybe something more, 300 pixels. Looks good, okay. Now we can go to the first column, to the first container in this case, and we can align all the content to the middle, okay? If it doesn't work, it means that all the content now is uh, wrapped. In fact, is the case because everything is wrapped. And if we go and center everything, it doesn't work because there is no space. We leave default here. We can also unwrap the elements, but in my case, I need to keep them wrapped because I have two, but two buttons like this. So don't touch the wrap. Let's go just to the advanced tab right here. Okay, but I think that in this case it will be easier because we just need to switch back here and align content like this. Okay, and that was a little bit messy because you see the direction here looks different, but we are actually moving in the right direction because we're using wrap, okay? So you guys just go to the justify content, make sure to center, and the buttons will be correctly aligned. The text are not correctly aligned because you need to uh, center them individually. So you go to the first one, you go to style and you center this text. You go to the other one, you go to style and you center this one too. Perfect, now it looks good. Okay, uh, now we have a little bit too much spacing between the two elements right here. So we can go and select the hero section right here or just the title and uh, CTA section. And we just go back to the advanced tab and we see that there is a button padding to 100. So we just need to unlink values and voila, you see, now it looks good. If you want to adjust a little bit, you can increase or decrease. In this case, I will leave it maybe 20 pixels. And of course, I can go back to my main hero section to the advanced tab, and I will be able to decrease a little bit more the top padding. So let's unlink values. And let's say that we want just 50 pixels from the top when we are on landscape mobile, okay. When we go now to the mobile portrait, it should be already optimized. In fact, is the case. This is the case, perfect. <laughs> Looks good. If I want uh, maybe to change something in the buttons, I can make them, let me see if I can do something here. Yeah, if you want, you can make them bigger in the mobile view, but to do so, you just need to select the first one, go to the advanced tab and go to the width, make it full width, for example, then could go to the style tab and make it, no, sorry, to the content tab and make it justified like this. You can do the same thing from with, with the second button. You go to the advanced tab, you make it full width. You go then to the content tab and you make it justified. As you can see in mobile phone, the buttons will be more visible like this. If you go back here, buttons will return normal. Go here like this, you go here, it's like this. And it looks perfect in each and every device. So I hope that you understood the um, the um, the basics of this uh, of how this is working. You see, so that you can adjust your own design to your own uh, uh, con with your own content, of course. When you publish now and you go and visit the page, it looks gorgeous and perfect. And if I stretch the page right here, I see that it looks fine in each and every device. Perfect, beautiful. And now let's have a quick look on um, animations so that we will be able to create a very, very nice and uh, funny animation like this one. As you can see, Elementor, as you will see, Elementor has some uh, built-in animations which are useful and you can use them sometime, from time to time. Be careful not to use them every time because uh, they can be quite annoying if you use too, much anima too, too many animations. So let's see how you can animate this image, for example. We just go and select this one you can also, you can animate widgets, of course, but you can also animate in entire containers or entire uh, main containers if you want. It's, uh, it's up to you, of course. Let's go now here in the first image on the right side. We go to advanced and when we scroll down here, we will find motion effects. If you open this tab, you will find a lot of different type of effects. In this case, we will just begin by seeing how entrance animation works. The entrance animations are animations that are played automatically once when you load the page. For example, here I load the page for the first time and you, as you can see, the animation plays. Same thing uh, right here in this page. There is an animation that plays when I'm entering the page for the first time. And these are called entrance animations. So. Let's see how they work. We see that entrance animations are here and they can also be different from device to device, which is great. 
and we can find here by clicking on default and scrolling down all the different kind of entrance animations that we have using Elementor. The first group is the fading animation, so we can make it like this, for example, or from up like this, which is kind of interesting. If you want to have a preview, you can just go like this or better going like this. Okay, as you can see, this is the preview. It's kind of uh, interesting and funny like this. You can also, in this case, make it sliding from right. Let's see if it works fine. Okay, we just have a preview. And as you can see here, the animation is this one. And okay, so keep in mind that this animation plays only once when you load the page. And it can be interesting to put it into important elements of the page. In my case, I want people to recognize me, so it's... Uh, <laughs> It's uh, funny to, to use this kind of animation. Of course, here you can play around and, and see all different kind of animations that you have when you use uh, this kind of entrance animations. Let's choose now the attention seekers. For example, this one, which is bounce. And let's say that we, are, we want also to modify here to customize the animation duration and the animation delay. What are these two values? The first one, it's uh, um, the value that makes you control the speed of the animation. You can make it slow, like this, you see. You can make it normal, which is this one. And you can make it very fast, like this. In my case, I would leave it normal. And this animation delay, it's, uh, it's interesting because you can play around with it if you want to have, in some cases, maybe you have two or three animations uh, placed on, uh, uh, on a call to action, for example. And if you want to increase delay of some of the animations, you can do it and maybe obtain a very interesting effect. In my case, I will just show you how it works. If I use, for example, 1000 milliseconds, this means that when I, when I, when I load my page, before starting, the animation will wait one second. So see, one second, and then the animation starts, you see? So the page loads, one second, and then the animation starts, like this. This is interesting, you can play around with it. And in my case, I'll go here, and I will also, the animation that I used before is this one, maybe? Or the other one, the wobble? This one, yeah. Oh, anyway, you can just go and play around. There are many animations here. And I will just leave this one because uh, I like it, this bounce one. And instead of using uh, 1,000 seconds, I uh, 1,000 milliseconds, I use uh, fif, uh, 500 sec milliseconds. Publish, voila, perfect, that's good. <laughs> you can also apply animations to buttons and to um, uh, entire containers, as I was mentioning, and to entire section, you know, or anyway, entire main containers. If I want to apply an animation to my entire hero section, I can select the hero section, go to the advanced tab, motion effects, I can go here, and I can make my entire section zoom in, for example, like this, when I load the page. As I was mentioning before, be careful, because if you start using too many animations, it can be quite annoying for people. So uh, just choose to apply animations only to, on call to actions or maybe on images that you want to use to capture the attention of your, uh, of your user, of your visitors. In this case, I will remove, of course, this animation on the whole section. It was just uh, to show you how you can play around and apply animations to whatever you want uh, on your pages. So now let's leave it like this. And um, we were, we are almost ready now. And, oh no, we are ready to step to the second section, which will be this beautiful section with a grid content with all these beautiful icons. And I will also show you how to upload some custom icons that you can download from the web. Now we will see how to create a custom section like this one with some boxes that you can use to showcase all your main services or like in this case, your main numbers of your business or, or of your client business. For example, the number of followers, the number of clients, the number of projects and the many things that can, um, can uh, give a, a quick overview of your business in general. You can even showcase your services from here. And then you can use this last box here to create a beautiful call to action to invite people to contact you or to buy something or whatever you want to add in this call to action right here. I will show you how you can create the section based on the standard icons that are already included in Elementor, but I will also show you how you can upload a custom set of icons by using Fontello website and by downloading a free set of icons from the web. I will show all this in this part of the tutorial, so make sure to be ready to dive in, and if you are, let's start! Okay, so we are right now into the 
homepage, perfect. So we are creating our homepage. The first hero section is uh, completed. So if you go now and visit it, if you have followed all my steps that I showed you uh, in the first part, you will be able to have this beautiful section right here. And when you click on find out more, you will be redirected. You will be scrolling down to the next section, which is already, which is now empty. So we scroll down here. We already created this section, which is empty. I've used in this case, a simple Flexbox container, which is from up to down. So in a column row direction and in a column direction, sorry. <laughs> and so what can we do now? It's very easy. We can go and click on the plus icon and add some content. The first content that we need is the title because we will add a title right here which will be this one. And we can also use a subtitle and a text if you want. So let's see how to do so. We click on the plus icon, uh, or better, we select the, the box uh, container. We click on the plus icon right here. We click on the heading. We duplicate the heading like this, okay? And we paste inside here also a text editor. Perfect, so we have all our content. We click on the first one and we transform it using the styling into a typography, into a um, subtitle in this case, okay? And we need this subtitle to be not a title, so we do not need an H2 level, but we will transform it into a div in this case, okay? That now we're going to align everything to the center. We're going to the next title. We will leave it H2 because it's perfect. We will go to the style, we will assign a different typography. In this case, I'm using the Excel titles. Okay, they look fine. And I will center the title to the center. I will do the same here to the ne next to this paragraph. I will go to styling, we'll center this and go to the typography and use the big paragraph. So if you followed well the beginning of the tutorial, you will be able to use all this global typography and colors, which is great and awesome. Now let's go to the container to the boxes container, we go to advanced and we uh, unlink the values of the padding and we upload, uh, we up update the padding by going to 100 top and 100 bottom. Voila, so it can breathe a little bit. Now we can also make this section right here a little bit shorter. So we just use it to uh, insert a short text about this section. Okay. And then we can use this to, maybe we can showcase our numbers, our services, whatever you want. We, we will use these boxes to showcase the most important thing about your business anyway, whatever, uh, whatever you want in this case. So let's go here. Um, great services for your business. Okay. Now, what we need to do, we need to insert into the plus icon a grid element. The grid element is the same as the container, but it, it has a different kind of structure, but they are based both on the container. So we can, tr we can just uh, drop it here. And as you can see, if I want, I can s easily switch from Flexbox to grid and it will just change the structure like this. The grid element is perfect if you want to create structures like this one, which will, al will also behave well when you sh shrink and when you are on a tablet, for example, or when you are on mobile, you see? The responsiveness is perfect and you can manage it and create it very, very fastly, very fast. So let's go back here to the page. And the first thing we need to do is to make this section full width. So this grid container should be full width, perfect. And then we need to choose which structure we, win, we want to add inside the container. In my case, in the example here, I've used, let me, let me see what did I use here. Okay, we'll just open this grid. And in the grid inside here, if I open also the structure, I see that in the second section, the container, it's, uh, okay, it contains all the icon boxes, you see? Icon box, icon box, icon box, and so on. And the last one, it's a container. Because the last one, it's a little bit more complex. I needed to add a title, a button, and text, uh, all separated between each other. And so I used, a con um, how do you say this, uh, a container. So let's go and add all our icon, box icon boxes. Let's click on the plus icon, icon box. Icon box, which is this one. Okay, okay, that was not correct. So command Z, okay, command Z, Z. <laughs> okay, let's search for icon box. Okay, now it's right. And I can click, right click with the mouse and I can duplicate the element or simply command D, 
common D and common D for five times in my case. And the last one should be a container. So I will go to the plus icon, I will select the container and I drop the container right here. And in the container, I make sure to make it full width and I insert inside this container a heading, then another heading and then a button, which will be my call to action. Perfect. Of course, the first heading will be just um, a div, okay? And it will be as a styling, will be just um, subtitle, for example, or even, yeah, a subtitle is okay. And I can even change the, the alignment. I can make it center, I can go here, and I can make it H3, and I can make it style and center, okay? I can go then to the um, button and make the same thing, so center, okay. So this will be my call to action. Of course, the content here should be a little bit less, so, um, okay, boost your business. And here, contact us. Voila. And of course, in the button, we will add the link to the contact page. Okay, so we're starting from the call to action. We can also select the container and decide to align all the elements to the center, which will look better like this. And we can also assign, of course, a background color if you want. So we can go to style, background, we can use a gradient, we can use a video, we can use a slideshow, but in this case, I will just use a classic background. Okay, I'm using always the global colors and I also recommend you to use always global colors. And I can change maybe Let's see if the blue accent color is good. Mm, yes, why not? And let's change the color here of the first text. Let's make it like this. And here, let's change the color and make it white. Okay, this looks good. Okay, perfect. Now we are ready to go on with, the, with all the other content. So let's publish or save draft. It depends on how you are working. Now I'm just publishing step by step. If I click now on the find out more, I will see my second section like this. Perfect. So we have all our content in place. We just need to uh, edit everything and insert our, our content. So we will change icons, we will change titles here, and we will change these text values. In my example, I've just used all the icons to showcase numbers in this case and some other stuff, but you can also use it to showcase your services, for example, and so on. So let's say that we want to showcase some services. We can go inside here and select the first one, the first icon, and uh, let's create some boxes. So to, to create a box, we just need to go to the advanced tab. Let's add some padding. Normally 20, 20 pixels works good and then we can remove the text that we do not want for example um, uh, a great solution for your business okay maybe like this perfect here we can give it the name of the service for example web design and here we can change the icon going to the content and selecting the icon. We got a lot of icons which are taken from Font Awesome library and Elementor has them already inside, built in. Been, uh, built in. As you can see here, there are many of them. There are hundreds of icons and they will even upload more icons uh, in next months. So you will find maybe some different icons uh, from, from the ones I'm seeing right now. And the best part here is that you can also upload your own icon library, which is great. And I will show you how to do so at the end of this part of the tutorial. So let's say now, now that we want to insert some basic icons, there, there's not much about design, but we can use this one, for example. Okay, insert. Okay, now we can style it a little bit so we can copy and paste the styling to the other boxes. And we can choose, for example, to go to the view and make it framed, or maybe we can make it stacked like this. And we can choose also to have a square or to have a circle. In this case, I will leave it as a square, for example. Okay. And, oh, it's a little bit too... If we go to style and to the icon, we can change the spacing. Okay, I will leave it like 15 pixels is, is okay. The size of the icon, maybe let's make it a little bit more like this, 35. Uh, and the padding, we can increase or decrease padding. Okay, the border radius, we can change it like this. I think it will work fine with a border radius like this. Okay. If you want, you can even rotate the icon, but it doesn't work right now. I don't know why, but 
let's leave it like this. Padding, let's go about 10 pixels. Okay, perfect. Now we can give it some different colors. The primary one will be the background and the secondary color will be the color of the icon, of the actual icon. Let's see if it works well like this too. Yeah, it looks fine. And let's see now, instead of the icon, let's go to the content and we will see the title and the text. We will just decrease a little bit the spacing. We will ma make it five pixels. We can change the title color. We can give it an accent like this or the secondary accent, which looks good, okay? And we can also change the color of the text and the typography if you want. Down there, we can change the color of the description. Let's see if it works fine. For example, if I choose uh, this color here, okay, why not? <laughs> and then I will be able also to add a, back, uh, a border color. You see now the, uh, the box is like this. I can add a border color. So I can go to the advanced tab, I scroll down to border. I use the solid border, border and I put one pixel and I choose a color. I can choose the pink one. Let's see if it works fine. The pink one, it's not so nice. So let's use the global border color, the light one. Okay, that looks good, perfect. Okay, maybe instead of using, yeah, you can you can adjust uh, as you wish. And then here we copy and paste the styling. You see with the right click of the mouse, copy and paste style, voila. Copy and paste style. Sometimes there are some styling that, that are messing up a little bit, but we, we will just adjust them really quickly. Paste style and paste style. Okay, so we do not have to redo all the styling for each box. In the second one, we will just change the title here. We'll choose SEO strategy. Then we will just need to go to style and change the icon color. As you can see here, we just need to reselect the one that we need or just to... Oh no, I know, I know what, what happens here. I just need to publish or save draft and then reload the page. Okay, I save and reload the page and you will see that all the icons will have the correct color. Okay, now it works fine, perfect. Sometimes it's just a matter of caching and so you just need to save and reload the page and everything works fine after. So now let's let's use the same sentence here so we, we ju just can speed up a little bit more the, um, the creation process and we can change icons quickly. We can go here and let's, let's make some icons like this very quickly. So we just need to see how it will look like at the end of the process, okay? This one, maybe a search. Okay. And then we'll go down here and we change it to this, this one, for example, okay. That's it. Perfect. We we have our icons. Maybe they will work well in into a into a, um, a different shape. <laughs> maybe circle instead of square. Yeah, maybe maybe it's better like this. Copy paste style, paste style, and so on. Okay. Perfect. Let's publish and go and have a preview of our section. Find out more, voila. Web design, SEO strategy. It's a little bit too pinky now, but it kind of gives you the idea on how you can put your hands on, on the section and just uh, uh, adjust everything. Now let's see how the section will behave on mobile. So we go to laptop. Okay, it's kind of, okay, good. We can go on portrait, portrait table, tablet then mobile landscape and here it's a little bit too stretchy you see so maybe here we need two columns how do we do so would you we just go and select the grid element right here and we say that in the layout options we want the grid uh, the grid to be only two columns so we go on the columns and we insert right here two columns okay and the rows we just leave them like this because we have three low rows perfect okay so now if we go back here, we have three, col three columns, here we have two columns, and here we have one column, perfect. It looks fine, you see? You can even force, force it to be two on mobile if you want. In this case, it's not my case, but sometimes can be useful. In my case, it's just one column, and then I can go back to my desktop view, okay. Perfect, I just can't uh, uh, stand it, there's too much pink, so I will just change the color here. 
Okay, so now I've just changed it a little bit, the styling, and I wanted to showcase here not only my services, but I, I wanted from design point of view to show all, all my colors, but I've, I've done it in a, in a very, very delicate way. You, you see, I just used the colors in my titles right here, and then in my call to action here. So now we will be able to give it more customization by using a custom set of icons without having to choose only from the normal standard font awesome icons that are that are offered by Elementor in this case. Now let's have a, a last check from the mobile point of view. Okay, as you can see here, there are some uh, padding issues. You can add whatever kind of padding you want to each and every section. In this case, I have this section here that has need, that needs some padding, so I can go here and uh, simply add some padding going to, so to advanced tab and adding some padding here. Normally 20 pixels works good. And voila, that's it. If you need to add some padding also to the others, you can do so, but we did so at the beginning of the, of the, of the editing of this section. So as you can see here, there is already 20 pixel of padding around uh, each and every box here. We just forgot to put the same thing inside here. So I selected the container, I went to advanced and I added some padding and now it's working fine on each and every every device. As you can see here, the padding looks great. Perfect. Now we will go on by creating another important section of our own page where we can showcase our content. We can use this, pa this page here, this section, to showcase, for example, our uh, latest projects or some pictures about uh, our services. Or maybe you can showcase here some testimonials. You can use this section here in whatever way you want. Of course, these are all guidelines that I'm, go I'm, doing, I'm going to give you. Uh, taking the time to create this new section right here to give you some ideas on how you can place your content around your homepage, and most of all, on how you can place every content by continuing to using your global styles from text, buttons, and so on. This will be very, very uh, important. So let's go on creating another section right here. We have all our section now named. The first one is the hero section, this one. Then we have the boxes, okay? And then we can add a new section by clicking on the plus icon. And we can add inside here, or, or we can just scroll down, it's better, and click on the plus icon right here. Now, as I'm continuing to add a new section where I need to add some padding manually, I can also create a section and save it as a template, which will be useful for, uh, for, the, um, for the continuing of uh, creation of my website. So let's click on the plus icon. We will use a Flexbox section. We will use this one. And we will just go to the section and we will uh, go to advanced and add some padding. So we unlink the values and we add some top padding about 100 pixels and bottom padding 100 pixels. Of course, you can add your padding um, as, uh, as your design process are, is, uh, is set up. So if you prefer to have 50 padding up and down, you can do so and so on. In my case, I, I find that 100 pixels is okay. It looks good in, uh, in many cases. And then I can go and change the padding for tablet. In tablet mode, for example, I found out here in the previous sections that uh, 100 pixels steer still works fine. And when I'm on my telephone here, I can, if I want, I can decrease padding. But in my case here, I see that it looks good even on telephone. Okay, perfect. So I can leave it like this in every device. That's great. Let's go back here. Now uh, to um, speed up my creation process, instead of going of, um, modifying uh, each time I add a new section, the advanced uh, and the padding uh, settings. I can go here with the right my click on the mouse and I can click on save, uh, no, so, sorry, save as template. This is great because I can save this section as global section, not global, global, it's an, another kind of option. Let's call it main padding section or padded <laughs> section and save. So each time I want to insert a new section, I will go just here on the on the folder icon and I will go on my templates and I can select main pattern se section. Insert, apply, and voila, I have another section in my page, which is this one. Perfect. You see, it's very easy and uh, quick to do. So now that we have this section here and we uh, have also saved the section as a template, we can uh, basically start adding some content. In our case, the content will be divided in two columns. So I will need to use a first column with a container. So I will drag and drop a container right here. I will make sure that this container is full width 
and then I will go inside the container and start adding a subtitle, a simple title, a text, and a button. Okay, so the same thing as we did already here in our hero section. So we can scroll down and start adding things. We can go to the plus icon, we can start for, with the first heading, we can duplicate this by clicking Command D or just right click of the mouse and duplicate here, okay? The first one will, will be a subtitle and it will have a um, span or a div, in this case, a div. And uh, under style, we can go here, typography, this will be a subtitle, perfect. A div or a paragraph you can add here. Down here, we can leave H2, we go to style and we go to typography and we assign, for example, the L titles or even the XL titles, if we want uh, our title to stand out a little bit more. Okay, now we can go on plus icon and add a text editor, okay. As always here, it's better to add um, a style, a different style in ty typography. I use my big paragraph style, so I'm sure that my paragraph stands out a little bit more. I can go on the plus icon and I can add also my button, voila. So this is my first part. This will be my first column on the left side right here. And um, I will be able now to add a new kind of content, which will be my slider. We have different kind of sliders when you, we use Elementor and uh, sliders and also carousels. When you type in carousel, you will see down here, you have basically seven different kind of carousels that you can add to your pages. The image carousel, a simple image slide, of course. The loop carousel, which is more complex. The slides carousel that you can use also to add some content. For example, you can use it to add some background images with buttons and titles, but it's a little bit limited. Then you have the media carousel that you can use to add some images, but also some videos to your content right here, you see. Then you have also the testimonial carousel and the reviews that are similar and that you can use them to showcase your testimonials on your uh, on your pages. And then you have the, the normal, the basic widget, which is this one, the carousel widget, which is very, very flexible. And uh, this is the one that we are going to use right now. Okay, so let's get rid of this one and we will add a carousel. To do so, we will select the container, which is the third one. And we can also rename it by rename it. Um, we will go, we will call it services. Okay. Now I will click here in the third one and I will simply go in the plus icon and add a carousel. Okay, this one, so the, the, the standard one. Perfect. Down here, you will see that you will have some containers that are ready to be filled with all your content. And you can basically insert right here whatever content you want. You can delete or duplicate slides. You see here, we can add more slides. If you want to have more slides into your slider, we can also delete them. And so you, you can add any number of slides you want. Now, let's say that we want to keep um, three slides, so I will see, uh, I will keep them like this, the first one, the second one, and the third one. I will open the first one and I can change the title if I want. I can call it, for example, web design, because I'm going to showcase all my services in this example, each service in a different slide. So web design is the first one, then we will have WordPress, okay? And then we will have, let's say, uh, marketing. This is just a quick example to show you how you can showcase, in this case, some services in each different slide. You can also use them to showcase your latest works, your portfolio, or some uh, some pictures about your, your business in general. So now you will be able to add into each and every slide all the content you want. You just need, you just need to open here the carousel widget and you go into the first slide, for example, and you decide, in my case, to add a background image. To do so, I go to the Style tab, I go down here, I select Classic, Background, and I add an image. In my case, I already uploaded some images, and I will leave you also the link to all these free resources that I'm using during the tutorial directly into the Elementor Starter Kit, which is linked down here. You will just need to subscribe to my free newsletter, WP Road Newsletter, which I use to send you some 
interesting reviews, tutorials, and news about WordPress. And then you will immediately access to the Elementor Starter Kit, where you will have also the images that I'm using here, and you can download them from this direct link. This will be all the images that we, all will, we will also be using during the tutorial, so you will find them, and you can use them to practice and follow along. So let's choose the first one, which will be this one and I select this one, this fir first image. And as you can see here, as this is a background image, it might be a little bit, uh, uh, <laughs> how do you say? We need to work it around a little bit to make it look like the examples. For, so in my example, it will become uh, uh, a square image like this one. So let's see how we can do. We can just get rid of this notification here. We can change, we have to change the image resolution. We put it medium, which is enough for us in this case. And we go to the positioning, we make it to the center. We go to repeat, we, do, we click on no repeat. And to display size, we go on cover. So medium, position center, center, repeat, no repeat, display size, cover. As you can see here, the image is now correctly visible. If you want, you can also go back to the layout and you can change the main height. And I can go, in my case, I can go 320 pixels, can be a good layout, a good minimum height. But keep in mind, if you use the minimum height, it will be also, you will need to adjust it from tablet and from mobile also. In my case, maybe let's go a little bit less. Uh, let's see if it if it's good enough like this, 250, okay. And let's go on with the others. Unfortunately, you cannot copy and paste the styles between uh, the slides. I don't know why it's like this, but as you can see here, all the options are grayed out in, the, in this case. And uh, in this, I found out that it is the behavior of the single slide content. I don't know why, but it's like this. So let's go to the second slide now. And let's do the same, we will add a background image. So we go to style, we go to the background, classic, and we choose an image. In this case, we will use this one, another image of a city, for example, this one, okay. Then we, we will have to do the same here. So we choose medium, we choose the position center, we choose repeat, no repeat, and we choose here to cover, perfect. Let's do the same at the um, in the last slide, the third one. We go inside here, style, background, and let's add a third image. Let's say that we will we'll use this one. Okay, select. Perfect. Image resolution, this one, so it will load faster. We don't need uh, an image of huge dimension, dimensioning in this case. Repeat, no repeat, display size, cover. Okay, let's go on. So now we have our three slides. We can choose how many slides we want to show when the visitor comes to this section. In my case here, there is one slide at a time. And uh, here we have three slides at a time. If we want to change that, we go back to our carousel right here and we change the number of slides on display. In this case, you can put one, for example. Okay, so as you can see here, everything changes. But if we want the slider to be on the right side of the first column, we just need to go to the main services box, the third one here, and to change the layout direction. In this case, we go to the row horizontal. Okay, that's perfect, you see? Now we can also choose to, we can publish, for example, and we can go and have a preview. Let's see, okay, that's great, you see? Our slides are correctly seen, shown like this to the right side. Now, if you want to increase the, how do you say, the, um, the height, you just can, go right here and play around with the height of all these lights. To do so, you have to go to the first slide, okay, and change the minimum height. For example, we can go around 220 was a good value. And, and then all the other slides normally will have the same height without having to, do, to apply them manually, because you will see, now if we just reload the page, Okay, perfect. All these slides have the 350 pixels height. Okay, we can even add a little bit more. Voila, that looks good. Okay, now we have our slider and we can align a little bit differently all the elements. For example, we can center vertical or align the text here on the left side. And let's do so by selecting the main container and by telling him to center align all the items. We can get rid of the structure now. Okay, so we have a preview like this. That's perfect. So we have all everything center aligned. We can have now a publish and 
we'll see what's happening okay that's that that looks very very nice let's see now the controls that you can uh, customize for example here you see i've made these buttons like this and you can also customize right down here let's see how to make so you go and let's reload the page after saving of course okay let's select the slider so we go into the structure here we can detach it from here we can open and select the carousel and in the settings here you see that you can enable an autoplay in this case it's already enabled by default you can also increase the speed uh, at which the images switch bit one between another for example for example if i put 3000 milliseconds uh, they will change each uh, three seconds then we have we have pose and hover i leave it like this pose and interaction leave it like this infinite scroll i leave it like this perfect direction left offside slides none okay the offside uh, offset sorry it lets you for example show your set your next slide and if i go on right for example and publish i can see in the example here that i will see my next slide you see as you can see here coming so it kind of gives the, the the user the idea that there is something coming next this can be useful in some cases but in my case i will leave it none then i can go to navigation and i can decide if i want to show or hide the arrows and if i want to change the icons of the arrows and if i want to position them a little bit differently in my case here i've used a little bit of um, offset as you can see here in the right and left side to do so you just need to come here to the options navigation arrows and then you change the positioning horizontally in this case you can use minus 15 for this one and um, you can use the next arrows position minus 15 okay and then you will be able also to do uh, same kind of um, adjustment to the pagination the pagination it's the dots that you can find here in the in the uh, in the downs how do you say in the at the bottom of the slide of the carousel and you can change them to none if you want to hide them to fraction or to progress progress in some cases can be useful because it's very modern and uh, interesting and it will add a bar right here with the progression of these sliders if you want to use it it's um, it's them up there i leave it to progress now i go to style and I can also uh, style the gap between slides. I can uh, style the background type, the uh, the background, uh, the border type, and so on. In my case, I will leave them like this. And let's see if I want to add a border. It can be it can be nice. Maybe let's add a, a solid border and make it about five pixel. Okay. We can change the border color light. This one, for example. Okay. And we can also change the padding if you want, and so on. We can also change the border radius. Hmm, that's not, that's very nice we can leave it to 10 pixels for example then we can go down and go to navigation and we can change the arrow aspect aspect i will increase a little bit the size of the icons maybe to 30 and then i will add a color to these icons i will add it a white color and a background color so that they will stand out a little bit more voila as you can see here now they are orange and they stand out a little bit more we can go and add also a border radius about uh, uh, 100 so they will be rounded and we can add a little bit of padding let's do kind of five pixels of padding okay now we can also choose the positioning i will leave them inside and the pagination we can choose we can change the um the colors and the aspect of the progress bar so in this case we can also increase the height like this for example we can also change the background color okay and we can change also the voila that's it publish let's see voila this is our slider and as you can see now you have the progress bar this can be very modern good looking and uh, it's a great solution to showcase uh, for example your services or your latest uh, projects and so on let's see now what happens uh, in the case that you want to add some content inside the slides because you have also the option to add some buttons some text and uh, some call to actions if you want in my case uh, generally speaking i like to leave them uh, essential like minimal and like in this case as you can see here but uh, in sometimes in some some cases you you will need to add some content inside the slides and so 
what happens is that you can go inside a slide and as you can see here you can drag widgets inside a slide. Let's say that you want to add to this first slide a button, for example, you go to the plus icon right here, you can use the up, uh, up and down, so the column direction content. In the container, let's open the structure here, you see that there is the first container which is added inside the slide, okay, this one. You select the container and you go full width and you do the same into the slide content width, full width, so that you can occupy all the content of the slide. You can go on the plus icon and you can add, for example, a text, a heading, and you can also maybe showcase your service web design. Let's say that this is my web design service and I can place it to the center of the slide. I can go and change the text color and can make it white. I can also add a text stroke here, which is kind of a, a solution to make it more visible and I can change the color this one. I can also go to the shadow if I want to make it even more visible and I can increase the background shadow color like for example this one. Okay and then I can also position the element differently but to do so I can just go back to the container and add to the advanced tab some padding. Let's go and make it about um, or I can even stay in the widget in this case to the adding widget advanced tab padding 20 pixels, okay. Then I can go to the plus icon and add a button, for example, okay. Let's make it here. And I can give this button the justified full width, perfect. I can give it a link. Let's say that I want to link to the services page, okay. And I can go on and change the text here, for example, and so on. And contact us, for example. So maybe I can go to the contact page directly, okay and so on. So here, if I want to position the elements differently, I can go back to the container and I can apply all that I've learned in the previous steps of the tutorial. So I can go to layout and I can choose, for example, to uh, use the space between element. You see, now if I use the space between element right here inside the container, okay, and if I go also to the advanced tab and I apply the grow, the grow option, you will see that all the elements will be spaced at the, at the edges of the container, in this case, up and down, you see? So you can um, basically work around like this if you want to add some content and so on. And this works fine, it's great. We can also increase a little bit of uh, margin and padding right here if we want to add some more top padding, for example, like this to the, to the first one. We can publish and go and have a preview of our content. And voila, this looks great. This is the first slide and if someone clicks here, it can go directly to the contact page. So you see, this is the this is a good way to create slides with some content inside, and you can repeat the same also for the other slides if you want. And if you want to increase also the contrast between the elements and the background image, you can use inside each and every slide the uh, style elements which are called background overlay. If you go here and you add a overlay you can add basically a filter color, like in this case, if I use the orange one or the uh, pink one and so on, and you can obtain a really interesting effect. Voila, that's very nice. You see now that you can also apply a hover effect and you can also increase here the, um, the styles. Let's say that you want to keep it like this and when someone goes hover with the mouse, you want to change the color and make it, for example, green and Voila, and maybe increasing also the opacity. Voila, you see? Now what I'm passing with the mouse is going like this. I can go also to pink if I want, and it goes like this, and so on. So you can choose the behavior in this way. So let's publish and go and see. Now, voila, when someone passes with a mouse and hovers the image, it goes like this. Beautiful. And you can easily apply the same kind of um, content and effects also to the other slides. If you go right inside here and you copy the first container, you go then to the other slides and you paste the container, common V or CTRL V. Of course, you will need to um, adjust all the other settings, like go to the second slide, you made it full width, okay. You can then add the styling and go to the background overlay if you want to add some overlay colors. In this case, we can add the same um, uh, blue color, this one, and you can add an over color. So overlay, you go to the hover settings, you add a hover color like the pink one and so on.
And so this will be the same behavior of the, as, the, as the first slide, you see? First, second slide, and so on. You can change, of course, the content here. You can change also, also the button, the link, and so on. And you can do the same here at the last slide. You paste the content and you go to the last slide. You make it full width, okay? You go to the style, you go to the background overlay, and you can add the same right here. As you can see, this is very flexible and powerful. It's a beautiful solution if you want to showcase your content in a creative way and to drive attention to your services, for example. Okay, perfect. So we go back here, we have all our slides with our different kind of content. Perfect. So this is the first one. This is the second one and this is the third one. Perfect, they look gorgeous, <laughs> they look great. Okay, so this is, these are our slides and you can enjoy all the creative process by adding your own content and deciding, how to, and deciding also how to showcase your content right inside here. So I had a button here, I have a link that I can apply to these buttons, which is the content page, which is already, uh, at the moment it's, uh, it's empty, but we will uh, uh, create it in a while. And, and so on, so we have all the other kind of content that you can add right inside here. So basically you saw right here how you create a third section for your home pages to showcase whatever you want, services, testimonials, or uh, whatever you want, basically. And uh, we can also uh, increase also the contrast between the first section, the th second section and the third one by adding a background color. So we can go to the style, right here, and we can add a background color to the whole third section. Let's go to the classic one, and let's go and add a, a really light background color, like this one, for example, or this other color here, which looks good. Okay, perfect. And we click on Publish, and we added a beautiful third section. Perfect. Okay, it works fine. Now, what we need to do is to go and check everything from a mobile responsive point of view. You already know how to work to in the mobile optimization, but I want to quickly show you how you can optimize everything. As you can see here, you will have two slides uh, automatically apply. You just need to go to the layout, into the tablet mode. You scroll down and uh, you select, you make sure to select the carousel in my case, okay? And you decide to show in the content section only one slide into the mobile, into the tablet mode. Okay, so that will stay a little bit better visible like this, okay. Then let's go to the mobile portrait. It looks good, perfect. If you want, you can center align everything. So you can go to the first one, first widget, you center the first widget, go to the second widget, you center it, and so on. So we go to the style, and we go also to the button. Voila, perfect. So we can have everything aligned and perfectly organized. We can click on publish now, we go back to our desktop section, okay, perfect, and we have a quick preview, and this is our beautiful section working fine on all different kind of devices, perfect. Voila, we already built our third section. Now we will create a section like this one, which will be perfect in order to you to showcase, for example, some testimonials or some key features of your services or business. And of course, to display also a beautiful and enticing call to action like this one. We will also use this section to learn how to work with other effects. We already saw a little bit in the first, uh, in the previous section, how you can apply some hover effects to the background, for example, like in this case. And in this case, we will see that we can also apply some hover effects to an entire section, like in this case, an entire container, like in this case. And uh, we can uh, also uh, apply multiple effects. Like in this case, you see the section is decreasing uh, the dimension when someone hovers with a mouse. And uh, the same section is also changing the background color like this. So this is a, a kind of uh, a, a creative way to combine all the different uh, effects that you can apply with Elementor. And let's see how, how to create a beautiful section like this one. And of course, you will be able to use it to um, to insert all your content the way you want. Okay, let's go and learn how to create a beautiful section like the one that you already saw. Now we'll click on the folder. I showed you how to pre-save some uh, sections, some uh, templates. In this case, I've saved my main padded section. I will insert it, I don't apply, and it's already a styled, a styled basic 
container, okay, which with all my padding added to the advanced tab without having to do it each and every time. Perfect, what do I need to add right now? I need to add three uh, containers, three different containers. So I will go in the plus icon and I will go and drop in some containers. I will make them full width and I will duplicate them like this so that they will become three. Okay, perfect. I got three containers. So let's go to the layout of the main section. I will also now change the name to the fourth section. I will call it, in this case, uh, Great CTA, okay? And into my Great CTA, I will go to the layout settings and display all the elements into the horizontal direction, okay? So I will publish. Basically now I have a simple container with some padding. Okay, of course, you see in the advanced tab, I have some padding up and down, top and bottom. And then I have three containers inside. The first one, second one, and third container. I will use the main one, the main container, to, ins to insert a main image and a call to action button, like the one that you see here. So let's do so immediately. I will go inside here and insert an image. Okay, let's drop the image here. I will select this image right here and for in order to apply the same styling that I'm going to apply, you will need to have um, a transparent background image because it will work better. Of course, you have all these images if you want to practice right into the Elementor Starter Kit that you find in the free resources below this video. Click on Select, okay, we have this beautiful image and we will have also to add a button. So we go on the plus icon and we go and add a button. Where is it? It's right here. Okay. Now we will make this button centered. We'll change the dimensioning of this button. We make it extra large and we will change also the styling of the button in the typography settings. We will use uh, S titles. So it will be very, very big. You see here, <laughs> a huge button. Okay. Now let's go to the settings of the um, container. Okay. Of the second container in this case, let's call it image. Okay, and uh, let's change the settings. Uh, scrolling down here, we'll go and uh, get rid of the gap. So we go on zero, so that the button here will will uh, will be um, near to the image. Okay, perfect. Now we can go and uh, select also a background color for all this element. So we go here to the style. We go to the background type, classic, and we change the background color. Default, we change it to dark, for example. Perfect. Let's go now to the button here. Okay, we go to the content area. Okay, now we will make it a little bit different uh, from this one. We will go and make it squared in this case. So in my case, I'll go to the button down here and make it full width. Go to the advanced tab. No, sorry, and go to the content tab and go and justify the button. Perfect. So that it will occupy all the space that it has at his disposal right here. And in order to apply this beautiful effect that makes the image shrink like this, in this case, and also to change the background, I will go and make the first thing. So I will go into the container and change the background color when I hover. So you see here, there is this hover option that I can use and I can go to the background type and I can go and change the color to another color. For example, I can make it pink. And when the image will be hovered, all the container, um, all the container will become pink like this. This is great, and it gives you a beautiful uh, effect like this one. You can also make it in this case maybe something different like this one, the blue color. <laughs> this is great. Okay, so in my case, I will leave it maybe a little bit more like this. Perfect. And we can go and make also another hover effect by going to the advanced tab, scrolling down right here, transform. And right here into the transform settings, we can go on hover and we can go on scale. So we select scale. Be careful here because the scale is very sensitive. And when you enable it, it will grow or shrink very, very um, a lot. <laughs> We start from one and we go to the 0 0.9. You see here, it's very huge, the the, um, the difference. And let's do it like this. Let's do it like this. Let's go to the contrary. Let's go to the normal settings. Let's go and have the scale effect applied here. And we go one, one, zero, one. Or maybe a little bit more, one, zero, five. 
You see, even 105 is already a little bit, uh, let's go 101, like this. Okay, so it's, uh, it's, it's a little bit like this. And when someone hovers, we go on a scale and we put it back to one. Okay, now it works fine, you see? Perfect. We can even do a little bit less, like 05. Let's see. Okay, it's a little bit lighter like this and it works fine. Perfect. Let's publish and go ahead and have a quick preview. Okay, this is a beautiful call to action, you see? It works fine and voila, it's perfect. Let's go now and add some content to the left side and to the right side of this, uh, of this main call to action. You can use it to showcase some testimonials if you want or some uh, any kind of content. In my case, I, I'll use the container to add uh, whatever I want. For example, I can add a first image, go to the container, plus icon, image, I can use this image to have uh, uh, whatever I want. In this case, it will be this image here and into the image resolution, I'll go to the medium. Okay, I will go in the style settings and make it in pixels, uh, about uh, 100 pixels. Okay, maybe a little bit more, 120. Okay, like this. Then I will go and make it round. That's aligned to the left side. Advanced tab, make it round style, sorry, border radius 100, perfect. And I can also add a border solid. Okay, and let's change the color of the border. Let's make it dark like this, perfect. Now we'll need to add some content, maybe a title like this one, okay. This can be like an H4 title and okay. I can also use like this. Maybe this is a testimonial, for example, and I can also add some text. So a text widget with some text right inside right here. We can go and style this text a little bit differently, like for example, adding these small paragraphs. And um, I can then add to the container some padding, going to the advanced tab, padding, maybe 20 pixels. And uh, basically that's it. If you want, you can also add a background in style section, maybe a light background like this one. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it, so I can leave it like this. And I can copy all the styles to the second. So I can go, copy all the content, paste, copy and paste, copy and paste, okay? And I copy and paste styles of my container. So I go to the container, paste style, perfect. So here I will just need to change the content positioning. For example, here I will change, of course, also the image and I will place inside here a different image, let's say uh, this one, okay? I will go here and place the content right here to the right, and I will do the same here for this text. Oh, sorry, the right, okay, perfect. So basically this is my content. I can also increase a little bit if I want the spacing between the elements, selecting the main container, going to layout, and if I want I can increase here by me putting 40, for example. But in my case, I think that 20 works good. So let's go here. And this is my beautiful call to action section. You see, now it behaves like this. So if someone goes with mouse right here, it goes like this. And if I want to position all the elements a little bit differently, maybe align all the elements to the center and so on, I can do it by doing so. Let's get rid of the structure here. And let's say that I want all the content to be vertically aligned. So I select the container right here. I go to the layout settings, I scroll down, I go to the align items and I go to the center. Wow, that looks fantastic. So publish and let's see it again. Now it, it is even better, you see? <laughs> A beautiful section. Of course, now we'll need to position everything differently into tablet and uh, telephone. Into tablet, it looks good, okay? I can go here maybe and change the scale options when I'm into tablet, or maybe change the, the dimension of the images. Like for example, here, I will put them a little bit less, like for example, 80 pixels. Okay, let's copy and paste the styles. I will need to make it a little bit again to the right, okay? This works fine, perfect. And let's do some optimization from landscape on mobile, okay? And here from the mobile portrait. Okay, when I'm here, I just want it to be a little bit different. So I want to center everything like this when I'm on mobile. Okay, let's do the same here. 
and let's apply the same right here. So we will center everything right here. Perfect. Center, center, center. This works fine. I can even choose to replace this uh, call to action differently when I'm on mobile. For example, I can choose this second container and tell the system here to place this container to the end. Wow, that looks perfect. And of course, I will need to increase a little bit more the spacing. So I will go to the, um, maybe I will just need to go here to the advanced tab to the transformation and I can change the scale. I can say that on mobile, I want it to be standard. So one scale, perfect. And when I go on hover, I go to the scale options and I can place it 0 0.9, for example. And it works, uh, maybe something more 95. Voila, perfect. It looks good even from mobile. So we see, we change the, the order of the elements and then we also decrease the transform options. Let's publish. Let's go and have a quick preview of the page now. We'll see it from desktop, looks fine. Now we'll see it from laptop, it looks fine. From tablet, it looks fine. Mobile landscape, it looks fine, okay. I will need maybe to change the dimensioning of the button. And then right here from the, from the mobile, you see I changed the order of the elements and I also get rid of the transformation and make it like this. Perfect. Hmm. This works fine. It's beautiful. It's uh, and I hope that you will be able to use this knowledge that I that I'm transmitting you. Oh, sorry. Here you see why it's behaving like this. Maybe it's just a caching problem. No, here it needs to be on the right. Okay. To use uh, to create some beautiful section using your creativity. Hope you will be able to do so. <laughs> So let me know in the comment section below if you're creating a beautiful website and what is all about your new project and uh, which are the elements that you're finding uh, to be the most uh, useful for your creative process. And now to, to finish this, uh, this section here, let's add a quick uh, recap of how you can override the elements positioning inside the container. Because as you can see here, when I select the container, I've chosen to make all the elements uh, aligned to the center like this. So I could have chosen start or at the end or stretch like this. In this case, I'll leave them to the center, but what happens if I want to have a different design? For example, this element here, I want it to be aligned to the, to the bottom and this other, the second element here, I want it to be aligned at the top to create even a more uh, creative design. I can go to the first one here, go to the advanced tab, and I simply place it to the aligned self. To, I, I choose to put it to the end. And I go to the second one right here, and I choose to put it in the advanced tab to the start. Voila, that's it. Pretty easy, right? So in this way, you can override the settings that are applied to the main container. Let's have a quick preview. And in this way, the section looks even more creative and enticing, great. Now let's see how we can create a beautiful cut to action like this one with a background video. We will use it to put them, put it to, we will put it right before the main final footer of the page. So this will be a, a call to action that we can use basically whatever we want into our website. We can even choose to put this call to action right inside the footer section if you want. And uh, of course, this will be useful if you want to showcase and display this call to action almost everywhere inside your website. But in my case, I will use it just in the home page. So I will go back to my home page. I will edit my home page with Elementor. I will scroll down to the end of the page and I will click on the on the folder. I'm using my main padded section that I saved in the previous steps and I click on don't apply. Of course, this is just a, a simple container in which, in which I've added some advanced uh, settings, which are padding top and padding bottom. Just it, <laughs> very easy. Now we go and click on the plus icon and we can add some content. So a first heading, then we duplicate this heading two times, okay? And then we had a button right here. We can scroll down and have a button. The first heading will be a simple div and we will add inside here as a styling, the typography, which will be the subtitles. The second heading will be uh, an H3 and into the style tab, we will add inside here a typography, which, which will be this one, a very huge title, or maybe a little bit less like this, okay. And here we will transform this into a paragraph. So we'll add a P and then to the style, we go typography and big paragraphs. Okay, perfect. Now we just need to add some content. So for example, here, this is the 
basic basic content right here. We can go and change it here. Okay, sorry. Oh, 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 oh what's happening? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Let's get rid of it. Okay. Let's go to the content tab right here. Perfect. Okay. Now we go here to the title content and then we go in and then add a text here for example okay let's add a link to the content page perfect so this is the main content and we have the standard content the same as the example right here and uh, now what happens if we want to add a background we just go to the main section we just can give it a name also right here so we call it for example the footer cda for example and we can go and add a background image so we select the main container, we go to the style options, and we can have a classic background. Of course, like this, you will just need to uh, assign, for example, an image, and you can have a background like this. And this is already interesting if you want to have a, a beautiful background like this one, and maybe also using this one, positioning center, center, and so on. Of course, in this case, we will need also a background overlay. For example, in this case, a color like this one. And in order to make all the content more visible, like for example, also this one, or we can change it to white and increase the opacity and so on. So this is the first um, way that you can use to have beautiful background images like this. But what happens if you want to add a video as a background video? Let's, let's get rid here. Let's go back to the background and let's select now video. So you can type inside here the video link which will be taken from YouTube or Vimeo or you can even upload your own video into your uh, WordPress folder. In my case I, I will show you a quick example by using a YouTube video. This is a video taken from YouTube as you can see here and it will stand it will basically load when you load the page and uh, you can also choose to have a privacy mode enabled and uh, of course also um, a play on mobile so it will be forced also on mobile and you can decide if you want to loop it's automatically looped or if you want the video only to play once you can even start it select a start time and an end time in my case I will leave it like this and I will see um, how to set up a background overlay so in order for the content to be more visible like uh, you see here I will need just to change for, for example the content color Let's go into the first one, to the Style tab, and let's change the color. Let's make it orange. Let's go to the second one. Let's make it, in my case, maybe white. Let's go to the third one, and let's make it from a different color like, oh, let's say this one. Okay, perfect. Now we go back to the background. We go to the Style tab, and we scroll down to the Background Overlay. And here we can choose to have a classic one and to assign, for example, this one. Mm, okay, this is, <laughs> this is interesting, but nothing, nothing, nothing. So maybe the dark one, yeah, this one. This one will work well, I think. Beautiful, as you can see here, I have a background video, which looks gorgeous, and I have a beautiful overlay color that's uh, allowing me to have more contrast and to read the content that I have above the video. This is beautiful. I can also increase the opacity, of course, if I want, if I need to do so. And I can also change the color if I need some more, some darker colors and so on. Also, the blue will work fine right here. Okay, let's go back now to the dark one here. Perfect, I will just need to publish here. I will go and see a preview of my page. And I've created a beautiful bottom call to action like this one. Now, of course, I can play around with the content. I can go back here and I can go here and choose to center align elements like this. Go to the first one, to the second one, and to the third one, and I center align them. Go to the button and I center align the button. And I can also choose to increase or decrease the dimensioning of the content right here. For example, if I decrease the width, of the content, as you can see, all the content will be even more centered like this. I can also go and publish and have a quick preview. And now my call to action will be completely different like this. We can also uh, keep on choosing uh, a different alignment of the content. We can go and align left all the content like this, like this. You see, and now everything looks even different. We can go back to the main container and we can increase or decrease the width and all the content will be placed differently. And as you can see now, 
all the call to action will be different and so on. So you can play around with content like this. Of course, as always, you can optimize everything for mobile. You can even choose to hide or show differently some content when you are on mobile. On tablet, we can go into, into the advanced tab and we can choose, for example, to replace this element or this element uh, differently. Like for example, going to the advanced tab and place this element at the beginning, it doesn't work at the end, for example. And um, we can also even choose to hide some elements. So into the advanced, we can go into the responsive and we can hide this on uh, tablet, for example, uh, and also on mobile. And so when we have a preview of this page like this, when we are on tablet and on mobile, you see, the text is no more visible. So this call to action would be even lighter and uh, more enticing like this. Perfect. We can even choose to place content differently. Like for example, align the content and the elements center when we are mobile like this. Align, uh, this one is hidden, but we can align it too. And we can go to the bottom right here. We can align it, we can publish. Okay. And when we have a preview right here, we will see that now on mobile, things will become centered like this, beautiful. So basically you saw how to create a beautiful call to action. Now you, you have also different kind of call to action that you saw in the first steps. So you are capable to create different kind of content using Elementor, which is great. Okay, let's say that we want the video to start after this uh, sentence here, okay, here. So this is 12 seconds and let's say that we want it just right uh, to stop just right here, 40 seconds, 12 and 40. Let's go back to our video, background video. And we have this beautiful option right here into the tab styles, okay, video to start time at 12 seconds, for example, and stop at 40. Voila. So it will immediately start in the part of the video that I want. You see here, this looks beautiful. Okay, let's go now right here. And we will see that if we reload the page, the background video will immediately start at the point of the video that I want it to start. So I'm basically taking just the part of the video that, that I want to use as a background video right here, which is this one with all the images of New York. And uh, once the image, one, once the videos uh, reach the 40 seconds, it will reload starting from the 12 seconds. Beautiful. I love it. So this is a very simple but useful uh, option. Now that we are talking about background videos, let's see how you can upload a background video directly to your WordPress website and without uh, inserting a link from YouTube. And let's see how to, you can apply it, for example, to a hero section, like in my case right here. As you see, I have also a beautiful effect that um, makes the video stands uh, uh, go in the background and uh, with all this, um, uh, how you say, <laughs> di diagonal effect uh, that we have in the background here. So let's see how we can apply this. I will leave you the link uh, to the same videos I'm using in the tutorial right into the Elementor Starter Kit. So you can download directly the video from this page and it's already optimized, so it will be uh, very light and you will be able to upload it directly to your media folder. So once you download the video, you just go here and download. Okay, perfect. We can go back to our page where we are editing uh, the content and you go and select the container where you want to apply this video as a background. And, but, and then you open also the media library of your website. So now I will go here, I exit to WordPress, I open in a new tab, I go back here, I go to my media library and I add a new media file. In this case, uh, it will be my working on laptop video, which is this one, perfect. Okay, again, I can go and click here on the video that I already uploaded. I copy URL to clipboard, perfect. I go back to my page, I select the container when I, where I want to apply the background video and I go and apply the video here, perfect. I copy the link, okay. And now I will see the video, perfect. Now what I need to do in order to make the content stand out and uh, to make the video on the background, um, I will need to apply some filters and I can go here and use the background overlay. Here I can choose if I want a single color overlay or a gradient overlay. If I want a single color overlay, I can go here and apply, for example, a default overlay, let's say this one. And as you can see, the content already stands out a little bit more. 
I can also increase the opacity of my color and it will look great. But uh, you can also play around using the gradient effects. For example, we can choose this one to be white and the second color to be uh, the dark color, for example. And you can play around with the location of the two elements like this. Okay, until you find the straight line like this, perfect. Then we can play with the angle. Okay, we can put it like this. And then we can play with the opacity. If we put the opacity at 100%, we can then go to the white color and we can bring it back to be a little bit more transparent, like this, for example. And as you can see here, the video stands out only in the background. That's because uh, I put the opacity to one, so the maximum, and then I decided to go here to the first color and I decreased the transparency. And so it will be a transparent color. Okay, so this is great. I can publish, I can go and see my website right now and see how it looks like. Okay, let's go and have a preview. Voila, this is my new, my new hero, hero section with a background video, which is beautiful. And uh, you can also decide to apply a negative margin to the section to make it like this. Let's see how it works. If you want this margin to be how do you say, as you can see here, without uh, having this white space right above, we just need to go into the page, we select the first container, we go into the advanced tab, and we decide to unlink the, the margin values and to put a negative margin to the top. For example, in my case, it will be, let me check here how many pixels we have, they will be 90 pixels. Yeah, I say 90 pixels. Let's go here, minus 90. And voila, that's it, it looks perfect. Okay, maybe a little bit more, something more, maybe minus 95, 92, perfect. Okay, now, of course, I will need to increase the padding top, so I will go here and maybe use 200. Okay, uh, maybe a little bit more, 150, let me check. Yes, maybe something more, and 70, okay, so I will need to increase a little bit more here the padding let me say 108 okay let's publish let's go and visit the page and now it looks perfect voila as you can see you can start playing around and obtaining very 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 nice effects of course i can also um go to the structure here select the first one the hero section and decide for example to play again with the background um, overlay so this one and I can decide also to uh, increase or decrease the spacing of this of this line. Okay, so for example, now it's it's a little bit more voila, perfect. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to show you how you can uh, obtain very very special designs. Like in this case, it's a complex design, but now that you can uh, that you that you learned also how to apply all this to to each element in Elementor, you will be able to obtain really really complex designs. Now let's take the time to admire our beautiful homepage. We are doing, we're doing a great, great work. And if you want, you can take the time also to comment in the comment section down below to tell me how, how's going, how you are creating your website. It's, uh, everything's going fine. Are you finding some good inspiration from this tutorial? I hope so. Let me know that in the comment section below. And of course, if you want, you can leave a thumbs up and subscribe to WP Rhodes YouTube channel. I'm sure that you have created a beautiful homepage for your website. Let me know if you're happy about your achievement down in the comment section below. And the next step will be animations. We'll learn how to use animations in your content in order to have a quick uh, kind of, to give an extra layer of interactivity to your content. And we will see how you can apply this kind of animation to your own website. And as I will tell you during the video, don't use it too much because animations can become quickly a little bit annoying. So just use them in the sections and call to actions that you really want to highlight on your website. Arriba! Let's go! Now we will create a simple about page and we will use this page in order to be able to create beautiful headers like this one. <laughs> of course, this is just uh, an example of which kind of design you can achieve by using all the different possibilities that you have when you use Elementor advanced options. And then we will create some beautiful animations. You will learn how to use entrance animations and you will see the difference also, be also between entrance animations and scrolling animations like this one that you are seeing right now. So we will create 
basically uh, a section with the entrance animations, which is played only once, as you can see here, while the other animations, which, which is based on the scrolling of the page, it will be played when the, pe when the user is scrolling in the page anyway, you see? So, by following this part of the tutorial, you will know how to apply this kind of animations and when to apply one kind, like the scrolling one or the entrance one, based on what you want to achieve. Of course, let's start and uh, let's start with the first part, so building the title of the page. We will also use this title to use it again and again all over the place in our website. As you can see here, I have the same style here and I have applied all around my website. So, let's see how you can achieve this design. We can go now on our website, we go back to our WordPress dashboard, okay, and we will select now the about page. We can also use the command E, the finder, we go to the about page and we can edit the about page, voila, perfect. Now inside the about page we insert a first section, I have already saved the basic section with some uh, standard padding inside, which is this one. Okay, I called it section, but uh, it's a container, it's the same same thing. Section containers, it's uh, synonymous. I can call this container here title, page title. Okay, and I will insert inside here some elements. The first element I will need will be this one, which will be the subtitle. Then we will enter this one, and then we will enter this other element. So the first element will be the subtitle, and I can go and add a simple text or heading. Okay. I drag and drop the heading, I select an H2, why not, okay, I can place it to the center, or no, this one can be also an H3, uh, an H1, sorry, because this will be the main title of our page. We can also go to styles and add a custom style, which will be this one, so the title will be very, very big, like in this case. Then we, go, we can go on the plus icon, add a second heading, which will be a simple div, and this one, as a style, will be typography subtitle. Okay, I will place it also to the center, like this one, perfect, and I will also add a new element, which will be a simple paragraph, also using the adding, I assign the paragraph tag, I go to style, center, and I assign also the typography style, big paragraphs. Okay, so now these are the elements that we will transform in this way. To make so, we will just need to go inside here, oh, so let me go to a page where there is, okay, let me take this page as an example, and uh, the first thing we need to do is to assign a background color. So we go to the section, to the main uh, container, sorry, I will try to call it container, and then to the style, to the background, and we we'll go here and assign a background color, like this one, or maybe someone, some color, yes, this one, okay. Now we can go into the background options, staying into the style options, we scroll down and we see that there is a shape divider option. We open it, and we use the shape divider. So the top and the, and the bottom shape divider will be, in this case, let me check, triangle. Okay, no, triangle, it's tilt, tilt is good. Okay, perfect. Tilt one, and then we go to the bottom and we use the tilt number two. Okay, as you can see already, it's uh, quite interesting, this kind of design that we are achieving right now. We can also have a quick preview to see how it works in the front end, wow, <laughs> this is this is nice. But in our case, we wanted to achieve this effect of uh, of something explode, uh, kind of an explosion. And to do so, we just need to go again to the style and to the shape divider. In this case, the first tilt will be to need flip to be flipped. Oh, sorry, the, the first one, the top one, need to be flipped. Okay, so that's it. Uh, that's perfect. If you want to increase or decrease the effect, you can do like this, as you can see here. But I will leave it standard at the moment and I can go to the first text, I can go to the advanced tab, I scroll down to the transform tab and I select rotate. In this case I use a 4 degrees rotation but in this case a minus 4 degrees, okay. I go here to the second text and I insert a 4 degrees rotation into the transform, rotate, 4 degrees. Okay, that's perfect. As you can see now, everything it works it works fine. It's very interesting. We can publish and go and have a preview. This is a beautiful design. And we can also, of course, add our title here. So, okay. If you want to, I, uh, I always like to have a kind of uh, different touch. We can use this tag, this HTML tag here. Okay, that you can also find into the resources, the free resources, the Elementor Starter Kit that I've linked down in the description below. 
And uh, that's it. We created a beautiful, a beautiful section with our title, which is the same one as the example here. Wow, so you can play around, change the background. You can also, of course, uh, play with all the different, different options that you have here, the video, the slideshow, you can uh, have a gradient in background. You can even play around um, further by using, for example, a white one and uh, uh, an orange one, for example, like this. We can change the location here, you see? You can, you can achieve very, very complex design by using all the different effects that you have there. And we can also may, make it like this. No, this, this doesn't work, okay? But anyway, it's very, very, very interesting what you can achieve by using all these kind of uh, different effects. Okay, now we can go back to the simple color. Let's choose this one, for example. Okay, let's add a different styling, a white color. Here we can choose another color, and here we can choose another one. Okay, perfect. Okay, this is new, our new heading, <laughs> beautiful. And now we are ready to insert our content. So this is the heading. If you want to reuse the same heading with the same structure in, uh, in, other, page, in other pages, you can basically proceed in two different ways. The first way is to make it global and by using a template, which is the most complex way to do so. And the second one is the most easy way to do so, but it won't be uh, dynamic. It will be just a, a template that you save and you can reuse whatever you want. I'll show you the quickest way now to do so. It's just to go here with the right click of the mouse. You can decide to save this as a template and you can reuse it whatever you want. We just saw this uh, same settings also um, previously in the tutorial and now we're just using it to save this beautiful title section. Title section, pages. Save, okay, we will use it later on. And now what we can do is just go on by ins uh, inserting some content inside here. This one will be the content where we can uh, try to, um, how you can say, try to find out how animations works. And so let's begin. The first section will be a Flexbox container and we will add inside here some basically simple widgets. But to do so, we will have to do a three columns structure which is not here by default. So we just choose the this one, the left to right, okay, row, row structure. And we insert some containers. The first one, we can make it full width. It's very important, make it full width. Uh, right click on the mouse and duplicate, duplicate. And then again, duplicate. Okay, sorry. <laughs> right click of the mouse, duplicate. Command D. Okay, now we have the three boxes, the three boxes here ready to be filled with all the content. It will be a simple image to start with uh, the um, with the person of uh, my team. The second one will be the image too. We'll insert here the second one. Then we go on to the last one. This will be an image too, and we will have this one. Perfect. Okay, this looks good. Okay, publish. Let's go and see our page. This is beautiful, simple, and uh, straightforward. We can go now and insert some content. So we can add some social media icons, the, the heading, we can use it for the name and surname, the first name and last name. No, so let me say Jane, Jane Orange. Then we have, uh, we can change here the H3, H3. We can make it typography as a small title. We can duplicate it and use it also here and duplicate and use it down here. Perfect. We can go on by adding a, a short line of text if we want. For example, like this. And then we can assign a style, typography, subtitles, and we can also go to the advanced tab and make padding zero, but not, not padding, but margin, maybe button, we can decrease it a little bit. We can go and make it minus 15, and we can duplicate it here and here, and do the same right here. Okay, our designer, marketer, and CEO. <laughs> okay, now let's make that she's the CEO and he is the web designer. Okay, <laughs> great. And now we can go by adding some other content, for example, the um, social media icons. Since we already have 
social media icons here in our header without having to restyle um, them. We can just go here into the header, just let's save the page here. We go to the header now and we copy and paste the same social media icons. We can even save them as a global if you want and you can reuse them, but it's a little bit more complex. So in my case, I will just copy them and paste them inside the content here. Okay, paste, okay. And I can change the styling, put them to the left side. We can duplicate them and put them also here. Of course, you will need to update all the social media links for each and every team member. Let's duplicate here too, and voila. Okay, so we can publish now, reload the page. Okay, sometimes it's good to reload the page because there are some styling that, that uh, jumps away. <laughs> okay, now it looks good, perfect. We can uh, decrease the spacing between rows. To do so, we just need to select the main container and to scroll down here and unlink values and we leave the row spacing, uh, sorry, the, the column spacing, spacing to 40, for example, and the row spacing, we can put it to 10 or to zero, maybe. Yeah, but this is the spacing, actual spacing, spacing not inside the container, so I have to select the single container, okay, and scroll down here and maybe go here to zero. Okay, zero is too much, let's go to five. Five looks good to me. So let's go and copy and paste styles, copy, paste style, copy, paste style. Okay, that's perfect. That's great, okay. Now we can, uh, uh, of course, update all the links here. If you need to, to update links, you can do it from, uh, from the single social media icons right here. You can change icons, of course. You can, uh, based on the icons that uh, the different team members want to share with website visitors. Okay, right now what we can do is to apply some animations. So. Now, when you reload the page, you see that all the elements are immediately visible in the page. And what we can do now is to apply an animation. When you load the page, all the elements will uh, slowly come inside like this. And uh, this one will be the second type of animation that we'll see later in, the, in this part of the tutorial. So let's apply the first kind of animation. We will need now to apply it to the single container. So to the first container, to the middle one, and to the last one. Let's go to the first container and let's apply it to advanced, scroll down, go to motion effects, and then you have to enable the entrance animation. We go here, we choose the fade in left in this case. Okay, we can also play around with the um, speed of the animation and with the delay of the animation. In this case, we will leave it exactly as it is. We go to the second container, we go to advanced, motion, motion effects, and here we use the fade in down and here, to the third one, we use the advanced motion animation, motion effects, entrance animation, fade in right. Perfect. Publish. Let's go and have a preview of the page now. Reload and we see that all the images are coming inside like this. Perfect. Beautiful. That's lo that looks great already. It's a beautiful way to showcase elements uh, uh, or to drive attention to special elements into a page. And you can do the same by applying also a scrolling effect. You see here, this is a different kind of approach to animation. And uh, oh, of course you have to use it with uh, uh, parsimony, you say it, with uh, not, not abuse of this, um, of this uh, kind of animation because it can be heavy uh, for, for the user to have all this kind of animation all over the place. But in some pages, on some call to actions or on some elements, uh, it can be nice to add them. So let's go how you can do so. We can duplicate the section. Maybe let's add oh, just some padding. Let's go to the advanced tab and we will add some top padding and some bottom padding, okay? and we will duplicate the section right now, perfect. Okay, now that the section is duplicated, we can go here to the second one, and we can go to the style and apply a background color so we can easily divide, uh, how do you say, separate one section from the other, okay? And we go to the first container, we go to the advanced tab, we go to the motion effects, and now we get rid of the any entrance animation, like this, okay? And we simply apply a scrolling effect. We apply here, we use in this case a horizontal scroll and we make it to right so that the element you see will come inside from the right, uh, from the left side, okay. Now we, it's important to go here and put the second value to 50%, okay, so that the element will stay there in place when we scroll down and we reach the 50% of the viewport, 
perfect. And then we can do the same here for the center element. We go to the advanced motion effects, we get rid of the entrance animation and we just use a scrolling effect. And we use in this case the vertical scroll, you see? So that the element will come or uh, we can choose from down or from up in this case like this, okay, it will scroll down. And like we did before, we just put this value here to 50%. Now we do the same here, okay, with this element here, advanced, motion effects, transform, sorry, motion effects, we get rid of the entrance animation, we enable scrolling effects, and we use the horizontal scroll, which is already perfect. And of course, also here, we need to leave it 50% to the second value of the viewport. Let's publish and let's uh, reload the page and see a preview. So this is the first animation, works fine. And this will be the second animation. Beautiful, you see? All the elements comes inside like this. Voila. So basically this is, the, the, um, uh, you, this is how you can play around with different kind of animations on your Elementor websites. Of course, as you saw, there are many entrance animations and there are also many, many scroll effects. And uh, uh, you can also enable different kind of effects. Like for example, if I duplicate this section again, this one, and maybe let's make it down here, okay. I can also see that uh, I also have different kind of effects if I go still to motion effects, which are the mouse effects. So let's get rid of this one. Let's get copy and paste styles. Okay, paste style and paste style. And we have here the mouse effects into motion effects, which are nice in some, in some ways. This one is a mouse tracked that follows the mouse movement. And this other one, it's the mouse tilt, which creates a beautiful 3D effect like this one. And of course, it's a little bit difficult then to reach the elements when you apply this effect. So it's the best practice to leave it maybe at a, at a, um, a lower speed, like in this way. You can also choose the opposite, okay? And then uh, maybe apply it only in places where there are big call to actions and where in, it will be easier for the user to click on the, on the call to action. Like in this case, it's a little bit uh, difficult here because the elements are at the end of the card. For example, if you, someone wants to visit the so social media icons here, but uh, it, can be, it can be nice, okay? So let's apply the same effect now, copy and paste style. Of course, you can also apply these effects to a whole set of, uh, to a whole container if you want. And of course, okay, so right now I can paste tiles, publish and reload the page and see how it will behave. Perfect. So you see here, it creates kind of a, a 3D FX, which is, uh, which is nice. It can be enticing and uh, how do you say, it can be... Um, uh, it can capture the attention of the user on some places uh, on some places of your website. So be careful and use it only where you want to really, really to drive attention of the user in the in the main CTAs or main elements, of course. Voila. So these are uh, this was a basic starting point to start learning how to use animations in an inventor, and uh, I hope that this will help you build beautiful WordPress and Elementor pages. When you use Elementor, you already have uh, hundreds of different icons that are taken from Font Awesome. And you can also decide to upload some custom icons if you want. You can find a, very, uh, a, a good variety of, of icons, of thousands of thousands of different kind of icons in the internet. If you type on Google, uh, for example, free icons for my website or, or even premium icons, there are many websites that, uh, that sell icons and you can use them to give a personal touch uh, uh, to your website. The, as you can see now, if you use different icons, you will be able to give uh, a little customized touch, touch to, your, to your design and they, they can make your website stand out even more. So let's see how you can upload a custom icon font to your Elementor website by using the Elementor Pro, Pro uh, function, which is called custom font icons. So when you go back in the back, in the back end of your website, you will see that there is an option in Elementor which is called custom icons. If you select this option, you will see that you can add a new custom icon font and it will be, um, uh, you, you will be asked to upload a Fontello, Icomoon or Fantastic file. So if you want, you can go directly to these websites to create your, your, your font file. In this case, I will show you how it works. 
I found, for example, this website, which is also linked in my resources here in the Elementor Starter Kit, that you find linked in the description below. And here I've linked to you this website, which is called uh, uh, Linea Icon, which is great because it has many uh, free fonts that you can download to use in your website and uh, you know, free icons that you can download in your website. And there is also a quick link to um, the custom pack that I'm going to use right now in the tutorial, which is this one, already created for you in order to be able to upload it to Elementor. And you also have a quick link to the Fontello website, which is this one, which is the web website that you can use to create your own icon font. So let's go and see how it works. We go to the website where we found our, our icons and we download our icons simply. So we can download, for example, this Linea Basic icons. Once we download them, we can open the zip file. Okay, let's go to the SVG expanded folder. Let's go and select all the icons. We drag and drop all the icons inside the Fontello website. We just wait a little bit that all the icons will be uploaded. And at the end of the uploading process, they will look fine, perfect. As you can see here, they look, they look good. And um, so be sure that uh, you have selected the SVG expanded folder when you when you open it, perfect. And now basically what you can do is to change the name if you want. You can change the font, the the name of this uh, icon font. Let's do like this, and then you can download the web font. But before downloading it, you need to select all the icons that you want to transform into a icon font. You download it right here. Okay, there is a zip file here, and you can go now directly to your Elementor dashboard. You go to the dashboard, you go to the Elementor, custom icons, you add new, you give it a name, for example, Linea icons, and you click here to upload your zip file. In my case, this is the zip file. And if you do not want to make the same process that I just show you right now, you can also download directly from the resources my, uh, my file. So you can click here, you will be able to have directly the zip file that you can upload into your Elementor editor in order to have your icons like this. But I wanted to show you all the process so in order that you are free to find out many other icons in the web, transform them into an icon font and use them into your Elementor website as I just show you right now. So here there is your icon set, you can update it Perfect, and when you go back now to Elementor and custom icons, you will find your Linea icons. These are 135 icons, and uh, you can create them as I showed you right here using Fontello and downloading the icons from free icon websites. And uh, you can also directly download them from the icons resources that I will leave you in the description below in the Elementor starter kit. Perfect, so now we can apply basically these icons throughout all our website. So if I go back to my home page, for example, I can click on edit with Elementor. I can scroll down to the icon boxes that I, that I put in my second section, like here. And I can change them by selecting here. I go to my linear icons and I can apply them directly here. So let's say that this one will be the design one. Then we have this one, the SEO strategy. Let me search if there is um, an icon here for this kind of content. Maybe there is a land, eh, this one is perfect. Okay, insert. We can go here, as you can see, the design changes completely if you change the icons because they are very important parts of your, of your web design process in general. So this will be maybe something about this, okay. Accessibility, we can go in UI, UI UX, Okay, we change the icon, linear icons, and we can use uh, maybe something different like, um, oh, let me check here, <laughs> an icon that goes well with that kind of content as an app, like this one could work fine. Yes, why not? Okay. Perfect, UI, UX, and responsive, we can use another icon. Go down here, linear icons. Uh, and if there is a mobile phone or a tablet, we can use it, or we can just select one of the other icons. Yes, this one is perfect. Okay. Wow, as you can see, this looks great and gorgeous because we just changed the icons. So we had a previous page with standard icons, and now we have a beautiful page with uh, highly well-designed new icons. And these are all free, and you can download them directly here from the Elementor Starter Kit and upload them into your 
um, into your custom icons on Elementor. So it's very easy to do so. And once you're here, you have a whole new set of icons to apply throughout your whole website. This is beautiful. And of course, as they are an icon font, you can change the colors of the icons and you can basically um, adjust all these tilings uh, the way you want. So it's great. Now we will see how to create a main services page like this one in which you will be able to showcase all the services of your business. We will create a mega menu like this one in which you will be able to showcase all your single services and then we will be creating the single services template. If you want, you can create all the single services pages one by one without following this part of the tutorial. But in our case, I will show you how you can take advantage of the theme builder template system that Elementor Pro provides you. And we will basically create all the structure of these pages, like the heading, the background and the colors in a dynamic way. So as you can see here, the structure, the colors remains the same in each page, but the content will change. Like in this case, you see the content and titles are changing. Let me show you how this works in the back end. I go to the theme builder. I simply created here a services page template, which is this one. And if I go and preview it, as you can see here, the template will be something very simple. Let's open it. We will create a heading with some dynamic content, which will take the post title here. Here, there will be the post excerpt. And down here, there will be the post content. The advantage of using this system is that you can easily make quick updates throughout all the pages that share the same template. For example, if you have five or 10 services, this will be very useful if you want to keep your design consistent. Let me show you a quick example. My client, for example, here has asked me to change the background of all these pages. In my example, I only have three of them, but it might be very likely that I have five, 10, 20 pages about my services. And since I have created all these pages using a template system and they are basically all linked together from a layout and design point of view, I will be able to make any change in a few clicks instead of going into each and every page and make the updates manually. So let me show you how you can quickly update the background if you're using a template like I will teach you to do in the next steps. In my case, I just go to my template background and I change the color. Okay, I'll do the same here, shape divider, color. I just need now to publish. I'll go and have a preview of my website. And if I visit all my services pages, they will be all updated as you can see right now. Wow, this is beautiful. And if I want to make other quick changes, like for example, changing the title color or the background of the title section, everything will be very easy and quick. All the changes are now active on all pages. This is great. Now, since I don't like what I did, I just need to go here, history, and voila, I just replaced the content with the one at the beginning of my editing session. So you get the idea of working with templates. Of course, as I was mentioning you, you can create all these pages like we did for the about page or for the home page. But in this case, they won't be linked by a template system. And I just wanted to show you how you can do so because it's a very, very useful feature in many cases. We will start by creating all the pages that we need. So we can uh, simply go here in the um, add new page or we can go to, to through the finder and we can uh, type in new page. Okay, new page. Okay, add new page, perfect. We will add a new page, we will call it, uh, this one we will be the marketing services page. So in my case, my example is the marketing services. Then we will add another page. Okay, let's publish this page, of course. Okay, now let's go here and let's create another page, which will be the, uh, in this case, this one will be the um, web design, for example. Okay, then we will publish and we will create also the last one that will be in our example, the, um, let's say the um, marketing page or the WordPress page, for example. Okay. Let's start now by creating a beautiful mega menu like this one. And I will show you how to create it because it's not so easy, but uh, if you follow step-by-step -step my tutorial, you will be able to create the same menu as I'm showing you right now. So let's go here into our header. And what we will need to do right now is to go in the menu and select the void, the item of the menu that we want to enable in on the mega menu. In this case, it will be the services 
item. I will need to go here and select drop down content. I will enable this and immediately you will notice that you will have the option here to add any content into this area. So we had a new drop down, which is basically a mega menu and you can go on and style it whatever you, however you want. In this case, to uh, be able to style everything uh, the best way, you will just need to publish the page right now. So we save all the changes. And I will suggest you the to open your header directly with the editor just for the header. So you go on your homepage, for example, you hover the mouse here on edit with Elementor and you click on header, or you can go by on theme builder, you go on header and you edit your header directly from here. So in this case, you will have only the header on your page and you will be able to set up everything easier. So let's go here back to our menu. We select the, the menu where we enable the drop down content, which is this one. And the first thing we need to do is to go on style when, when we are on our menu and we uh, decide to increase the distance from content. Now, if you see here, when you increase the distance from content, uh, all the elements will be uh, pushed down. And in general, I will just try to use the same distance as the header height. In this case, 20 pixel works well. If I want to see better what I'm doing, I can also apply a background to my container. So I select the container here, which is the main container of the background of the mega menu. I go to style and I add a background color. For example, this one, this will be my light background color. I publish and I go and have a preview. Okay, let's have a preview here. There's nothing inside here, so it's not working at the moment, but I can start by adding my widget. I click here on the plus icon. I click here on the left to right on the row. Perfect. And I will add inside here a simple icon list. Okay. Icon list, drag and drop here. I will make it in line. You see here, there's a quick option to make it in line and I will go to style and make it center. If it doesn't work, it means that I have to um, go to my okay, to my container here, and I can place it to the center by aligning content, just defining content to the center like this, perfect. Then I will need to go back to my item, to my main item here in the menu, and I will go here to the layout and make it full width. Now I will type in a pixel number, which will be 100, 1140, okay, and I will go to the uh, to the laptop view and I will make it 90%, so I will switch to percent here, and I will make it 90%, perfect. Now you have to be sure to select the item, the main item container. You go to the advanced tab and make sure to align self center. Once we publish, we go and preview changes. We can see that now the menu is correctly aligned. When I hover with services, I see all the items appearing like this. There is a problem here with the icon. As you can see here, normally I should have an icon here that indicates that there is a drop down content. If you, you do not see it as I'm not seeing it right now, you just need to go here in the item number three or direct, sorry, directly into the menu here. You go into the style settings, you scroll down until you find drop down indicator and you just need to assign a size to your drop down indicator. I will make it 15 pixels and I can also change the color of the icon if I want. I can also change the icon itself if I go back to the content and I can scroll down until I find drop down indicator and I can choose, for example, one of the other icons that are that are provided from Elementor here, provided by Elementor. And I can see that now I can see correctly the icon showing up when I hover and when uh, and when I see the menu in general, so that it tells me that there is a, a sub menu that, I, that is ready here, down here. Perfect. So now this is a basic uh, menu. As you can see, it works already fine. I should just increase a little bit the spacing, just uh, selecting here the main content, the widget, and I go to style and I go, sorry, to advanced and I increase the padding. Okay. So like this, there is more padding. I can publish and see that now the content looks well. Perfect. Okay. So now I can also add a background, uh, sorry, a border. Let's go here and add a border to the item num number three in my case. And I go to style, scroll down to border and add a simple border by applying a solid one, border width one pixels. And in my case, I will apply the border color number one. I can publish and go and preview it. Okay, it looks fine, perfect. This is a beautiful mega menu. As you can see now, you can begin to style all the content inside here. For example, I will use some elements right here going to content. I will insert here my 
marketing service, which will be my first one. Here I can insert my linear icons that I up uploaded in my previews, in my previews steps of the tutorial. Okay, marketing. Then we will have a link to the marketing page. I can decide to insert links in different ways. In general, if I, you start typing, you will see the page that you can link directly like this. But if you want to be sure that the link will consistently be updated automatically, even if you change the URL of the page, which sometimes can happen in a huge website, you can also use dynamic tags. You click here and you decide to use an internal URL, and then you can assign an internal URL dynamically. You, you should select content in my case, and here I can type in marketing. So I know that if I select here marketing, even if one day I decide to choose to change the, UR, UR, the URL of this page, it will be updated automatically inside here. So this is great, it's a best practice when you create menus and links throughout your website using Elementor. If you want to be sure that they consistently remain the same even if you update the URL of these links, you can use dynamic tags. So let's update also a secondary, a second option here, a second icon, and we will use it for the web design services. So I will type in inside here, internal URL here, I will go and select content and then type inside here web design. Okay, I select my web design page and then I have my last item here which will be my WordPress and I can select maybe a linear icon, something related to websites. Let me check here if there's something interesting. Maybe this one, perfect, insert. Okay, and this will be my internal URL. Click on the key, okay, content. Okay, and now this will be my WordPress page. Okay, WordPress, I don't know how this is called in English. Anyway, you can click here and uh, access all the information that you need. Now that we have created our items, we can change the titles. So the second one will be my web design service. And the third one will be my um, WordPress services. Okay, perfect. Beautiful. Now I can change also the look and feel, the style of my icons. I can go down here to icons. I can increase a little bit the dimensions, maybe 20 pixels. I can increase the spacing. Let me go about five pixels. Okay. I can center better the alignment and then I can also adjust the vertical positioning, but now it looks good. So I, I, will, I will leave it like this. I can also change the icon color if I want. And I can also change uh, something else into the content system here. No, this, uh, this is just like this, perfect. Let me go on style, icon again. I can change the hover color and I can change, of course, also the text style. So here I can ch change it to buttons and navigation or I can even increase a little bit more by choosing um, a small title. As you can see here, it works well. And I can change the color if I want. I can make it maybe a little bit more visible like this or I can make it like this and so on. So let me leave it like this. For example, I can change also the hover color and make it orange, okay? I can publish now and I will have my beautiful mega menu that will be linked to my pages. Now my pages are all empty because there, there's no content inside, but they're just ready to, to be connected to my mega menu, perfect. Let's see now a quick improvement that you can add to this mega menu. If you want, you can add this uh, small icon, uh, this small element here that makes you look like there is a kind of a pop-up like you, you can see here, which is a little bit more beautiful, to beauty, <laughs> a little bit more nice to see when you open your mega menu. How you can create this kind of design? There are many ways that you can use to achieve the same design, but the most easy one, it's like this. You just use a container, you go down here and you add a container, okay? and you place it right here before, oh, sorry, before the icon list, so container, okay, and you place it before the icon list, perfect. Now you will need to go to the main item element here to lay out and be sure to have a vertical alignment. The same here to the first container, let's go to vertical alignment. Now when you go to the first container, you just need to make it Okay, full width in this case, and you will have to assign a pixel value, 20 pixels here and 20 pixels down here. Okay, now you can place it, oh, now you can place it into the advanced tab. You will need to go to the positioning and you make it absolute, 
okay? And you decide now to make it to offset or horizontal offset. You go on percentage and you get, make type in 50%. Now you go to the vertical offset, offset and you make it negative until you see that it reaches the half of the of the element you see now it is at the half of the element okay and then to the z index you go 999 perfect now you assign a background color to this element which will be the same that you used for the main mega menu okay let's publish and, and have a quick preview of what's happening as you can see there is this quick element here which has no border right now, but you can just adjust it right now by going to the style settings of this container, add, adding a border. You go solid, you make it one pixels, okay? You assign a border color, which will be this one, the same as the other elements. And you will need now to go and rotate. So you go to the advanced tab and you rotate this element off uh, into the transform options and you rotate it 90, uh, 45 degrees, okay. Now, when you publish and go and have a quick preview, you will see that there is this element perfect here and it's ready to be uh, transformed now into uh, um, kind of a balloon uh, option. We just need to remove the, uh, the button margins, the button borders. So we just need to go here to the container, back to the styling options. We go back to the border options and we just need to remove the first, sorry, the second one and the third one. Oh, sorry. Let's go back to one. Unlinked values, the right and the bottom one will be zero. Let's publish and go and reload the page. Okay, and now that's it. We have a beautiful, beautiful menu like this. You can even increase a little bit more the distance from, uh, from the menu. So you select the menu, you go on style, and you can increase a little bit more the distance of the menu from the rest of the elements. Like this, for example, if you go back now here to the preview, you will see it like this, which works fine. I like it. You can even make it more distant, like this, okay? Maybe 40 pixels. Let's publish and see how it works. Okay, now it looks perfect. Voila, so this will be my menu. Okay, it's working very, very well. There is just one pixel here uh, that we can decrease. So we can go back to this container and into the advanced tab, sorry, into this container, okay. And under the advanced tab, we scroll down back here to the offset and we make it one pixel less. So maybe even two pixels. Let me check here, publish, reload page. Okay, no, two was too much, one pixel. Okay, perfect, publish. Let's reload the page and voila, now it's pixel perfect. Now, in order to optimize the menu from mobile, we just select the tablet view right here and we see that it is a little bit of a mess. So we can just go to the container here, to the one that we use to, to make the little, little icon uh, and we just, uh, how do you say, hide it in a responsive mode. So we go in responsive, mobile, mobile and tablet, we hide it simply. Then we can go to the main item here and we can make sure that this is full width, 100%. We go to the main container and we do the same, full width, 100%, perfect. And then we'll just need to, ha to have a quick preview and this is working fine right now. So you can see that everything looks good. Okay, perfect. And we can go and um, go and check out a little bit here um, regarding the alignment of the items right da down here. So we see that in mobile landscape it works fine, but in mobile here, let's have a quick preview and okay, perfect, works fine, okay. This is mobile, mobile here works fine and here it works fine, okay. The important thing is that everything still stays quickly accessible like this. Perfect. Anyway, we'll see later on during the tutorial how you can create a beautiful responsive menu completely customized by using all the power that of uh, Elementor pop-ups. For example, here, if I go now in the, in the quick view, if I preview the page into the mobile, I will see that I've created a beautiful slide-in menu like this one that you will be able to customize with whatever widget you want to add. And it's a beautiful way to have a different mobile menu and uh, to get rid of this uh, kind of limitating uh, menu that we have right here in the uh, right now. 
Now that we have created our mega menu with all the pages that will link to our single services, we will start by creating the main services page, which will be a page like this one, where we will be able to showcase uh, all our services basically. So let's create this. We will be creating the same header structure that we created before for the about page. So this one and we will add some services inside it. So let's start from scratch. We will go on the services page. We will edit with Elementor. Okay. And now on this page, we will drag and uh, we will insert our header. In this case, I already saved my header from the other page. So if you didn't do so already, you have to go and open your page where you have the header, for example, the about page, like in our case, you can go and edit with Elementor and you can save the header in your template library. So for example, I can choose to select this, um, this first container here. I right click uh, with the mouse and I can go and uh, select the save as template, this one. Once you sa save as template, you can give a name to your template and you save it. You will find it then, then when you click here in the folder icon into my templates, into this folder, you'll see your template. In my case, this is the title section pages. So I can uh, insert it, okay. I can click on don't apply. Okay. And voila, <laughs> this is my header. Beautiful. So I can just change my title here and I can insert something like uh, awesome services. And I can also use my, my style, my little touch, my little signature, signature. Okay. Like this awesome services. Okay. Here you can change the text, of course, here you can change it. And then we can publish and we will have a preview of our services page that will look something like this. Beautiful. You can see how this design, it's very modern and uh, very, um, how do you say, very artistic and creative at the same time. In my case, I will try to replicate this design here with uh, uh, three, three different services. Sorry for my pronunciation of the number three, because I pronounce it like, like the tree, like the nature tree, but is three. Okay. It's difficult for me as an, I'm Italian basically. So when I say three, okay, three is good. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> three boxes. Let's go here. Okay. Now we scroll down here. Let's get, uh, detach, okay, this structure panel, and we will use a grid. So we will click on the plus icon, we will select the grid, okay, and we will use a grid like the first one, and then we will change the settings here in the right side. So we will make it a grid with uh, three, uh, three, um, uh, how do you say, three boxes. So we will need three columns, we s scroll down here, we go and select select three, we make sure that uh, this uh, three columns looks good on tablet also and on mobile. Okay. They look good. Perfect. Go back to desktop. And now in the first one, we can add some content. For example, we will start by using a widget, which is the call to action widgets. And this is a widget that, that has an image, a title, a text content and a button, which is great. So I use this one and uh, it's perfect to showcase my services. I go and find the call to action, call to action, this one. Perfect. I can uh, basically can duplicate it. Okay. Perfect. I can go now to the in the first one. And I will just style it as the example. So I will go and add, and add an image here, which will be let me take yes, this one, it's great, perfect. And I will remove also this effect because I don't like it. I don't want it right now. So I go to the style tab, I scroll down, I go to the hover effects and I make them none. Okay. Now there is still an effect, which is a kind of an overlay here. And I can remove it by going here to the overlay color. Okay. And selecting a transparent color. Okay. Normally it will work, but Oh, yes, I can go to hover. And I can go here and go to transparent color. Perfect. And now it's deactivated. Perfect. Okay, now I just need to go back to the content. And I can go on by styling all the content, I can change the image resolution, I go to medium because I don't need it to be too big. I can go down here in the content section, I can change my title, I can type in for example, web design. Then I can go here and change the description if I want, I can also change the tag the HTML tag, this is good uh, h2 or h3. It's, uh, it's good h3. And then here, I can go to uh, change the text. For example, I will link here to 
my web design page. So I will go down, I can choose to type in web design and link right here, but I can also go to dynamic tags, internal URL, and the assigned URL dynamically. This is good if you plan to update frequently all your website structure. So in some cases, it's a good best practice to link pages like this because they will be updated if you decide to change the URLs in the future. But anyway, they will work in both ways. So let's do whatever it's uh, the best way for you. We'll go now here in style. We change all the elements right here. We can change padding, which we can change the image width, the image height, and so on. We can change, we can choose to have a specific height for the image. For example, uh, let's say 200 pixels, okay? And, and so we will apply the same specific height also to the other boxes. Then we go to the content tab here and we can change the title typography. We can assign, for example, the S titles, which look looks good. We can change also, also the description typography and we will use the big paragraph, for example, and we can change the colors and, and so on. I will change here just the background color. Let me see if there is a, a different color, which will be this one, yes, why not? And in the button, I will do the same right here. I will go inside here, I will change the text color. Unfortunately, as you can see here, the button is not taking the, the global styling in this case, and so I will need to style it uh, separately. I'll go and change the text color to this one, background color will be the orange color, and then uh, I will be able to remove the border. If I want to remove it, I just go here and make it to zero, perfect. If I want to change the hover settings, I can go on hover and make it this color in hovering, okay? And then I can go on by adding some, oh, let me check here, hover effects. Yes, I just, I just removed them, okay. In the box settings, I can also, no, that was not in the box settings, but uh, in the advanced tab, I can also add a border if I want. I click on border, I can choose to have a solid border. I can make it one pixel, for example, and I can go here and choose the border color, which will be this one, okay. Now it's a little bit weird because if I publish and go and have a preview of the page, I'll see that there is a, some spacing here which sh should not be here. So let me check why this is happening. We'll go into the edit, okay. Okay, that's weird. We can go and assign a background color to avoid this, this, uh, this <laughs> of course, and try to give it here the same background color which will be this one. Okay, so that now it has disappeared because we have assigned the background color to the whole widget in this case. Okay, perfect. So now this is working fine. Into the style option, I just wanted to check if the, there was the option to add, um, to add a border. No, there's no option to have a border here. That's weird. Content. Content, no, there's no option to add a border. So that's the only solution, okay, perfect. And then we can copy and paste all the stylings to the other boxes if you want. So let's go, um, let's make a one one last thing. We will have, we will add um, a subtle hover animation. So we select our widget in this case, we go to the advanced tab, we go to the transform, and we decide to have a scale option here, okay? We will scale, we will start from one and we will, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, I will go to on hover here, scale, and I will go and make it 1.05. Uh, okay, as you can see now, this is acting like this. Okay, 1.05 and it works fine. And now we are ready to copy and paste these styles. So right click of the mouse, copy, and then here, paste style, which is common shift V, okay. Perfect, it works fine. And here we select this one, Command Shift V, and these styles are copied, perfect. Now we just need to go inside the other two boxes and uh, add some images. I will go with this one and with the last one here. Uh, I, If you didn't notice, I love New York. <laughs> I will put this one, okay, perfect. It looks fine, looks great. There is just um, an, a little bit of an, uh, an error. You see here the hover effect has, uh, has remained, which is kind of cool because uh, with the with the transformation process, it's, uh, it gives an animation effect, which is nice. But we can also, of course, get rid of it by going to the advanced tab, uh, sorry, by going to the content tab, to the style tab, scrolling down to the hover effects and decide to re-click on none. Okay, that was just a caching problem, you see? So if I publish and reload the page, normally I won't see the, okay, that's perfect, okay. 
the effect now it's perfectly removed. Now we can go and change the heading here and I can put on, for example, WordPress and marketing right here. Okay, then I can go and change the, um, the text and the link here. Okay, I can go and change the link in the content section. Okay, link would be my um, uh, WordPress page. In this case, I assign it re really quickly like this. I don't use the dynamic link and find out more. Okay, find out more here. The last one content. This is my marketing marketing link. Perfect. Let's go and publish. Now, if you want also to link other parts of the box, you can choose to add a link also to the whole box. You see here, you can choose, in this case, I have applied the link only to the button, but if you want, you can apply the link to the whole box. So you can do the same for the other widgets. You go on content, link, whole box. And this one, content, link, whole box. Okay, so if someone clicks on the image, on the text, or whatever they click in the box, or wherever they click there, they will be redirected to the link. Okay, so let's see the page now. We will reload it. It looks fine. If you want, you can also have an, a little overlapping here of the elements, like I did here in this page. If you want to obtain so, it's a really, really quick option. You just go to the container here. You can call it services. And, uh, and then you can call this one title, of course. In the services container, you can just assign a negative margin into the advanced tab, you unlink values, and to the top margin, you go minus 20, for example, minus 20, or even a little bit more, minus 40, and you publish, we can go and have a preview right here, and voila, there is a little bit of an overlap in here. That looks good, it's perfect, and then when you click on the different tabs, you will be redirected to the pages. We just need to add some bottom padding, so we reselect the services container, and we go and unlink values, and we add a 100 pixel bottom padding. Let's publish, let's reload the page here. Now it looks perfect, okay. That's great. So now when I click on the different services, I will go in my pages that I've already linked and created, of course, which are the same pages that are linked here in my mega menu. So I can go here and click on different pages and I will be redirected to them. Now I will start by creating the first one, which will be my marketing page, and then I will go on with the others. But um, to be more clear in my website structure, I can go into the dashboard now, I can go on pages, and if I want, I can assign a, um, a structure like this. I can go into the services page, like for example, the marketing, the WordPress, and the web design pages, and I can assign uh, as a parent page the main services page so that I can uh, keep everything well organized and also later on structure everything if I want to using templates. I will show you a really complex uh, and at the same time powerful option that you can use when you want to uh, how do you say, manage your website content professionally. So now here there is a page that I can draft, okay? Now I can just go in, inside, for example, the marketing page, and I will see that from the uh, WordPress editor, I have an option which is page attributes. And here, if you click on page attributes, you see that you can assign a parent page. In this case, I will assign the services page as a parent, okay? And I can click on update. When I go back to my pages here, in the dashboard, I see now that the marketing page is a child page of services. So this is a kind of a best practice to keep everything well organized. I can do the same also with the other pages, with the web design page and with the WordPress page, for example, and I can go and uh, assign them as a child pages of the services one. To do so, I don't need to click inside the page, but I, I can also click just on a quick edit right here when I hover with the mouse, and I can assign a parent page, you see? Parent page, I go on services, and I update. I'll do the same with the WordPress one, I quick edit, parent page, it will be the services page. Update, and now when I reload the page, I will see that all these pages will be child pages of services. Okay, so now, what was the point when I was telling you that uh, you could also assign links uh, in a more professional way? That was the point, because now if I uh, if I check here the link that I have assigned into the content editor, this is a dynamic link, you see, which is called with the internal, internal URL. The other ones are just plain links that I've just uh, inserted insert like this. What happens now? 
this happens. If I go and visit the page and I click on the first one, which is a dynamic link, it has taken in, in, into consideration the fact that now these pages are assigned as child pages of the services one. So the URL has changed. And so if I click here, the, this page is perfectly assigned as the services page. You see, the, ur the URL has updated automatically. But the others are still going to send me to the old pages. So you can see the difference now because uh, there's no 404 page. We will do it at the end of the tutorial. But you'll see that the, the URL here, here has not been updated, of course. So if I go here, now I will just change the URL. I will go into dynamic tags, internal URL, and I will assign it with a content URL and I will assign in this case my WordPress page, which will be a child page of the services page, perfect. I'll go and do the same here with the marketing page, content, assign dynamic link, internal URL, okay. So in this way, if uh, I decide to change URLs uh, throughout my website when I'm creating my website um, or even when I'm updating some content, I want to be, um, I won't have to deal with this because they will all be automatically updated. Now all the links are automatically updated. I will need to check here. As in these links, I already used the dynamic link. They are all updated automatically. So you see, if I click here, for example, the pages is now are now considered as child of the services page as uh, with the URL structure. Okay, so now this was a bit uh, technical, but uh, uh, I guess you, you get the idea. And so now we are Create, we have created correctly our services page and we just need to go and create the single um, services pages. To do so, we will use a structure which will be based on templates and this we will speed up our working process because we will automatically assign this kind of header to all these pages and we will automatically assign also the structure of the content. So let's go and see how we can do so. We can just go into the uh, Elementor theme builder in this case and we will create a new template for our pages, for our services pages. We go and click on add new. We click on the single page template, which will be this one, okay? And now in the single page template, we go and click on the X icon, okay? We close here and we simply assign the content. Now we go and add a template. We go into my templates and we assign the title section. We insert and we click on don't apply, okay? And now we have to assign dynamically taken elements. The first one will be the simple uh, title, but we will change it a little bit. We go and click on dynamic tags right here. You see in this icon here, it's very important. We click on it and we assign the post title, okay? To have a, a quick preview of the element that we want to, uh, to preview, we can go here in the gear icon, in the settings of the page. We can change the name it, and we can call it, for example, uh, services template, okay? And then we can go into the preview settings and choose which page we want to preview during the creation of this template. In this case, we can preview, for example, the marketing page, okay? The service marketing, I can apply and all my dynamic links will pull out the content from the marketing page. In this case, the title, as you can see here, if I go and edit, will be marketing, and I can add some content before and after the title. If I add some content before, this will be taken in consideration before the title, so it will be, we love, for example, marketing, and then space projects, you see? So in this case, we love marketing projects, and when someone will, look in this page, you will see dynamically all this kind of content. We love marketing projects, for example. And then here about our team, we change the title. We also here, we will assign a dynamic tag, but we'll use the same title in this case. And uh, we will just go and uh, update here the content and we will add before our marketing services. Okay. And we can also change the, um, how do you say the, um, we can add, for example, a tag here, this one, which is also used throughout my website in my example. So you see here, I have a, I add, I've added a first tag, an E tag, and I closed the, the tag here. And you can see here, the text is now italic. Perfect, our marketing services. And down here, you can link the excerpt. So we can go and click and use the post excerpt, okay? Now it's empty, so nothing shows up. And now down here, it's very important to add um, another content, which will be added by a folder here. I will 
at my main padded section, which is a simple container with some padding applied. Okay, I can remove the top padding if I want. I can go to the advanced tab, and in my case, I will make the top padding to zero and I will leave the bottom padding to 100, okay? And down here, I can insert the post content. So it will, it will be this content here, post content, perfect. Okay, uh, let me check if I can change it a little bit here. Mm, okay, I will leave it like this. Inside here, the layout will be boxed, okay? Let's click on, I can also choose full width. Let me, let me check the, yes. Maybe in this case, it will be better to use full width. And let's click on publish. Now it will ask me where do I want to display my template. This is very important. I will go and select direct child off and I will select here my services page. Okay, services. Now I click save and close, okay. And this template will be automatically assigned to my services pages, to all the child pages of the services page. So I will go now into my dashboard, okay. I will go and find the pages, for example, the web design page, and I can go and view it. Okay, and as you can see, the template, it's already automatically assigned, which is great. I can go inside the page or edit with Elementor in this case, and I can uh, insert my content right inside here if I want. But most important thing now, it's also to add an excerpt. To do so, we have to go to the gear page settings here and insert an excerpt. For example, choose us and your clients will choose you. Okay, now if I publish and reload the page, I will see that the excerpt will be output here. Choose us and your clients will choose you. Perfect. <laughs> and uh, it's taken dynamically from, from the template. And now I can go and add some content right inside here. For example, I can use a Flexbox, Flexbox container. I can use it like this. I can add some content right inside here. For example, uh, an icon. Let's choose an icon. Okay, this one. Let's leave it styling to the left side of the page. We change the content. I use my linear icons. I use, for example, this <laughs> icon here and I can go down and change the color, for example, okay? And I can go and add some content. So for example, a heading and then, okay. Marketing, our great web design team, our great web design team for you. And then we can add some content down here, for example, some text and so on. Let's say that it's like this. Okay, perfect. And then we, call, we can also add, of course, a call to action, some images, uh, some portfolio works and so on. We can also change the, um, the layout of this container. In this case, we can change it, for example, make it a little bit more centered by changing the width of the content. Okay. And then we can simply click here and change it to contact us. And I can go and link it to the contact us page. Post your, no, not post URL, but in this case, which will be an internal URL. And this will be the con content. This will be the contact page. Okay. Okay, let's publish now. And uh, I can also save this as a, as a default template, save, uh, as a template, save it as a template. It will be services content, okay, for example, so that I don't have to recreate it again and again when I create also the other services pages. And then now if I go and preview the page, this will be my services page where I describe my services content. Of course, uh, here you can add any kind of content you want and it will be shown right here. Now, if I go and visit all the other services pages, for example, the marketing page, you'll see that the title will be automatically updated, the WordPress page the same. Be careful here to see that in the, um, in the services pages, to, in order for this template to work uh, fine, you will need to check that in these pages, the option, okay, sorry, I, you need to edit with Elementor, okay. And you will need to check here that the option in the, in the settings of the page, it's a page layout default or theme. They will bo both work fine. In some cases, you will need to switch to, to theme, but in my case, with the default one, it's working fine. 
just uh, in order to tell you if something don't do not show up try to set up to, to try to change this setup here but of course you don't you do not need to choose canvas or full width you just need to go with theme or default and you will see that all the template will look fine okay here we are in our wordpress services and choose us and your clients <laughs> now in this way we can change the description here we can make it like for example we build great websites for great businesses okay we build great websites for great businesses publish when we uh, when we want to add some content here we can use the um, save the template in this case which will be in my templates the services content which is this one i click on insert i click on don't apply and voila, I have all my content here. I can change simply the icon in my case. For example, I will use the computer icon in this case, which is this one. I can insert here a different kind of uh, text. Our WordPress team team is here for you. Contact us, voila, publish page. Go and have a preview. And this will be our WordPress services page, which is linked here. Then we have our last page, which is the marketing page. We go and add it with Elementor, okay. Okay, perfect. I can add here an excerpt. So let's go here, excerpt, marketing services. We Let's go and click here in the folder, my templates. I have already my services content template pre-saved. Do not apply. And then right here, I will just change the icon and use this one, insert. Let's change here our marketing theme, our marketing team, it's ready for you. Okay, publish. Perfect, so now you get the idea, you can, uh, you can create beautiful pages like this and they will all look the same in terms of structure because they have, a, um, they have a global template. I click on marketing, I click on web design, I click on WordPress and so on. Now what happens if I want to change colors of the, or structure of the title of this page of the template, I can simply go inside Elementor Theme Builder and I can go and choose to edit the services template. I can preview it from here. I can click on edit. Let's say that I want to get rid, for example, of the um, of this structure or I want to change it a little bit. I can go right here and I can change, for example, the colors or the um, Yes, let's say the colors of this uh, of this uh, element right here. Or even I can add an animation. So let's select the first container. I can click on the advanced tab. I can go on motion effects. Let's say I want an entrance animation and I want the all the header uh, to fade in uh, like this. Or maybe to fade in from up like this. Or even uh, fade in from down like this. Voila. Uh, this looks good. Let's make it a little bit more uh, fast. Okay, like this, it's okay. And I can also, I can even apply a delay, but in my case, I don't want to apply it. And uh, okay, this looks fine. I can also go into the in, into the template single page settings. I can go to the style part and I can assign a background type if I want. I can go on classic, for example, and see if it will work fine by assigning a, a different kind of background. Let's say this one. That's very interesting. You see, it changes completely all the look and feel all the of the services pages. Go and see now all the services pages. So we'll go and preview the website, go to the services pages, let's say the marketing one, and voila, you see, they, they are all being updated at once. So if I go here to the WordPress page, it will be updated like this. The web design page, it's updated like this, perfect. Now I can also, of course, change the background color here of the tilt section, so I go here. I go to the style tab, I can go back to the sh shape di divider and I can assign a color here, which will be maybe the same so that it will look more uniform. Go here, okay, and I can assign the same color here, publish. And you see here, beautiful, looks great. This looks very, very nice, perfect. Now you just learn how to use the very advanced feature of the template system provided by the theme builder of Elementor Pro which is great. So we are now ready to create a very, very important page of your website, which is the contact page. I'll show you how to configure a contact form using the form widget provided by Elementor Pro, and I will guide you step by step to create a very advanced form. We will learn how to create a multiple step form and how to set up very advanced functionalities like the upload field, 
checkboxes, radio buttons, HTML, anti-spam, and many other fields that you can use when you set up your Elementor 4. So now let's start. Now let's create together a very, very important page of your website, which will be the contact us page. You can decide to create any kind of contact page because there, there are many, many ways that you can structure this page. But let's see now how to start. We go to the contact us page that we already created at the beginning of the tutorial. And uh, this should be an empty page where you already have activated Elementor on it. So if we click on edit page, we will see that Elementor is already active. We click on edit with Elementor. And now from this page, we will start by adding some content. I can also, if I want, I can uh, replicate the same structure of all the other internal pages of my website. So if I go and visit my website right now, I have this heading structure for all my internal pages for the about page, for the services pages, for the uh, single service page and so on. And if I want, I can also use the same structure. So I go to the contact us page and I can add the same structure. To do so, I can click on the folder and I can go to my templates, I can go to title section, I can insert and I can don't apply. <laughs> I click on don't apply and voila. Here I change it to contact us. Contact us now and I can add here the, <clears throat> the italic tag. Okay, as I am Italian, <laughs> I love to add italic tags. <laughs> okay. Contact us now. Perfect. Here you can add your heading text and your, uh, and your paragraph here. We will be delighted to talk uh, about your projects. Okay, so this is my header. I can change the background color to give it a, a look and feel a little bit different from the other pages. And I can even change the whole background of the page. So let's go to the, uh, to the page settings here, right up here. Let's go to the uh, style tab and let's change the background type. We'll go and assign a color that will be a little bit more um, strong for example we will use the dark color for for the whole page and we can change right here the elements so let's click on the first container which contains the title we go to the style tab and we change the border the shape divider colors we assign a dark color up and a dark color to the bottom and uh, to the background of the shape divider of the uh, to the background here we can simply change the color and we can use this one, for example, or let's say white. Okay, <laughs> this is a little bit weird. Let's see if it works better with this color. Okay, this is great. We can change here the color in the style tab and we can make it dark. Same thing here, style tab, and let's make it dark. Same thing here, style tab, and let's make it dark. Perfect. Now we can go down here to the content and we can drag inside all the uh, settings that we will need to create a beautiful contact page. We'll start by adding uh, three boxes. So we will, we will use maybe here a, con um, a grid, okay? Divided into three columns, this one, okay? In the first one, we will add the widget, icon widget, okay, icon box. So three icon boxes, let's duplicate them, duplicate, voila. And in the first icon box, we will add, um, let's say, the icon, which will be the phone icon. So we will add our phone number, our business phone number. Let's scroll down here. There it is. This will be our phone number. And uh, let's change the colors so that we can see better what we are doing. Let's go on style, icon. And we will have here a white color. Same thing, right? inside the title, or oh, we can also assign a background color to the whole box, why not? And um, yeah, but anyway, I will I will need to have a, um, a really, really clear color. So let's go to the content color. We will assign a light color right here, a white, and also to the text color, we will assign maybe this one. Okay, perfect. Now I will go to the advanced tab and add some padding, let's say 30. I will change the style of the title going to content uh, typography i will assign an s title and uh, i will just type into the content phone okay or ring us you say ring us and you still say this ring us or call us maybe like this call us here you insert your phone number voila and then you can also change the styling of the of the number. If you want, just go into content, 
go into typography here, we can use the big paragraph. So it will be a little bit more like this. So we can change also the spacing. If we go to the box icon spacing, you see, you can put it to zero content spacing, you can put it to zero. Now, if you're happy with the content, uh, now I'm still, I still wanted to add maybe some border. I can go here and play again with borders, clicking on advanced tab, scrolling down to the border and have a solid border. I can apply the border everywhere or can I, I, can, I can make it to zero unlinked values and just use a bottom border, for example, and assign um, a border number two. Wow, this looks good. Let's click on copy and paste styles. Okay, paste styles. Okay, perfect. We will use the two other boxes to add some more content. This will be, for example, the map icon. Let's scroll down to see if in our icons there is a map icon. I guess there is. Yes, this one. Perfect. Insert uh, address, call us, or visit us, we will see. Visit us. And here we can. Uh, we can just uh, Great Road New York. Okay. And then we can go here and add some a last icon. This will be, for example, our email. Okay, let's see if there is an email here. An email icon. This will be, let's say, this one. Okay. Okay, and here you can add your email address. Okay, perfect. Let's see now if we publish the page and go and have a preview. <clears throat> this looks already good. Okay, this is a contact us page. Our an entire team at your disposal, contact us now. We will be delighted to talk about your projects. Call us, visit us, write us. Now, down, uh, down here, we can add a, um, another container which will contain the actual contact form. So we will use uh, an up to down, so a, a column direction container, which is this one. And um, we will add uh, con some content. The first content will be a heading. So we will click on heading. This is just an example that you can take to, to see if it fits well for your business and uh, and apply it to you, of course, to your website. We go in the, into the padding section, we go and assign some top and some bottom padding, perfect. Okay, and then down here, we just need to change, of course, the text color, which will be a white color. And uh, we will add now some beautiful, beautiful, a beautiful contact form. Okay, so now we will be able to go in the plus icon here and type in form. Okay, this will be our form. We drag and drop the form below the title and voila, we added our form to the page. Now, if we go back to the section, to the container, to the main container, we will be able also to change the dimensioning, the width of the container, in my case, 600 and uh, let's say 620, why not? Okay, so that the form will be a little bit smaller and centered. And then I can go to the form and make a little bit of styling. So I select the form widget, I go to the style, and I scroll down and change the color of the labels. As you can see here, they are a little bit dark, so I can't see it, I can't see them. Now I see them correctly, perfect. I can also increase the distance be between all the elements, all the fields, in this case I will put 20 pixels, and I will increase a little bit the spacing between the label and the input. Okay, perfect. Okay, now let's continue styling a little bit uh, things. As you can see here, the button has a white text, but this is not our global text. So we go on style tab, we go on buttons, and we see that we can get rid of the text color, of the white color that is here. Okay, this is a, an element or bug. We also go on hover and we remove the white color here. Okay, so that everything looks fine right now. Perfect. We go back to the content. Okay and uh, I can give a different name to my form if I want to do so. In my case, I will leave it like this. And uh, I will be able also to see that there are three standard fields, which are the name, email, and message field. If I go and open them, I may see that there is a content and an advanced tab, which will be there for any field of my form. And in the content tab, I can change also the type of field that I'm going to collect. In, the, in this case, there is a text field, which is perfect for a short text, like last name, first name, and so on. 
And then I got also here the second field, which is an email field. And in this case, the email field is perfect because it will validate the email address of the user. So it's important to use the email field when we want to collect an email address in this case. Then we will have a message field and so on. We will be able now to go quickly through all the other kind of fields that you can use when you create forms with Elementor. And then we will make some tests and see how they will work. Before diving into the different kind of content that we can add to our form, we can see that we can also hide or show labels like this. And it will depend in the complexity and on the structure of your form, of course. In some cases, it's best to leave the labels enabled. And you can also add the required mark. If you add it, you can see that in the required fields, it will appear this required mark. And you can also go back to the styling tab and change the color of the required mark under label and mark color. You can go here and change the color, for example, to accent number one in this case, so that the required mark is now orange. Okay, if you want to obtain a different layout, you can also go inside each element and you will find always a column width option, which is quite interesting and you can change it. For example, here I can make the first field, the name field 50%. I can go to the second field and make it 50% too, and it will be automatically aligned like this. So in some cases, it can be useful if you want to obtain a different layout for your fields. And you can also change the field look in between based on the, the single device. So for example, if you want the fields to be again 100% on tablet, tablet, you go here and you place the 100% or tablet and so on. So this is a quite, a, quite a, a good solution to know if you want to create very highly customized field also from a layout point of view. And we will see that we can also add some more items. We click on add item and let's have a quick look on all the other kind of data that we can use in our form. We already saw quickly the text field, the email field and the text area field. And we can use also URL if you want to collect any kind of URL, the website of the user and so on. We can use the tell option, of course, to collect telephone numbers. We can use the radio, which is great to collect uh, one option. For example, if you want to uh, know which kind of service the user is uh, contacting you for, choose service. Okay, down here you can add some multiple options in each row. For example, uh, web design. Let's zoom a little bit. Okay, zoom. Web design, WordPress, and marketing. And then you will see that here the options will be displayed like this. You can also make them required if you want, and you can also make them inline if you prefer to show them like this. Okay, so this is great and it gives you kind of an idea of the of the flexibility of the Elementor form. So now here, the radio can be also transformed into other kind of fields. We see that we have a select, a checkbox and an acceptance field. If we switch the radio field to a select field, it will change like this and all the options that we insert into the different rows down here will become a simple drop down and the user will be able to choose from a, drop, from a drop down. If we switch the select field to the checkbox, you will see that all the options will become checkboxes and you can, the user will be able to select multiple ones. You see, in, in fact, if you use the radio, the user will be able to select only one at a time. You see, you cannot select multiple options. While if you use the checkbox, you can do so. Keep in mind here that there is a huge bug that I don't know why Elementor did not uh, resolve yet, is that in the checkbox field, you cannot make it mandatory. You cannot make it required. You can only make required the radio and the select uh, field, like in this case, for example, you see that there is this required settings, but if you do select checkbox, I don't know why, you cannot leave it, make it required. You can do so only by adding some cost custom code, which is kind of weird. If you need to add an acceptance field, you can select the acceptance field, which will be a single checkbox line, you see here, and uh, this won't work if you use multiple lines, you see? If I try to use multiple lines, it will all stay in a single line, okay. This is great if you want to have a single field to uh, create an acceptance field for privacy policy or any other kind of data management. So for example, I accept, if I want to add a link, for example, I can go here and use simple HTML to add a simple link. A target blank. This will make my page open into a new tab. Okay, and then I can insert here my link. href, here I will insert my link. Let's say that this is the link of my privacy policy. I will need also to add, add the HTTPS, uh, okay, like this, perfect. And then I will close the tag here with the 
closing of the link, okay? And this will be my single link. You see, now the link is now here active. If I click here, it will be redirecting me to my privacy policy page. Okay, so basically this is uh, an acceptance field and you can also make it required. In some cases, it can be useful to make it pre-checked, but in my case, no, and I can leave it like this. Perfect, so you kind of get the idea here or of the flexibility of all the kind of different fields that you have when you choose to create a form with Elementor widget. In this case, you can also go on by using the number. The difference between the number and the telephone is that the number has specific data for only simple numbers. For example, if I select this, I see that I can use a minimum and maximum value, and I can also have this required or not. And there can be also a placeholder there. Then we can uh, use this uh, date and time fields if we need to collect date and time from our users. For example, they need to specify date and time in which we will be able to contact them, for example, or so on. We can also use this very, very powerful field, which is the file upload. You can use this uh, if you want uh, your user to be able to upload files to your website or to your emails. In this case, in the file upload field, you can choose if you want, to, of course, to make it required or not. You can change label and you can change how this file will reach you. So how the user will share with you the file. In the first option here is email with link. This means that you will receive the email notification of the form. And in the email notification, there will be a link to the file that will be uploaded to your website. You can also choose not to upload the file to your website, but just to receive, receive the file through an attachment to your email and this won't be saved, uh, of course, on your website, and you can use uh, both of them. So you can receive the email as a, the file as an attachment to your email, and also as a link that will be just uh, pointing to your server, to your computer, where the file, to your computer, to your website, where the file will be stored. So let me show you how it will work. I will leave, the, uh, I will leave on both, and I will leave this field enabled. Okay, I will also use a maximum file size, let's say for megabytes, and I can choose also the allowed file type. For example, I can choose only PDF and the PNG files, let's say like this. And then I can also uh, use the multiple files if I want the user to be able to uh, upload more than one file. In my case, I will just leave one file. I, I can go on now and explore all the other kind of type of, um, of inputs that we can use in the form. And we have the password field, which is kind of, uh, um, you do not use it anyway, but sometimes you, you have to create some forms to let the user, for example, create uh, an account. And in this case, it would be useful. And uh, so it's, it's not a, a very common field, this one. You have also the HTML field that you can use to insert some custom HTML if you need to do so. And you will be able to style the content differently by using the style tab. For example, here I see that I cannot read the content of this field. I can change it simply here, the color, and I will be able to see it then then down here. It's uh, kind of a simple and uh, useful and flexible field if you want also to add some content between elements, uh, also to insert some more explanations. For example, here you can use the custom HTML field if you want to add some more uh, information about the, the file upload, for example. Custom HTML, instead of writing this, you can write, uh, you can upload only five megabyte files and only PNG and PDFs. Okay, perfect. So you can basically add some explanations into your content right here. And uh, when I go and place it above, voila, it will be there, or if, uh, I can even place it down here, it's perfect. And then you can use it whatever you want. You can also add some more items. As you can see down here, you have an hidden field, which is uh, very useful in some cases, is in some advanced cases. You can, for example, here go to the advanced tab and use the default value to assign a default value to this field, which is of course hidden. So the end user won't see it, but you will be able to see it. For example, if you are making this form appearing only in pages where, where there are logged in users, you can decide to assign to this field some user info. For example, you can go here and decide to, to assign the user bio or the user last name and first name or the user name or the user, some user metadata, like for example, a meta key that you created, a uh, custom meta key and so on. So you can basically use this field as a jolly field to retrieve any kind of data that are connected to your form. And this, this is a very, very advanced field that in some cases will let you create very advanced custom forms with Elementor. So now we will see the last fields, which are all about anti-spam. 
the recaptcha the recaptcha version 3 version 3 and the honeypot the honeypot is very simple once you add it it's invisible and it will add a simple anti spam option that will help you um, how do you say avoid receiving spam uh, messages so this is great if you want to get even more stronger with uh, anti spam you can enable recaptcha by doing so uh, but to do so you have to go to elementor settings integrations and to insert your secret and client key of uh, Google reCAPTCHA directly into the settings of Elementor. It's very easy and straightforward. Then we can also use to add, we can also add the last one, which is the step field. And the step field, once you add it to your form, it will create a multi-step form. This is great. So let's see how they work. And uh, in this case, once you add your step, we can also change the label and uh, we can call it, for example, Two, step number two and uh, you can see here the step will be called the number two okay and then we can go in the first item that has appeared here because once you add the the second step it will it will automatically add the first step of course and it's it will be placed up here so we go in the first step and we can name it first or uh, one <laughs> for example you can also add more than two steps if you want to add, you can add three or four and but just by simple going here and adding some more steps like this step and so on in this case you see one two and three and so on let's get rid of this one i just want a two step forms form and i can place this second step for example uh next uh, uh after the email okay so the user will see firstly the email and the email address the name and the email address and then by clicking on next the user will be redirected to the next step. If you want to have a quick preview on how the step will look, you just need to go to the uh, preview steps and make them not required so that you can easily go and click on next and see all the content of the next step, you see? This is quite a, an interesting way to uh, to create multi-step forms. You can even go and uh, customize even further all the content of the section of the step session. Let's go and see how to do so. So once you have decided uh, which content goes in which step, like we saw here, we just need to drag and drop the um, the step item where you want, in this case, after the email, uh, we can go scrolling down and go to the step settings. Down here, you can choose if you want number and text, like in this case, if you want a simple progress bar, which is not visible right now, but we can just style it later on. You can assign only numbers, you can go with only icons, you can insert some text and just leave the text. You can choose none, so let's, uh, let's uh, leave it just uh, to the button, you see, the step, multi-step like this, or you can use icon and text. So these are all the options that you have to uh, style all the content of the multi-step form. And then we can also, let's say that we want to leave a progress bar. In this case, we can go to the style tab and we can style everything about the multi-steps. We just need to go to the step section we scroll down, we assign a different kind of color, for example, the accent color. We can assign a border radius if you want. We can assign a height, a different height. We can assign different background color for the top bar, maybe this one, or even something different like this one. And then we can go on by styling also the typography percentage styling, for example, this one. We can also style the color and so on. In this case, maybe it would be good to leave it like this or like this, perfect, and so on. So this is a quite nice way to display the multi-step form. We can also go back to the content and choose another kind of uh, multi-step if we want to go to the step settings and use instead of a progress bar, the icon and text, for example. And we can go to the step style, we can scroll down here, we can go to the steps and we can select, for example, a different typography, different colors. Let's say that we want this as a primary color and let's say that the active one will be this one and the completed one will be this one, for example. Then we can also increase the div div divider width, okay? The divider gap, okay? And we can change the icon size, spacing and typography and so on. We can also change the content by going back to the content and by selecting all the form fields that we want to change. The one, for example, here the content in the icon library can be different. If we want, you can also change it like this, for example, and insert, and we can then go to the second one, and which will be the number two, and we can choose a different icon here. And we can choose, for example, uh, let's say this one. Okay, insert. So now maybe we want to make them more visible. We go back to the styling and so on. So you get the idea here. It's very flexible and easy to uh, customize. 
okay let's increase a little bit the spi spacing the icon size a little bit bigger and the padding a little bit bigger like this per perfect let's now publish and have a quick preview of our form it will look like this this is beautiful it's a simple multi-step form and when we click on next we will be in the next step which is this one we can click easily on previews okay next and previews perfect you can change the next and previous button fields you can go just in the buttons and scroll down here and uh, change uh, for example like this continue and then instead of previews we can have back so here we have the previews we can have for example go back like this we can also change the send button here and we can make it let's go for example now, what happens once the user will fill the form? You will receive an email notifications and you can also apply many other very, very advanced settings. Let's go where you can do so. We can just go in the form content. We select the form, we go to content and we find that there is an actions after submit area. This is very, very important. As you can see here, we have already selected the collect submissions and the email notification. And if we get rid of this and this, we see that we can just click on the plus icon and see all the actions that we have at our disposal after the form submission. Okay, the first one is the collect submissions and I invite you to enable it. This is very important because if you go back to your website now into the Elementor settings, you see the submissions item here, you click on it. And basically here you will be able to store all the informations that users will be sending you when they will fill out your forms. And this will be a great solution to keep track of all the submissions of your forms. So this is a best practice to do so, but keep in mind that you have only this uh, kind of option if you are using an Elementor advanced or higher plans. Let's go back here to our actions after submit and we will also be able to receive an email notifications by selecting the email option. In this way, we will receive an email notification each time there will be a form submission. Let's scroll down and we will see that there is this email option that has appeared right now. We can open it. We can change here the email address that we want to use to receive this kind of notifications. I will leave this one in my case. And I can also change here the subject of the email. For example, new message. And then I can scroll down here. This shortcode means that the, I will receive in my notification message all the fields that are contained into the form. This is so very important to leave it like this. I can scroll down and I can choose here the from email. I will use the same email. So this will be my from email address. Then I can go and change the from name. Okay. I can choose also the reply to. If you do not see nothing here, don't worry because we just need to save and reload the page. We will do it uh, now. Here we can also insert some other emails that will receive the notifications and here some other hidden emails that will receive the notification. And then uh, we have the metadata here. We can also choose to give credit to Elementor if you want. In my case, I will get rid of this. You can also collect date and time of the form submission, the page where the form was submitted from, the user agent and the remote IP. The user agent is a bunch of information about the browser and the software that the user is using to submit your form. And then the remote IP address is the address of the user. You can leave the send as HTML, which will be uh, allowing you also to use some HTML inside here if you want to do so. And then we can also simply publish, reload the page. Okay. And once we go back to the, uh, to the form widget, we select the form widget, we scroll down, we go to the actions after submit, we go to the email, okay? When we scroll down here, we will see that the reply to email will be correctly uh, visible and we, will can be, and we will be able to assign the email field. In this way, we will be able to reply directly to the user that submitted the form. So email field is perfect like this. Okay, let's go and make a quick test now. We will publish and go and preview our contact form page. Okay, it looks good. Let's fill out all the form. Okay, continue. And here we have the message. And here we can upload the file. It will be a PDF in my case. Okay, and I will click on let's go. Perfect. You have here the uh, your submission was successful, but we can't see it very, very well. So we just need to go and style it. To, to do so, we go on style and we make sure to scroll down and we go to the message settings and we enable a uh, more visible typography, let's say this one. We change the color, in my case I have a dark background so I need a, a, a light color. I can change also the error message color, let's say that we want it to be orange like this, and also the inline message color, perfect. Let's publish and let's make a second test. 
Okay, okay, now I, I click on let's go. And as you can see here, your submission was successful. I can clearly see the successful message. And if I want, I can also go back to the content and I can change this message by going to the additional options and going to the custom message. I enable this and I can change here the success message if I want to do so. I will show you now how you can also customize even further your form by using other actions after submit. Let's click here and let's see that here we have also other options. We have the email number two. In this case, you can use the email number two, for example, to send an email to the user that submitted the form to confirm his form submissions. You can also use this one, which is very powerful and we will use it. So let's enable this. The redirect allows you to redirect the user to a thank you page after the form submission. And so we will be able, for example, to uh, ask the user to follow us on our social media or make or insert in this page our important information about, about our business. Let's click here again on the plus icon and you will see that you can also connect to ActiveCampaign, ConvertKit, Discord, Drip, GetResponse, MailChimp, MailerLite. You have many other software that you can connect to your form and you can use this to, uh, for example, uh, manage your newsletter and so on. You also have webhooks if you want a custom integration and you also have pop-ups. You can also link this form to a pop-up if you want to do so. In my case, I will just leave the redirect option and I will see that there is this new option appeared right here. I will just need here to create a thank you page and to link it right inside here. Now I've just created a simple thank you page, which is this one. Let's see it together, okay. It's a very simple page with a, a title and some quick links to my social media, okay. So you can create a page like this one too. And I will suggest you to make this page as a child page of the uh, main contact page. So this is the page. If I go in the page settings, I scroll down, I see page attributes and I see that I my parent page is the contact page which is this one, perfect. So now if I update the page and I go and visit this page, this will be my page URL. So I can copy and paste this page URL directly into the settings of my redirect action after submit. I will paste here the link to my contact confirmation page, perfect. I will publish now the page, the contact form page, and I will go and make a test. So let's reload the contact form page. Okay, now let's click on the let's go button. And voila, we are being redirected to our thank you page, which works uh, perfectly. Okay, so the user will be able to uh, follow us on our social media, for example, or you can insert right here some important information about your business, of course. So let's go back now to the website. If you enabled also the collect submissions, we will see that inside our WordPress dashboard into the Elementor submissions area, you will see all your email submissions right inside here with all the data that the user has just uh, shared with us. As you see here, we have the file here and this file it's uploaded to our folder. And in this case, this is happening because we choose here in the file field, choose file, we choose to uh, send files with both systems. So with the attachment and also with the email link. With the link, it means that the file will be stored on your website. And this is uh, why we get this link here and we can quickly, quickly access and download the file directly from this link. This is great. And we will also have the same file in the email notifications that we received. Let's go and see how it looks like. Voila, this is my email notification. I have my multi-step. I have the first step, number one, the second step, number two, and all the data that are contained in, the, in each step. In the first one, there is the name and the email of the user that filled the form. Here I have the message, and here I have the file. And as you can see here, I have not only the link to the file, which is uh, uploaded to my website, but I also have the attachment right here. So I will be able to download directly the file from my, my email. If you want to have one or the other or both of them, you will just need to go here and choose the option from the send file option right here. So this is great and uh, this is a very powerful solution if you want to create very advanced and customized forms with Elementor. And we will see also that in the email that we will receive, we also have all the other custom metadata right here. We have the date, the time uh, in which the form was submitted. We have the page URL where the form was submitted from. We have the user agent that contains all the information about the software that the user uh, is using to uh, contact you, of course. And then we also not only, yes, and then we have the remote IP address. Perfect. So all this is just customizable in the settings when you go to the 
action after submit and you go to the email and you see that down here you can choose which kind of metadata you want to receive in the email notification. Now to give you a glimpse of the flexibility of the email notification, I will just show you how it works. So this are basically the data that are outputted by the all fields shortcode. So if you go back to your form and you scroll down to the email, you will see that down here into the email content, normally you will have just one shortcode, which is this one, which is called all fields. This shortcode just outputs all the fields of your of your form in this way. So you will have in this case a multi-step form with the first step and the second step and all the data outputted like this. And then down here you will have all the other metadata elements that are just managed by this metadata field here. Okay, so what happens if in some cases we just need to change the fields and the way that they look in the email? We can, for example, get rid of this all fields and we can insert all the elements by hand. So we can select the form fields and when we open each single field, we will see that in the advanced tab, we will have a short code. So we will be able to copy this and put it right inside the email. Perfect, so we go here and we type in, for example, name and we insert our name shortcode and then we can go on by adding all the other fields. In some cases, this is good because we need to customize a little bit more the email that we receive when someone sends us a notification. And so we can do so by using this beautiful and flexible field down here using shortcodes. So this is your email. If I want, I can also change the name of this field and call it, for example, file upload or a custom name that I want. Okay. Let's go and copy this shortcode and insert also this shortcode here in the email structure. And if you, okay, down here, maybe we, we can link to the, keep in mind that this one, this file shortcode will work only if you uh, have enabled into your file, the link, you see the email with link, because we, if you just enable the email with attachment, the file will be just sent as an attachment as we saw in the first exam, in the previous example. So now if we go back to the email, we see that we can also leave enabled the HTML format and this will enable us to use HTML inside the message. So for example, if we want to make this bold, let's see like this, for example, name and make it bold. And we can also insert some paragraph if we want, we can do, uh, basically we can insert some HTML down here and uh, uh, style a little bit uh, our email if we need to do so. Let's say that we want to see, to make this one a little bit more like this, okay, we can use a paragraph and so on. And we can also use, of course, custom content. For example, here you received a new message and I can put this as, um, as a paragraph too. So I added some custom HTML. Let's see now if I publish and make another test, how it will work. Okay, so now I'm ready to submit the form. I will be redirected to the thank you page, perfect. And if I go back to my email, I will see that my email will be styled as I did. So there is this first paragraph right here. There is the name, as you can see here, it is bold. Then we have the username, we have the user email, we have the user message. In this case, I will just need to style a little bit better here by making all this content inside different paragraphs. And by using the short codes, I was able to output all the different content. This is the message. And down here, I have the link to the file. Perfect, voila. So basically now we are ready. We have created a beautiful contact us page with a multi-step form and with some custom fields including a special thank you page. Congratulations, you've just created a beautiful and effective contact page. But now it's time to create a blog. If you think that you or your client's website will benefit from a blog, this is the perfect part of the tutorial to follow. I will teach you step by step how you can create a professional blog structure. We will create together a single post template, a blog archive template, and at the end of the tutorial, we will create all the cards of the blog archive and of the related posts at the end of the single post template. If you follow the step-by-step -step guide I'm providing you, you will be able to have a perfectly functioning blog at the end of this tutorial. So let's dive in. Now let's create a blog. We will create a blog archive. We will create a blog single post. And uh, let me show you a quick example here. 
it will be beautiful like this. You will have an archive here where you will be able to create all your blog post cards in a very customized way. You can insert here wherever, whatever you want in terms of content. And uh, when someone clicks and go and visit the, the single post, we will be able to create a perfectly customized single post like this one with a beautiful title, some elements, some metadata about your post. You will be able to have this beautiful share post um, element like this one with the featured image and then some paragraphs, some content right down here. You will have also, of course, here the, um, the author box and we will see also how to create beautiful call to action to make uh, to make people share the post if they uh, when they arrive at the end of the post like this and then we will have also a beautiful comment section we will then then terminate the post with adding a beautiful related post carousel like this one okay well people will see all the posts related by category or tags and then uh, that's it and we will also add a beautiful as you can see down up here a beautiful bar that indicates the um, the how do you say the reading time of course the the reading reading point of the of the blog post you see this is very very nice because it it's uh, it sticks to the header like this so let's see how we can create this beautiful blog and this beautiful blog cards and to do so we will need just to have some how do you say some uh, basic example uh, posts if you already have some posts that will be great if you do not uh, have them uh, already you need to create them uh, in order to have all you need to uh, experiment all this uh, blog creation so let's see how you can uh, do so let's just go back our, on our, in our website we go to the wordpress dashboard we will need to go to go to posts and to create some new posts there are some plugins that creates for you some uh, random posts, but uh, I like to to do it to do it manually in this case. So I go to add new post, add a title. I suggest you now to create all your post content using the standard WordPress editor, which is this one, without enabling Elementor in the single post content. This is because uh, it is a best practice in general for two reasons. The first reason is that you have all you need here to create beautiful post content with post uh, addings, uh, paragraphs, so you can create tables, you can uh, insert quotes and so on. And uh, most of all, you will be able to transfer easily if uh, in some years, for example, you decide to switch from Elementor to Gutenberg or from Elementor to another page builder. And so this is a best practice in general to keep your content flexible and best uh, and uh, well manageable, of course. So when you do like this, you will be creating all your post content right inside here, but you will create all the uh, external structure, so the template with the title, colors and styling and so on using Elementor. So basically all this content will be the content that we will be creating using Gutenberg, the content of the article, of the post, and all the rest will be managed through the theme builder of Elementor. So let's see how it works. Let's create our content here. Let's say that uh, this is our content, okay? There are some simple titles, H2 titles and some paragraphs. If you want, you can also add some uh, images or any other kind of content right inside here. For example, I can go to Openverse and I can search for a sunset image, okay? And I can decide to add this image here. I can also go here and then I can add a table if I want to add a table like this. Let's go now and publish this post, okay? We can also, of course, create categories and assign tags and so on by going to post. S scrolling down here to categories, we can create new categories. We can also assign tags if we want to organize all our content in this way. We can also assign featured images. For example, let's, assi let's assign the same featured image here. We can also use a custom excerpt that will be a kind of an introduction to our post. If you want to do so, you can do it. Let me check here if I use this one, for example. Basically, that's it. So we can update and this will be my post. If I go now and view my and have a preview of my post, clicking here on this button, I will just see uh, an unstyled post like this. There will just be some basic content and uh, it won't be styled. And uh, in order to style this, I will need to use the theme builder. So this is exactly what we're going to do right now. So let's duplicate this post now. And to do so, we need, we need a small plugin, which we'll call Duplicate Post. We go to Plugins, Add New. We can also remove this plugin later on. Uh, I just installed this uh, to duplicate my blog post. 
in order to have some content to show you how it works, duplicate post. I normally install this one, duplicate page, okay. I can then activate this, okay. And I will see that when I go to my post, to my post section here into the dashboard, I will now have this new option, which is duplicate this, okay. I will duplicate my post for three times, perfect. Okay, now, so I have my four posts that I will uh, use as an example, a, as a placeholder to show you how you can create your blog. As you can see inside all these posts, I have just um, a basic category, which is the blog category. And uh, I have um, inside here, some content. So just some uh, paragraphs, some titles that I've used, that I've all created using the standard WordPress editor. If we go on the blog page, it will be like this, nothing special, um, very, very, uh, very ugly, I must say. And in order to see correctly the blog post page, you will need to check into the dashboard, into the settings page, into the reading section, to be um, sure that you have assigned the post page as a blog page. So in this case, as you can see here, when you click on the blog page, it will be automatically linked to all your blog content. So all your different articles. In my case, I have just four articles, which are these. And if I click on one of them, I will see the content of the article, which is created using Gutenberg, and which is also ugly, and we need to style it using the Elementor templates. So now we will style the single post content and also the blog archive content. We will start by styling the single post content, Let's go and click on and hover with uh, edit with Elementor and we open the theme builder. From the theme builder, we go on the single post and we click on the plus icon. And from here, we will create a new post uh, content template. We click on the X icon, okay? We'll start by creating a beautiful hero section like this one. So let's add from my templates, my main padded section, okay, which is a simple section with some padding up and down. Okay, this is a simple basic container. I will add inside here a uh, heading element, which will be the post title. So I can also use the post title if I want. I can drag it and drop it here. And I can change the style options. I can make it center and I can change the typography. I want it to be a very, very, very big title if I want to. I can change the color and make it white and I can change the background color of this section. Going to style, using the gradient, it will be, uh, let's say, um, this one, and the second color will be this one, okay. I will change the gradient to radial, and I will make it center, top center, like this. And then I can also see if I change here, I can make it more like this, 60%. And uh, let me sh let me see if I can change a little bit here. Yes, you can play around like this if you want. But I must say that like this, it works fine. I cannot give it a negative value, but uh, it works fine. Okay. Uh, let's see now if I change, if I can change something else. But no, in general, I, I'm, I'm okay with this design. Okay. I can change now. Maybe I can search like this. No, it doesn't work fine. I just wanted to see if... Uh, yeah, like this, it's good. Yeah, I prefer this one, okay. Let's click on the plus icon here and I will need to add some uh, post uh, metadata. So this is called post info, which is this widget right here. I can drag and drop this widget down here, okay. As you can see, this is the widget that controls all the metadata of the, of the post. I can align it to the center, style center. I can give it some different kind of colors to the icons. icons. I can change them and make them uh, pink. I can change the text, text color will be, let's say light, okay. And uh, basically that's it, it works already fine. I can change maybe some typography uh, by adding a small paragraph text, it will be a little bit uh, uh, smaller. I can change the um, icon dimensioning and in sites, you see here like this, maybe, no, 15 pixels is okay. And in the list, I can space a little bit more the elements, let's say 40 pixels. Of course, each time I can also preview how it looks like in different devices. Let's say that we want to decrease a little bit. Now I go back to content, I go back to desktop. Perfect, it looks good. Let's see if I can add something else, but I think that 
that's okay already. It's a good hero section with a title, which is the title of my article, of my blog post. I can uh, then uh, go down and add a new container. Okay, let's click on the plus icon, new container. This will be a uh, up uh, uh, column direction container, this one. And let's add inside here now a uh, progress bar, which is this one, progress tracker. Okay, let's drop it here. Okay, now if you scroll down, you see that the progress tracker show you where you are when you are scrolling into the page. And this is the progress tracker that we have also here, which is really subtle, subtle and you can just see where you are into the page by following the progress tracker, which is this one, great. So let's see how you can set up this one. Okay, now I can uh, make it fixed to the header like I did here, you see, it stays fixed uh, below the header like this. To do so, you just need to click here on the, on the element, of course, on the progress tracker. You go into the advanced tab, you scroll down and you can make it motion effects sticky and you select top. Okay, let's see how it works. It is on the top now, but we need it to stay in, at the bottom of the, um, of the header. So to do so, we just need to insert an offset. So let's go here and let's apply the offset. We just need to increase the, the value of pixels until we reach the value that we want. In this case, let me check if it will be something about 80, for example, 85, maybe something more, okay. It is 94 in my case, maybe a little bit less, 93, okay. And uh, as you can see here, it works fine, okay. Now what we can do is style it a little bit more, so we can go into the style settings and we can change color, uh, progress color, we can use a global color, color, the pink color works well, but also the orange one, why not? Yes, maybe let's leave the pink color. Okay, pink color works good, and we can also make it a little bit uh, less uh, less big, like, yeah, like this. Six or seven pixels works fine for me, okay. Great, and uh, let me check the values. Let me publish and have a preview. No, no, don't click on publish, but let's click on save draft and have a quick preview. Okay, it works good, okay, great. So now let's go on by creating the actual um, main content main content section. So we will add, let's say, a padded section, which will be my main padded section, this one, okay, which is just a container, a simple container with some padding. Click on plus icon, we will add now, let me check in my example what we did, okay, we added some um, some content. So the first content will be a share box content. In order to do so, we will need to add a container Okay, in this container we will create, uh, this will be a full width container, of course, very important. And in this container we will add some content horizontally. So the first content will be an icon, plus icon, and this will be the share icon, okay. We'll just need to go here. Let's see if in our linear icons we have a share icon. I believe that there is an icon like this, which is this one. Perfect, okay. Oh, this is maybe the Upspot logo, no? <laughs> anyway, this is a share icon, perfect. I can go and have um, another content here, which will be a heading where I will insert my call to action, which will be, oh, sorry, this should be, oh, why does it doesn't work well? Let's open the structure content and let's drop the heading here. Okay, it should be there. And in the, inside here, we'll drive in share this post. Okay, share this post. If I want, I can also add uh, an arrow like this, perfect. And I can decide also to change, I, it's very important here, maybe let's leave it as a paragraph, okay. Now we'll change the style of this, make it typography and we'll add some uh, more, for example, this one, okay. Or we can also try with the other, with the subtitle style. This is good, okay. We can change now the color of the icon. Let's go on style and let's make it, white, let's also make this white, color white, and let's go and change the background color of the container. So we go to the style tab, background type, change the color, this will be um, a dark color, let's say, um, yes, this one, why not? Okay, share this post, we can add some padding, 
say 10 pixels and we can align elements inside the container a little bit differently. We go to layout, we scroll down here and we align everything to the center, perfect. The icon here is a little bit too big so let's change the size, let's make it 30 pixels, okay. And uh, let's uh, now add some social media share icon. So plus icon, share, share buttons right here, okay. Let's uh, move this to the end of the part, okay, perfect. And now we just need to select this share post title and go to the advanced tab and make it grow. So we go on sides and grow, perfect. So it will move all the share icons to the left. And down here in the content section, you can add or remove items if you want. If you click on add, you find all the different social media that you have. You also have the new Twitter social media. You have Skype, uh, Mix, uh, Telegram, all the social media where you can share your post content. They will be available right here and uh, you'll be able to select them in order to make people um, cap capable to share your post content where they want, of course. You can change then the view of this. You can use only the icon or only the text if you prefer. And uh, basically you can, you can, of course, manage all this new widget the way you want. You can change here, make it flat, for example. We can change the shape, make it circle, make it rounded and so on. Let's leave it square right now. Uh, the columns will be automatically assigned and the target URL will be the current page, of course. And um, let's see if we can do something else. Uh, we can, uh, yeah, we can go to style and change colors if you want. You can use the official colors or you can use custom colors. And custom colors will be great if you want to give them the look and feel of your whole uh, website. So, for example, like this. And voila, you can change, of course, also the hover. This will be great. Perfect, so let's publish now. Uh, no, sorry, let's save draft. We will publish at the end. And uh, we have a quick preview, which is great. We have the share post uh, uh, bar right here. One thing we can do now is to make the content a little bit more centered, like in this case. And to do so, we can select here the main container. No, sorry, we can select the, uh, let's go and open the structure. So we uh, just rename sections. So the first one will be the title. So we just know how we are structuring things. The second one will be the progress, the track bar. And this will be the main container, main content, main post content, okay. Inside here we have the first container and but let's just go to the main content and let's choose to have a more voila. Let's say 716 could work good, okay. So when we, uh, when we save draft and go and have a preview, we'll see that all the content will be now shrinked to the center of the page and centered well, perfect. Now we are ready to add the featured image of the post, which is this one in this case, and we will add this dynamically above or below, just below this share box. So we go and type in featured image or just see that it is right here. And we try to drag and drop it here, but this will be a little bit difficult. So what you can do is to select the main content, which will be the container in which we want to insert our featured image. And once we have selected the main content container, we go in the plus icon and we click on the featured image and voila, it will be added right above the share box. In my, in my case, I also renamed the container here and I called share box, okay. Then there will be the featured image. If you want, you can style differently the featured image. We can also change the dimensions. I will leave it large in my case. And we can also change the, um, the style of this image. If you want to change the height, for example, if you want to have a custom height for all the images, you can do so. In my case, I will decide to, yes, why not? We can have a custom height. We can make it, for example, uh, 350 pixels. For, for each and every post. And we'll go here and choose cover. Okay, let's make with 100%. Okay, now it works and let's make it uh, top center. Okay, perfect. Let's go and have a save draft. We can preview our post content and it looks beautiful, you see? Now we can go on by adding the actual real post content, which will be the post content that we are creating, that we have created using Gutenberg. So to do so, we have to click on the main content here, we click on the plus icon and we go and we add the post content, which is this one, which is the actual post content. So down here you will see appearing automatically all the content that we created using Gutenberg, you see? 
and we will in it will be outputted like this in a very beautiful and simple way so perfect let's go on now what we need to do after the content we will need to add a beautiful post author box so we'll see that by selecting the main content we go back to the plus icon and we see that there is a widget which is called author box we add it and voila we have our beautiful author box right here if you do not see your name your image or your bio or your bio correctly you just need to go to your wordpress dashboard into the user settings all users you select your user or you can directly go to your profile quick quick link right here you scroll down here and you select your name and last name you you make them sure that they are correct and you choose to display name and last name like this you can also change your website link and you can add here your short bio biography and you can down here change your image uh, profile image profile picture using gravatar by linking to your email to your image like this and then let's go on we will be able to style a little bit this uh, element if you want in the style tab we can go and change for example the border or go to the advanced tab and change the background like this for example let's have a, a light background here to make this content stand out a little bit more from the rest of the content like this perfect we can add also a quick border to the left side of the container let's go here uh, so that it will look like this one let's see how we can do so we add a solid border we make it zero everywhere we unlink values and we add a left border about five pixels like this then what we need to do is to change this border color make it orange for example or pink or maybe we can see that this dark works good or let me see if I have a green one this one looks good perfect and then we go back to the layout settings and we can add some padding that will be 20 we unlink values and the bottom padding will leave it to zero or to 10 pixels or to 15 pixels why not perfect let's go and save draft and have a quick preview wow this looks beautiful you see so this is basically our post content this is our author box which is great we can also decide to align elements differently inside the author box right here we can choose for example to make it like this or we can change the HTML tag if we want you can change the picture sites and so on and let me check if I can do something else yes I can align like this current author style I can also vertically align the image which I want to do which is great and I can decide to have a different gap here between the elements let's leave it 35 it's good and then of course I can add some many other many other stylings like this and I can of course preview everything from tablet and mobile phone perfect okay yeah I don't have the option to actually I, I was expecting to have this option to to change the above and uh, but as you can see here if I put it above this will also remain into the desktop view so this is kind of a weird uh, option that we do not have into this uh, element but like this it works fine anyway so let's leave it like this let's click on publish now oh sorry in, on save draft let's have a quick preview of all the other content this looks fine okay of course here I can also change some elements to make them feel uh, to make them a little bit different if I want to make these buttons uh, for example a little bit smaller let's do it like this like this okay and like this perfect so for example on my mobile section they will be a little bit uh, differently like this and uh, the, the rest uh, can stay like this perfect I can maybe center everything into the content here go and center everything on mobile and uh, maybe decrease a little bit more the spacing right here when I am on mobile so I can go here and make it top 40 pixels bottom 40 pixels perfect so this looks good in mobile I am pretty okay with the with the um, structure of, of all the post content let's go back to the desktop view okay and let's add to terminate this part of the tutorial the comment section and if you want you can also add a second share box down there so now we will add this beautiful call to action to make people uh, share this post it's a it's a it's a good practice to make this elements uh, very visible because uh, in this way if you have a kind of ecosystem that uh, can thrive by the sharing of posts you can also 
how you say, make this call to action visible. Of course, you can use this uh, technique that I'm using now also to create another call to action that you want to place at the end of your post. You can choose all the content that you want to, um, to make visible at the end of the post right here like this. <laughs> okay, so let's start. We will just need to go into our single page template, okay, this one, and we can choose to add this content by duplicating, in my case, the same content that we have here. So in my case, I will just duplicate this container and I will move it down at the end, okay, after the author box. You see here, I'll just scroll down and I place it after the author box. Okay, if it doesn't work, I just take the author box and I place it above this content right here. Okay, perfect. So now I can select this container and I can play around with the advanced settings that are under motion effects. In this case, I will just use a scrolling effect which will be linked to the scale positioning. So this one, scale, okay. So when I activate the scale effect, I choose, for example, scale down up. Let's see how it behaves. When I scroll down, you see that this element becomes bigger, like this. Of course, you have to be careful here because if you apply the same effect also on mobile portrait, you see, this becomes a little bit weird and it creates this weird behavior of, of the browser. So be careful when you are adding this effect just to uh, deactivate it on mobile and maybe also on tablet because we we don't need it on tablet too, and it's a little bit too big. So let's go on tablet and we get rid of it. We get rid of mobile. We get rid of mobile landscape and we get rid of also on tablet. We just leave this effect on desktop here and on this bigger screen, perfect. Okay, now it works fine. And then we can also decide to add uh, the comment box, which is very important, like this one. We can uh, add a title and the comment box down here. Let's see how to do so. Okay, we click on the plus icon and we will just select this container. Okay, we click on the plus icon and we go and uh, insert the post comments, which is this one. Okay, this is just weird. So let's go to the structure. Let's con select the main content and let's add the post comments that will be added at the end of the, okay, perfect. And we can go and add also some other content, like for example, a title that will be a heading title, this one. Okay, we will make it before the comment box. And okay, where it is? Okay, why? Why it's inside there? It shouldn't be inside there. Okay, let's take him outside. Now we close the share box and we place it there. Okay, perfect. Now here we can change the title, for example, Nave your comment. Okay, and down you can also add a divider. I love to use this one. The divider, it's this one, and we can uh, add an icon, for example. Uh, we'll use the linear icons and we will use a balloon icon if there is one. I believe that there will be an icon regarding comments. Well, yes, this one works well, perfect. Let's insert this icon. We can also change the styling of this icon. For example, the divider here, let's make it a little bit bigger. We can change the color and make it like this or maybe even like this, okay? We can change the gap like this a little bit more. Yes, 38 could be okay. And then the icon settings, we can change the color of the icon. Let's make it darker and we can change the size of the icon, perfect. We can go and um, change also the view of the icon, beautiful, framed like this. Maybe stacked like this would be interesting. And we can also decrease a little bit the padding like this. We can change the border radius like this, or maybe we can leave it squared like this. Okay, perfect. And we can even change the positioning of the icon. Yeah, you can do whatever you want right here. Okay, now it's good. Oh, let's uh, leave your comment below. Yeah, we can leave it like this. We can change the um, title. Yeah, let's make it a, uh, yeah, H2, which it's kind of okay. And let's save draft. Okay, let's go and have a preview. Perfect, now it works fine. And we have also the beautiful comment box at the end of the post. Okay, this works fine. There is everything we need to, to publish beautiful posts like this, and they will look fine in every, in every, in every device. So we just need to check right here. On tablet looks good, on mobile looks good. Okay, perfect, like this. And voila, that's it. Very easy and we have our beautiful blog post like this. Now, what we need to do is to go back to desktop view, okay?
We just need to go to the uh, single post settings. We can change the title and we can call it, uh, for example, yes, single post or even post template, for example, post post template. Then we can go here and uh, yeah, we are ready to publish it because there is everything we need. We click on publish and we add a condition. So here we need to assign as a condition all singular posts. So we go under the post section and we select posts. Okay, perfect. We leave on all, we save and close. And now when we go and visit a post in our page, you remember this was the post without any styling. Now that we have assigned our uh, beautiful post template, if we reload the page and maybe we also clean cache, <laughs> Okay, you will see the post is perfect. It looks like this now. So if you go and visit also the other posts on your blog, uh, this page is still uh, default and we will customize it uh, now. Let's open another post. It looks beautiful, wow, okay. Every content, it's perfect now. And I can just make a test comment if I want. And there it is, beautiful comment down here. I think that this is a beautiful uh, post structure and even before going uh, to the blog page, to the um, archive page, we will just need to add, if you want, uh, a table of contents. So we go back to our post template now, okay, and right inside here we can go on the plus icon and we see that here there is the table of contents element that we can place right above the, the first container or right, right below, in this case it's okay even like this. Table of contents, you just need inside the table of contents to go here and choose um, some elements, you see. You can change the title if you want, but you can also get rid of some H titles that you do not need to have inside the, the table, for example, H6 and H5 and H4, in this case I leave them outside. I can also decide to um, target only the titles that are inside the post content. Now in this table of content, if you want to avoid to uh, have all the titles that are not inside the post content, for example, here there is the title uh, of the comment section, here we have the titles of our uh, new section that we will create later on, which is the related post section. So to get rid of all the other titles that may appear inside here, the table of contents, we just need to limit the container that will be uh, insert as titles inside the table of contents. So what we want here basically is that the table of contents will display only the post content uh, um, titles, which are this, these. In this case, I have three titles inside here, which are the first one here, the second one here, and the third one right here. And all the rest, the author box, the comment box down here, I don't want them to be taken into consideration inside the table of contents. So how to do so? We will give a name um, to this container and to do so we will just scroll down to the container that is the widget post content. I select the widget post content, so this one right in my structure and into the advanced tab I'll go down here and I will add a class. I will add a class which will be called uh, for example post content. Okay, post content. Perfect, I will copy this class here and I will make it inside here, inside the table of content widget. I will go on content, scroll down to container, and I will write down here point post content. So point dot post content. Okay. And as you can see here, all the titles that are taken into consideration right here are just the titles inside the post content itself. So this is very important in order to be able to have a clean and good working table of contents. As you can see here, if I remove this, all the other titles are back again into the table of contents. But we do not want this, so I insert my class dot post content and voila. Elements, I can also change here to bullets if I prefer bullets and I can also change the bullets icon for example let me use my linear icons let me check if I have uh, a good linear icons or this one this one the link icon yes great then we can go on additional options we have a few more options right here we can use we can change the expand icon which is this icon here on the right side that let me uh, close or open the table of contents i can also choose to minimize this table of content uh, on some um, on some devices okay and uh, i can also remove the minimize box so that this icon uh, this, this table of content will stay always open i can also 
uh, decide to have a hierarchical view, but in hierarchical view, but in this case I don't need it because I just have all H2 titles. But if you have in your blog post H2, H3, and H5 or H4 titles, you will be able to display them in a hierarchical way like this. And um, let's go to the style options. Like here, you can basically style whatever you want regarding the whole table of contents. Oh, let me check here. I can do it like this quickly. I can make it a little bit different as a background. I can implement or so a border. I can assign my border color, which is this one. I can even use the secondary border color, which will be this one right here. Okay. I can go down here and uh, maybe make it, yeah. It's good, that's good. Padding, box shadow, uh, header, list. Yes, I can change the icon settings, for example. Text color, the marker. Yes, this is the marker color. Okay, the icon is called marker, which is weird, but okay. Let's change the size, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, like this. Perfect. And I can publish and go and see what happens in the front end. Okay, let's have a preview. Okay, we have our beautiful table of contents and if I click here, it will bring me directly to the part of the, the post that I need to read. That's beautiful. Voila, this is our beautiful blog post. It works like a charm, like a charm, or a charm, like a charm. <laughs> and uh, that's it. We are ready to publish all our beautiful posts. Now that we have created a beautiful template for our blog posts like this, we will be able to create another template which will work for the blog archive. So in this case, the blog archive looks something like this. So very, very ugly. We just need to go into the Elementor theme builder right now. And from this page, we will be able to create an archive. So we go on archive, click on the plus icon. And right here, we will be able now to create our beautiful blog post archive. So we use to, as always, we click on this X, perfect. If you want to, um, to use the same the same kind of structure that we used even here, for example, for the title. We just need to save the structure as a template, as we did in the in the previous steps of the um, of the tutorial, and I have it in my templates right here. So I go here. This is my title section for pages. I insert my title section. I do not apply styling settings, okay, and I just change the title. Voila. Our blog, here you can change the heading and of course also the other text right here. And down here I can add my archive. I can use different kind of archives. I can I can use them, for example, using the Flexbox and I can insert this one and I can click on the uh, plus icon right here and I can use the archive posts, which is this one, or I can even use the other one, which is called posts, uh, posts. Uh, which is this one, post. So you can use uh, the archive one or the post one. It's uh, the same thing. You can use both. Uh, I use the post one just to show you how it works. Once you drop this widget right here, it will start showing you all your uh, articles, all your posts. You can change the look and feel here, cards, for example. And um, in my case, I also have to go on qu query and uh, I can leave it on, on post because I want to show posts. I can decide to include or exclude some uh, posts and I can order them by date or by any other kind of uh, variable that I want. And uh, basically that's it, yeah, in, the, in terms of um, showing up my posts. Then I can of course change the layout, I can change the number of columns if I want. I can change the, um, let's make them three. I can change the number of posts per page. I can, I can change also the way that this all this cards will behave. I can hide images, I can hide the title, I can change the title, HTML tag, and so on. So here you can just um, play around until you find your your structure, the structure that you that you want to assign to your postcards. And uh, let me get rid of the badge here, of the category badge. And if I want, I can also hide my author avatar if I want to hide it. And uh, the read more button, I will leave it like this. And uh, voila, that's it. You can also play around with pagination when you, when you have more than uh, the number of posts that you are displaying on the page. You can choose numbers by pagination, previews or next, or you can also use the load on click or infinite scroll and we will publish. So we go upper right side of the page, we click on publish. We assign this page to not to all archive, but only to posts archive, perfect. And we click on save and close. 
Okay, so now we created our beautiful blog page, which is working fine. And if we go and visit our singular posts, it looks, they, look, they look like this. If you want now, you can change completely the structure of these cards by using the loop builder, which is a very, very powerful feature that is uh, present inside Elementor Pro. Let's go and see how it works. We will just need to go inside our theme builder, okay? And uh, we will need to go to the loop item. So we will create, in this case, a card that will display all our blog posts, but it will, we will be able to do it in a perfectly customized way. So let's click on plus. As you can see in the standard widgets that uh, you have at your disposal when you have to create a blog like this one, you have some limitations. So you, for example, you cannot have a button instead of this link. You cannot place a content, uh, for example, the title above the image, for example. You can't do much things. While if you use this new powerful feature, which is called Loop Builder, you will be able to customize completely the cards of your blog archive, like in this case, you see, I've customized them completely, adding a button and a subtitle effect or an hover. And I will show you right now how you can create some beautiful cards like these. Okay, now let's create our custom blog card. We will start by adding a container, which will be a Flexbox one in the column direction. And we will make it immediately full width. This is very important. Let's go on the plus icon here and we will add some elements. The first one will be the featured image. And then we will go on by adding other elements that will be this, all the elements that we find here. So the post info, we will place them below the image. We will add then also the post title, okay? Then we will add the post excerpt, okay? And then we will add a button. So plus, and we scroll down and we see that there is a button here. Perfect. So basically all the basic elements are these, the featured image, the post info, post title, post excerpt, and button. Starting from these elements, we will start, we will create our beautiful card. The first the featured image should be a little bit styled here and also in the content we need to make some tweaks. For example, the image resolution, we can put it medium large because we do not need them to be huge images since these are just cards in the blog archive. And we can also assign a link that will link the custom, uh, the image to the post. So custom URL here and we dynamic tag, we go and apply the post URL, perfect. We go then to the style tab of the image and we make the some changes to the height of the image you see. Right here we need this image to be uh, 250 pixels so that this is good because at least you know that all your images will look the same into the blog archive. And then we go into the object fit and we use cover. Okay, perfect. If you want to add some more styling to your image, go on and do so. In my case I'm okay and I go on to the post info right now. The post info, I want to change the content here, I get rid of the time, I go to the author and instead of using the, um, the icon here, I will apply an avatar, this is my author avatar, perfect, I will make it a little bit bigger, let's see if it 15 pixels goes well, okay, and I will go on by adding a custom icon to all the other elements, so the date for format, I will go and add a custom icon, I will use my linear icons that I added also previously in the tutorial, and these linear icons, they have a date format, which is this one, perfect, date ca calendar, calendar. <laughs> Let's go to the comments and do the same, custom, <clears throat> custom icon here will be the comment balloon, this one. Okay, so we have customized everything here. We go to the style tab and we go to the icons. Let's make them 15, all the icons. We go to the text and let's make them a little bit smaller. So this one is small paragraphs, okay. Uh, staying here in the text, we can also go and play with the list. We can make it center, for example, and we can go to the advanced tab and add some padding. Let's say five pixels everywhere. Okay. We can also add a border, uh, a background color here, going to the style, going to the advanced tab, scrolling down to the background, and adding a light background color, for example, or even a dark one. It depends on the design that you're using. Okay, this one should work fine for me and I will put uh, all the elements so into a darker background, okay. Perfect, okay. Now that we have styled also the info, the post info, we can go on with the title. Most important thing here to change immediately the HTML tag. We need to make it H3 or lower. H3 works fine normally, so we use this one. We can place it at the um, center, 
we can align it to the center or not. If you want, you can also leave it like this. And we can assign a dynamic tag. Right here, we can assign the post URL so that if the user clicks on the title, it will be also linked directly to the post. We can also go to the style tab and change the typography text color if we need to do so. Text color maybe can also work dark like this. And the typography can also work in a smaller title, for example, like this. We can then go on at the next element, which is the post excerpt. This is important to customize because we can, um, how do you say, assign an excerpt length, length, which would be great, for example, if we do 20 words and we'll just truncate and cut the excerpt. And in the advanced tab, we can also add after space and three dots like this. So we understand that this is just the incipit, the beginning of the post. And here, instead of having click here, we just rename it to read more or read post. And then we can add a link, which will be also a dynamic link that will be the post URL. Perfect. Okay, so we have our card, we can publish. Now this card with the structure that we created together could already work well. But if you want, you can increase the complexity of this card by adding a new container here. We can place it, for example, below the post info. And we can decide to make it full width as always and to place inside this container all the post title, post excerpt, and post button. And you will see now why I'm making this. So let's drag and drop all the content here in the container, also here in the container, and here in the container. We will just replace the title above, okay? And then we will be able also to go to the main container, the first one here, and to change something about the background. We go to the style, for example, and we add a classic background. Okay, a default color, let's say a light one, for example, this one, this is not so light, <laughs> let's use this one, okay. And then if we want, for example, to attach the post info to the image, we can go to the main container, scroll down in the layout tab and go to the gaps here and put it to zero, perfect. We will have now to go to the second container, which contains the title, the excerpt and the button, and we'll go to the advanced tab and we place a padding of 20 pixels. Voila. So now we have a more complex card. We can have a quick preview like this. And this looks uh, even better than before. And we can also add a border if we want. So we go in the main container. We go to the style tab. We scroll down to the border section. We add a solid border. We make it one pixels. We make a border color and we get it, give it the dark one, for example. Okay. Let's have a quick preview. It looks very good. And we can add a, li a little... Uh, touch at the end, which will be an interaction with mouse hover. We, we scroll down to the transform advanced tab and we add an hover scale effect. Okay, so we keep proportions and we scale it 1, 0, 1, 1.01. 1. So now when we hover with the mouse, let's have a preview here. The element is scaling a little bit like this. We have a link here to the post, we have a link here to the post, and we have a link here to the post. Okay. It looks very, very nice. Publish again, save. We are ready now to go back to our website. Let's go to the blog page and we will get rid of this uh, ugly grid and we will use our new card. So we open the blog archive template. We can delete this widget, click on the plus icon and we, and we type in loop grid. Okay, here it is, the loop grid. I place it here. I just type in the name of my loop card. In my case, this was the blog card version two. Version two, there it is. And voila, this is my beautiful new blog archive with my newly built, freshly built cards. Now I can also play with columns. I can add more columns if I want. You see here, I can also do equal height, you see, so that all the columns will be equal height. And I can also add play around with query. So I can, in this case, I just need to show posts. But if you need, you can also choose to display any kind of different content of your website. Okay. I, I can also display them differently, playing around with settings. I can use the pagination that, that was the same option that, that was there also in the posts widget. And then I can also add the additional options, like for example, a sentence that will be displayed if there is no content to show to the user. Okay, let's go back to the layout here. Let's go back to the three comms, for example. We can publish now and have a quick preview. Let's add some more padding just in the main container here to be sure that it won't be attached to the footer. And voila, this is my new beautiful blog. Wow.
looks very, very nice. And if I click on the single post, this is my structure, beautiful. It works fine. If I go back to the blog, I can click also on the title and it will link to my post. And if I click also in the button, it will link to my post, beautiful. Now the last thing we can do is to go and customize the last section of our blog single post template and add some related posts like the one that you see here. Let's see how you do so. You can basically use the same technique that we already did with the blog archive, like in this case, but we will use the loop carousel, in our case, at the end of the single post template. Okay, so let's open the theme builder. We will create another loop item. In this case, this one will be um, a loop item that we will use just to the, for the related post. We can change the name. We can call it related post, for example, version two. And then I can go and click here and add um, some content as always. So it will be a Flexbox container. Uh, there will be an image, the featured image of the post. Okay, the container must be of course full width. And here we select the image and of course we can style it as always, medium large. We can link it to the post, okay, post URL. And we can go to the style tab and we can make it a uh, custom height, for example, 250 pixels. We can make it cover and we can center top, top center, perfect. This looks good to me. We can go on by styling, by adding more content, the title. The title will be an H3 and it will be, in this case, centered. Uh, or even I can leave it to the left side. We can change just the typography and make it smaller or even smaller than that. Like for example, like this, okay. We can link the title here with dynamic text to the post URL, okay. And we can add at last the button. For example, a button that will lead us directly to the post, also the button. <laughs> so read post or read more, okay. We can change something here. Of course, we will link to the post URL and we can also add an icon, linear icons. If you want to use them, uh, I can use this link here, insert, read more. I can change the position here and add some more spacing, let's say 10 pixels. And um, let's also decrease a little bit the padding of the, of the button into the style tab. We go to padding, let's make it five, okay. And let's increase just the right and left. Okay, maybe a little bit more on the right, let's say 20. Read more, perfect. And then we can place the button to the right, okay? And then we can transform all the container into uh, a card. So we can give it a little bit of styling. So to the style, we go to the border, we add a border, a solid border, one pixel, and the border color will be, in this case, the dark, the same one that we used before. We can add also, a, um, let me say, yes, a background color. So background here, and this one will be a light background, okay? And then if you want to add some padding, you can place the padding inside the elements or even adding a new container. So container down here, and we place all the element, we place the container at full width, and we place this element inside this container. So also the button will be in the container Okay, and then we select the container itself and we can add in the advanced tab some padding, 20 pixels, okay. The main container should go, we should go in layout and we get rid of the gaps distance, so it's like this. And uh, let's see if we can do something more. We can also here, if we want to add the same effect on the advanced tab and add a scale op option to the transform, hover, scale, one point, zero one okay very subtle uh, animation here publish we have our card ready for the related posts so we can go back to our blog archive now in this case this is not the blog archive but we can go back to our theme builder and in we will select the single post and we will edit our post template let's edit at the end of the post template we can create a new container let's get rid of this one and let's recreate it together we click on the plus icon, flexbox, row, uh, column direction. We add a simple post, uh, no, not the post title, but a simple heading that will be in this case related posts. Okay. And we can change the background of this element here and also add some padding. Let's say zero, 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 and then top 100 and bottom 100. We can add a background color. 
a simple one like for example this one and then we can add a plus icon and we add the loop carousel okay instead of using the loop grid we, we use here the loop carousel okay down here we can select the card uh, we, we call it related posts version 2 okay and here we can select the number of slides the slides to display the slides on scroll and so on also here we can apply the equal height and voila it works already very very good <laughs> if we publish and go and have a preview we'll see that at the end of the post we will have all our related posts beautiful wow that looks great so if you want to click on it you will be redirected to the post perfect so that people and users can continue reading your blog now to conclude this great tutorial one of the most long tutorial that i know about elementor online i will teach you how to create a beautiful slide in menu when visitors comes to your website on phone and tablet in order to create this optimized menu we will use the advanced feature of the elementor pro pop-up builder so let's start one last thing i wanted to share with you which is a bonus feature it's beautiful because we'll be able now to create a beautiful responsive menu for your header in fact if you are using the standard menu right here if I go and uh, activate the Elementor Builder and I go into the preview of our mobile view I will have a menu which is very minimalistic and it works fine of course nothing special here but uh, it works okay but if you want you can also be able to create a more more complex and full of features menu how to do so we will be able to do so by using the beautiful features that are at your disposal when you use elementor pop-ups for example here if i go and edit with elementor and i have a quick preview of the page on mobile okay i choose mobile and i can see that this menu that i created using elementor pop-ups it's beautiful you see you can add your logo you can add whatever widget you want inside here i added the links to my main pages i also add a call to action right here and some links to my social media and you can see here basically this is well very well optimized menu for mobile beautiful a lot of websites has these uh, this kind of menu let's see how you can enable the same on your website so we go here now to our website we go and open the wordpress dashboard we go to the templates in element under elementor templates and we go and click in the pop-ups now we can click on add new pop-up and we will call this pop-up mobile menu okay let's create a template and voila we click on the x icon perfect this will be our mobile menu pop-up the first thing we need to do is to go here in the page settings we need to change the um the the height this go, this is gonna be fit to screen so we will take all the place that is uh, available in the height perfect and then we can also position the content uh, differently if you want like this uh, for example would be at the top let's start adding some content we will click on the flex box we will add this one and we will add firstly a logo so let's add our logo right above here the website logo okay we can then uh, make it a little bit different in terms of width let's say in pixels let's go about 80 pixels works fine for me perfect let's go back here in the pop-up settings and let's work also with some styling around padding or at the on the, into the advanced settings we scroll down and we add some padding for example 20 pixels okay we can also add a background here uh, let's say that this will be um a dark background why not okay this one this works good um, we can go now down here and we can add some more content let's click on the plus icon let's see if the in our website there are some uh, icon lists that are already styled let's say for example um, yeah this list looks good we can go and edit our footer and copy and paste the same list for example let's go here copy and we will paste the link here let's paste it here okay and we can center of course all the list uh, but like this it doesn't work well so we leave it like this and we go to the advanced tab we make it center like this this works better okay now we can add some content of course we can change also all the pages here we can uh, add for example the home page let's say home we can change the icon here we can use our linear icons let's say that we want to link to our home page and we want a different icon let's say that this will be our home page icon insert 
okay we can change the color of course of these icons let's make it a little bit more visible like this it's perfect we will change it to also the other icons let's say the about page will be different linear icons about page something like a user if it's there perfect so basically now we can also drag and drop the content we can position the home page above and uh, we can also go and see if in the style options we can change the styling of the text uh, let's go and add our button and navigation okay so that we can also separate a little bit more the elements into the list let's say 10 pixels we can also add a divider if we want let's say like this will work fine okay and we can also increase maybe a little bit the width of the divider. Oh, this will be great okay perfect let's change the color and make it border number two okay perfect and if we go now to the let's say to the um, advanced to the width okay let's make it custom width and let's say something about some pixels here about 200 pixels okay this is good or maybe it's a little bit too much 150 okay this is good or not let's leave it like this this is better we can change the styling again because i don't like the text styling here i can use maybe this okay this this one looks good okay i can change of course the icon sizing okay let's go something like this and the gap maybe increase a little bit more okay this looks good to me and then i can also add some more content for example the uh, call to action to, for the contact us button let's click on plus icon button and I will link this button to the call to action, okay, to the contact page. In this case, let's make it quicker, contact page, okay. And let's place, place this button to the center like this, contact here, click here, contact us. Let's uh, add some more content. The last content I will add will be my uh, social media icons. So I will copy and paste the icons that I have here in my footer, copy and paste here. I can also place them to the center and I can change also the style, the background color, which will be different. Maybe this one, no, too much. Oh, if I, if I change it here, okay, this looks good, perfect. And I can also add some more spacing from the top. Let's say that we want some top margin like this. Okay, maybe it's a little bit too much, 20 pixels. Okay, publish, I will add a condition and this condition will be the entire website, next next save and close perfect this will be my menu my pop-up menu i can also change the styling of the close button that needs to be more visible because it's black now i can go into the options of my settings of my pop-up and i can scroll down and i can choose to go to the style sorry to the style settings and here i have the close button styles and i can change the color i can make it white for example and i can also increase a little bit the size of this icon so that is more visible perfect okay let's publish now again and we'll see a quick preview of this uh, oh we can also add um how you say an animation an entrance animation let's go on settings we scroll down we see that there are there is this entrance animation here we can use for example the fade in left okay and we can use as uh, an exit animation the fade out right okay let's publish perfect Mm, we can also decrease the animation duration to 0 0.3 okay and let's go now and have a quick preview of this element okay to have a preview of this we, we can uh, directly link it to the navigation bar so we can go to our website and uh, go and visit our website we can even open the theme builder if you want and here we can go and select the header we can go and add edit header okay perfect and we will be able now to add a beautiful menu that will be visible only on mobile landscape and on mobile portrait. So to do so, we just need to go on the plus icon and let's use the icon. The icon is the same. So we place the icon right here inside the header. Okay. We choose here the linear icons uh, and we can see if there is uh, uh, some icons that are, that are perfect for a menu. I don't know if there are some icons for the menu right here. It is not best practice because normally you have the three lines there, the three bars, but we can use maybe this one. Okay, let's insert this icon. This will be the menu icon. Let's say it is just a quick example to show you how it works. We can go into the style settings and we can go and um, 
change of course the color of this let's make it dark like this okay let's go and uh, see if we can also change a little bit the sides let's make it 20 pixels okay 27 okay now we will go to the advanced tab and try to put all the padding to zero the bottom margin here i can also decrease it a little bit so that it's correctly aligned okay and now what i need to do to link this to a pop-up i just go to dynamic tags and i go and scroll down until i find actions and pop-up i select the pop-up i click here on the on this icon and in the settings i can select the pop-up that i want to open in my case this is the mobile menu pop-up which is this one perfect so now with some uh, if i go and preview my settings here if i click here there is this mobile menu that appears beautiful this works already fine you see very very easy now let's see what happens if i want to place this only on mobile and only at the end of the navigation structure i can just replace the icon here and put it after the social media icons perfect i will just give it some margin also to the right side let's make it 20 no maybe something more less 10 pixels margin okay and we will be able then to insert also uh, to make it visible only on mobile phones so we go to the advanced tab we scroll down we go to the responsive and then right here we can hide it on desktop we had it on laptop we had it on tablet and we leave it only on mobile landscape and on mobile portrait so now we do not need this menu anymore when we are on uh, mobile landscape and mobile portrait so we go here and we do the same in the inverted so we go to the advanced we go to the responsive and this time we just hide it on mobile portrait and mobile landscape perfect so if we if we have a quick preview now here of the menu this will be our new mobile menu beautiful i click here and there is this menu appearing like this wow this looks gorgeous okay so now let's click here we go and publish we have a quick preview of the website and if we go and see the website from tablets for a, a mobile landscape or mobile portrait we see that there is this beautiful menu that works like this as you can see here there is this beautiful slide in and slide out option animation that we can just adjust <laughs> if you if you get if you go back into your pop-up settings and in this case i wanted to change it fading right this one this one should be fading left fade out left publish we go back to our home page in this case we see the website from mobile phone okay and voila beautiful okay let's get rid of the caching maybe there is something that's okay okay anyway from the mobile phone it will work better you see here the animation it's a little bit uh, glitchy but on the mobile phone it will work fine you just need to test it out and uh, that's it wow <laughs> we built a beautiful mobile menu just for our mobile devices Thank you for watching this WordPress and Elementor Pro tutorial. I'm sure that you have created a beautiful website and I'm very curious to know what was your experience during the video. So I will be very happy to read your feedback in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like this kind of content. And if you want to help me, just hit the left, <laughs> just hit the thumbs up button and go and visit my website wproads.com. You can also follow me on Instagram and you can subscribe to my newsletter. My name is Pascal, the creator of WP Roads YouTube channel and website and I hope to see you soon in one of my next tutorials.